Patience, one look at the Patience, he just has to say, wait, two of the line up, one, two, oh, Doki, what a play, that is why he is one of the best players in the world right now. Have now adapt and he can swing this with the Ella Striker, and they're not ready for it with the Ella, SMG. Yeah, he's gonna get botted. Tyrant fires oh. oh, on the second shot. He's dropped the pistol. He's dropped into pro on this two oh. seconds left. Oh. Tyrant, what a round! He's in position to strike. He's able to land his shots here. He got a huge oh. slam. Picks up two. That's surprising that Nelly didn't fall back at that point. And now we're left in a very tight situation. Ryan has just walked his way through. He gets two. Unica is gonna take a little bit of damage as well. But oh, with his back against Unica, Roth is gonna go down, but instantly traded. Harold with a double there. That's huge. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Northern Premier League. This is going to be play day number 18 and it is the last play day of the groups. There is a lot on the line here tonight and I'm thrilled to be bringing it to your faces. My name is Ollie XR Troika Hatton and I am joined on the desk tonight by Gibson and Whippet. Let's bring them in and start this show off. Guys, how are you doing tonight? Um, whip it. You've changed your name. We know you whip it. We know, we know that you're not Novi. We're going to start off with you. How are you feeling this evening? I'm feeling good. It's the last play day of the groups, and we've so got so much t still to decide. I cannot wait to get into it. Everything was set up so nicely after yesterday. It's going to be a good evening of Siege. Absolutely. You've got a little bit of... Uh, you're half an Eminem fan as well, it seems, by the looks of things. We can, we can just see half of the <laughs> of the flaming marshmallow there. Gibson, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. It's the last night of the regular season, Ollie. Where have the past few months gone? And yeah. hey, what better way to have it than a final night where there's still lots up for grabs? I think that's one of the most exciting things about tonight, isn't it? That there is so much still on the line. It, very easily, with how long the MPL has been, it could, you know, a lot of things could already be decided. And there are a few things that are decided, mm -hmm. but there are still really important battles that are going to be uh, taking place over the next couple of hours. So strap yourselves in and get ready for a night of unfilled siege let's take a look now at our previous play day results we can have a look back over yesterday and see just exactly how everything shook down because of course that was the start whip it of what we're, what we're going to be dealing with today Absolutely, and the thing I'll immediately draw your attention to is going to be a result from Coalesce and Eminem. Eminem couldn't get over the 86 hill, leaving them now vulnerable for Coalesce's final attempt, final charge, and making themselves into that last playoff spot. And if we look towards our, our MVP of the day, Upor, everyone has been talking about him from social media to us yesterday as well. He has made an absolutely fantastic debut this split. And look at that performance. Look at those stats. A 1.67 KDR on the Thermite. 75% cost going in, doing the support roles, but also picking up every frag possible standout performer so far this second split. Yeah, we were having a bit of a look at the stats before, weren't we, Gibson? We'll get onto a bit more of that later, but you, Paul, was uh, certainly someone that, that shone, and, you know, you, you can't really doubt that he had a, a huge part to play against that really important win against Heroic yesterday. Definitely. We we were actually having a chat yesterday, me and Jerry and Novi and Whippet, and, you know, some of the guys were saying, oh, you know, you, poor still coming on. He's only played six games at the time, and, you know, Flex is such a good player, it's going to be hard to replace him. I've been adamant from the very first moment that I saw Upor playing an MPL that Victus were going to be fine. Yes, Flex is incredible, but that's another guy coming in from the same part of the world, and he is just absolutely fragged out. And, you know, when you lose a big player, to pull in a player who just instantly just joins the team and puts in the same, same sort of performance level, you got to be happy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Coalesce a team that have really impressed me as well since obviously making some changes um, and, and bringing in uh, Nixon. Um, I think that that's something that's, uh, you know, they've just gone from strength to strength. So look, really looking toward uh, how those guys are going to play tonight. They got a 7-2 win yesterday against Sissy State Punks and then Viperio versus Eminem. Viperio coming away the winner. This is, of course, going to be the highlights of yesterday's games. We're going to get to see some of those best bits once again with it. Yeah, absolutely. As we see just flashing ahead, this was Riddle's final stand before ultimately Ambush knocking them out, sending them back to their division of the Nordex. And this was a matchup where it looked like Riddle had finally woken up. You can see the scoreline 4-2. They were 5-2 up against Ambush, and an Ambush does, in recent form has 
Lance looks reasonably shaky, and they just couldn't close it out, ultimately losing their spot, but Ambush, a much needed little boost of confidence for them, not playing with their main five as well. That might be a little bit of a sign for some improvement of that Ambush camp as they get closer to playoffs. Absolutely, you want to see that improvement as it's sort of working its way through. I think um, this heroic and Victus game, for, for me, Gibson, close to one of the games of the night. Oh, it was absolutely brilliant game from start to finish. You know, I know that a lot of people hate the phrase barn burner, but it really was. Victus put heroic to the sword and really... It was a game that could have went either way. We're just kind of watching, jumping on with you, poor again. He found himself in sight time and time again for Victus. And it's actually something that I loved about the way Victus played yesterday. They looked at where Heroic were roaming and were like, yeah, well, if you're going to roam over here, we're just going to go direct to sight. And it worked for them over and over and over again. Absolutely. Even a team like Heroic is not unbeatable. Uh, and that's one of the great things about MPL and something that we've seen repeatedly so far. Coalesce, the team that has been impressing me, have they been impressing you with it? Absolutely. Coalesce on Cafe against SSP. Put on a very, very dominant display. And the key storyline was that going to be is simply a, their structure. Nixon's bought in. Divided's came into this roster as well. And they're playing so much better as a team, as a cohesive unit. And you get to see the individual players like Noah pop off, find that extra space. But overall, all that's looking much more well-rounded. And then a team that is uh, certainly close to my heart and close to all of the hearts in uh, in the UK community is always going to be Eminem. In this case, we're talking about Eminem Academy. But equally, Gibson, they're going up against Viperio, who I love to see do well as well. It's a real tough one for me. Yeah, it was a feel-good game when you look at the two sides, but the pressure was really on Eminem Academy. And some people, sometimes the pressure can turn people into diamonds. And our carry last night was absolutely incredible. So many multi-kills. You just look at the kill feed here in round nine he was going 12 and eight but unfortunately for him he just came up against an 86 side which were fresh off the back of qualifying for cl all the momentum in the world behind them and nova they just went to show why they are probably one of the best teams in cl never mind mpl right now Absolutely. That's the stamp of quality that we've got here inside of MPL. We go right through top to bottom, all the way up to EUL, EUCL, and then right down toward teams that have just come up from their local division, as it were. This is the standings as they currently sit, moving into our final play day. So you might be looking at this and thinking, okay, not too much is going to change here in the top part of the table. And, you know, you'd be probably right in thinking so. We're looking at Heroic there. They've pretty much locked themselves in. Uh, Ten star, I think there is still a chance that they could leapfrog and guarantee that first place seed. But realistically, our attention whipper is going to be in and around that mid table. Absolutely. Eminem Academy versus Coalesce. It is all down to this. Every other playoff spot is booked. The rest of the movement will be deciding seeding. It really is do or die for these teams. Coalesce need to outscore Eminem today. And it is going to be a very tricky task for Eminem as this wonderful graphic pops up to get themselves a regulation win, which will guarantee the playoffs because they're facing against Heroic. Yeah, it's kind of difficult to set the stage tonight. We've got to we've got to go all over the place just to make sure we give as clear a picture as possible as really what is at stake. So, regulation win versus heroic guarantees M&M playoffs. That is, of course, because of the fact that they are currently tied up with Coalesce and they have a round difference advantage against Coalesce. However, if Eminem get anything less than an over than a regulation win, for example, if they get an overtime win, that then opens the opportunity for Coalesce to earn one more point than Eminem. Obviously, if Eminem get a regulation time win, they get three points. Coalesce, they can't earn more than three points out of one play day. So that's the clearest way that we could put it. Obviously, we know now that Eminem are going to be playing heroic. So realistically, Gibson, they've got a pretty tough task ahead of them tonight. You could have basically picked any other team and you would have been fairly happy with that. But for saying that, heroic, they aren't unbeatable. And we've already seen that this season. Yeah, well, as you said, it's clear as mud of the situation for these two sides on who's <laughs> going to make it through. But when you look at Eminem... They started the season well, then they went into this really long slump. Split two did not suit them at all. And now you're in a situation where it is in your own hands. You can go out and beat Heroic in regulation, guarantee yourself a playoff spot. Yeah, you say that, it's a lot easier said than done. But hey, you know, we spoke about this before, Novi. Heroic in EUL, 
and inside of MPL, it's not been the strongest two to three weeks for them, has it? It's no. really not. Go on, whip it. it, it it's just for heroic. It's been a little bit of a shaky kind of period for them, and I'm really going to say since that loss to Coalesce, it's been kind of ups and downs from the side. They then lost to Tenstar and then again to Victus yesterday. Granted, they've had Officer coming in for Sloth. They saw, saw that yesterday. But their current form, they need a win. Heroic really need a win. And I think Eminem might just be the victim of that, or of them waking up saying, all right, for mental, for morale, we need a victory today. Exactly. Winning's a habit. And teams, you know, do, do tend to stick to those habits and those patterns. Um, certainly for Heroic, they're going to be looking to get a win out here today and just really cement themselves. So we've given a bit of a teaser as to who is playing who, but let's bring up the schedule and let's get a very clear picture on the games that we have got to look forward to tonight. We're going to be kicking things off at the top. 10 Star versus SSP. 10 Star on an incredible run of form at the moment. I think if they win here tonight, that makes it nine consecutive executive wins which given the way that they started way back at the start of MPL is very impressive indeed the big game that a lot of people are going to be keeping their eye on heroic versus Eminem ambush they're going to play Viperio and then finally riddle versus coalesce Gibson one of the most exciting things about tonight for me is that it really could all come down to that final game Oh, whenever you write the script for a season, it couldn't come down any better than this. Riddle the side slap bottom of the league with nothing to play for except pride. You know, they get that first win under their belts. To, to be honest, it'll leave them leaving the season pretty happy. You know, they made some changes. They brought in players we know really well, like Reich and Vabs. They already have Kevin and Perry in there as well. They're a very good side individually, but they've not got going. Now, Coalesce. You look at the situation, that could be one hell of a banana skin for them, especially if Eminem lose. You're going in to play the last, the team placed in last. They've got nothing to lose whatsoever. We have seen situations like this before where the underdog, which is Riddle, has come up and really put in a good performance. Absolutely. And you, you say there, teams playing with nothing to lose. Riddle could very easily come out here and just throw an absolute masterclass um, and, and really do a little bit of uh, not quite gatekeeping just but late performance if you will um, Whip it game of the night for you is there anything standing out? Of, of course I'm going to have to talk about the heroic m, &M but I, I really want to go back to that riddle point because with nothing to play for all they can do now to kind of can I put the bow on their season, is make a nightmare for Coalesce. And I think that yeah. might be their exact intention. They're going in to, to not win, but to make Coalesce lose, because they know the stakes, they know Coalesce want that playoff spot, and a mental victory for Riddle, as it's not been the best season, and what a time, what a storybook to get your very first win of the season if you can stop one team making playoffs. Exactly, it's something that you're going to go and remember, it's something that you're going to enjoy about as you're, as you're chilling with the boys in TeamSpeak. Let's have a look at uh, some of the top performers over the course of this season. Uh, obviously, we've been hitting you with the top five graphics throughout, but at this point on the final play day, this is where we get to really see some level of consistency, uh, Gibson. And we're going to be starting things off with the KD ratio, kill to death ratio here. Yeah, and as you can expect, the five best players absolutely killing it right now. Gorgona sitting 1.59 KD. One of the best players in Europe, him and Benja, are absolutely phenomenal for Heroic, so it's no surprise whatsoever to see them both repping for 1.5+. plus. We spoke about you, Poor, already. Of course, your MVP yesterday, he's coming. He's basically kept that 1.5 plus KD, go KD going the whole time he's been in an MPL and really picking up that flexi role seamlessly. And you know what? He's not the only Victus player there. You've got Oscar, who's KD. You know, it's slightly dropped a little bit, but Oscar really is, I think, the, the beating heart and soul of this team. And I'm going to reiterate what I said yesterday. He's a, he's a man of very few words, but many, many kills as he sits there with that 1.48. And then last, you got Jegs. An old saying once goes, if you need a win, grab a fin. Well, 10 star, they are on the crest of a wave, and Jegs is the one on that surfboard. 1.52 KD at this point of the season. And I wouldn't be surprised if he carries that on in game one tonight. Absolutely. No surprise there, really, to see the top three teams well represented here in this stat line. Obviously, it is more than just kills, but kills do tend to help in a shooter. We've got a couple of other stat lines that we are going to look over, and that will help illustrate some of the players that maybe get recognition 
for other actions in game, namely a little bit of cost whip it. Yeah, so cost is a good indication of the impact a single player makes on a round throughout the series. And we see some repeat faces here again. Uport, Jegs, Gorgona, as you'd imagine, they have massive entries or they have massive picks that are gonna have a high cost. But one player I really want to touch on is gonna be Hungry. Yesterday we saw Hungry pick up roles like Osa continuously plays the dirty roles you have to get in and get done. And he does a fantastic job for 86 and a lot of their core strategy revolves around what Hungry can get done. He's never given the easiest tasks, but he gets it done. And with a 66% cost, gets it done very effectively. And of course, it's an OXO. Top of the standings right now. What a pickup for 10 star he has been so far. 71% cost. And from everything you see, you'll always see his name popping up. He's always winning 1VXs. Always having a massive impact for his team. 10 star, so thankful he's on their side. Absolutely, and that consistency across those eight games that he's played has been really important, and we've seen that marked difference in the playstyle during this second split. Uh, we're going to keep things moving. We have a couple more stat lines to get through. I'm not entirely sure what it is that's going to be next. It's going to be KD. Now, this is brilliant because we had a little bit of a rework of the old KD graphic prior to the show, uh, and we decided that instead of showing you the sort of number of kills and number of deaths, we were going to do it as a plus and it actually changed quite a few of the outcomes. But it seemed fitting, given that we are toward the end of the season, this really helps to illustrate, Gibson, just how important the entry can be. It does, and you question, looking at maybe the, the ratio of who the best entry in MPL is. When you look at this stat right here, it's without a doubt, it's Oscar. They could go out and get beat 7-0. And there's still a chance that, you know, when he could die first every single time, and there's still a chance he could finish on top of that opening KD margin. That's how good he has been. Jegs as well for 10 star always gets himself in those early engagements. Grubby. We spoke a little bit about Grubby in the pre-show. We spoke a little bit about him last night. He has come into Viperio and he has been so good. Like Chris Sword's interview last night, he spoke about Grubby in particular. You know, not only the fact that he's been so good so far, but the amount of potential that he has and the fact that he's on that plus 15 at this point really looks good. Moving on to Eminem, well, he is their carry. Air carry with 14 entry kills this season. And honestly, I'm, I'm surprised it's not higher with the way that he's been playing lately. And then, well, 10 star keeping up that appearance of keeping two players in nearly every single stat line. Azur on plus 13 on the entry as well. It's nice to see a couple of different faces in there, though, Wally, considering that some of these guys didn't make the cut based on the other way, the other metric of reading it. Yeah, exactly. You know, looking at it as a as actually how positive is this player, um, you know, it really does sort of change the dynamic of it. There are players that have got a lot of opening picks, but they've also got a lot of opening deaths, and that sort of negates the, uh, the sort of the usefulness of the statistic. We're going to round things out here with a look at the planters. The good old farmers who are sowing the fields whip it. Oh, well, I'm going to very much draw your eyes to Curly. Curly has been one of the standout supports. If you want to make a comparison, G2's dynasty, when Goga had that case in his hands and you knew it was going down, Curly is the exact same. Always sticks it, never has fear, and has been, a, again, part of that fantastic structure 86 has brought in. Kilius pretty close behind as well on 19, and you'll notice that there's a lot of these players that fill that more supportive role, and they're always having that confidence in such high numbers of all the teams you'd expect, because they're hyper-objective focus and no double-ups, because no one's going to have two planters. Uno at the bottom, tra trailing at the tail end. Heroic 10, they get things done in terms of kills in a round, if we're going to win, that is. So... I'm not too surprised he's a little bit lacking, not really the most comfortable role for him, so not too shocked, but I wouldn't read too deep into it for you, for Uno. A, a team that has really sort of impressed me in their ability to transition from Nordics into a wider sort of pool of, uh, of players has been Ambush. And the fact that Kilius there is credited with 19 plants, despite the fact that Ambush are fifth inside of the leaderboard. Now, it is pretty tight up in the top part of the leaderboard, so that much is granted. But it does just go to show that play style of Siege that they bring, and they've really not deviated too far away from it. And it's worked out quite well for them. Um, it, it's just something that I really enjoy seeing i feel like they've brought that sort of real different approach gibson into the league they definitely has you could ask what but now we're proper ambush stands we love everything Good. about that organ you know knowing the players the coaches we know the style that they want to play 
and they've lost a little bit in split two you know going into the start of split two we were like hey these guys could be proper contenders to make it straight to finals well the wheels kind of came off they uh they yeah. took off the round wheels they put on the square ones and they really struggled week over week and then about two weeks ago they were like you know what let's take this car back to the mechanic got the round wheels back on two ones in a row and they have looked a lot better but ollie you're down in sixth now uh they're the only team i believe in the playoffs whose position cannot change today if you're them you really need to turn it around going into the playoffs mm. because you're flying that flag for the nordic region i know you in particular you will always fly that flag for the nordic region as well and well, if they can rediscover that fe that first split form, who knows? They could go all the way. Gibson, you started out there saying that you're a big ambush fan. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm self-admittedly, I'm a little bit of an ambush fan, but I'm a little bit careful, especially when we're about to talk about predictions <laughs> yeah. on just how much of an ambush fan I am. Uh, we're going to bring up the prediction graphic and we are going to have a look and see just exactly where everybody has gone today. So despite the fact, Gibson, that you're a huge, self-admitted ambush fan, you have gone for 86 today. Well, you know, I I live in a, this is going to be very localized, but uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a fan harps and uh, I'm going to say it, I, I support Man United in football as well. I know what it's like to to support a bad team. So, you know, yes, I would love to see Ambush to win. They are a fantastic team, but Viperio are just a little bit better right now. They're on the crest of the wave. Look, as much as I would like to see Ambush win it, I love Viperio as well. They're, they were the feel-good story of Yukin last season. So, yeah, I, I think Viperio will just be too strong tonight. I agree. I'm, I really am pulling you like that. There's, a, there's <laughs> definitely a difference between prediction ELO and what you'd like to happen with mm. your heart. Uh, whip it. You have gone down. I mean, everyone's gone down the same road, really, apart from me. I'm the only one that stood head and shoulders. But talk me through your picks. Well... I can't go against 10 star. The track record against SSP looks just too good. And realistically, with their form versus SSPs, it's going to be a pretty easy prediction. I want that free low best I can. For Heroic m, m this was actually the most thought for me. Because with Heroic being a little bit up and down in form, you don't know what Heroic's going to show up. Of course, they'll have their full roster tonight. Sloth is back in. So that might be a massive boon to them. But there is that wild card. m, &M really are playing for that, that last spot at playoffs. So they might come out swinging and have a better chance. But Heroic just seem too strong. I'll echo Gibson for 86. They're a feel-good story. They are playing fantastic form. Just both their ticket to CL and Coalesce. A rising tide. I don't think Riddle can stop them as they are absolutely in the form of their careers. Well, seeing it's the end of the se uh, regular season, at least before we go into playoffs... I thought that I would just back the underdog for a change. Now, I do do a little bit of backing of the underdog. You can see 56 out of 70. I'm pretty proud of that. But for me, an Eminem win tonight would just be uh, would just be incredible. Uh, and who better than Heroic to do it against? I don't, I'm don't. i not sure it'll happen, but that's certainly what I would like to see. That is going to round us out. Then we have our games scheduled. We have our stakes set and our predictions registered so that we can, you know, maybe poke a little bit of fun later on. If we all get them all wrong, it'll be, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it probably won't happen, but it'll all be quite funny. Um, so that's going to do it really for this pre-show. I'm super looking forward to getting stuck into things. Whip it. What game tonight are you looking forward to casting? the most oh it's gonna have to be the final game of the night it's gonna be that coalesce versus riddle a lot of people look at that go oh riddle they're already relegated no wins yet but that is when a team can be the most dangerous especially yeah. with coalesce under all the pressure and that will all be decided though if heaven don't get that regulation win it will be a very interesting end to the group stage I think you guys have good, prob potentially got the best game there, really, mm -hmm. when you think about what could be on the line during that final. Um, so does that mean that you are doing... I've not even looked at the schedule, to be honest <laughs> with you. Does that... Which which game are you... Which other game are you doing, Gibson? Are you going to be doing the Eminem Heroic game? Yep. And... Uh, Very nice. I I've been a bit of a bad luck charm for Heroic, I'm not going to lie. It's, <laughs> so it's my not, prediction's looking good then. Yeah, it's not gone very well for them <laughs> when I've been on the cast. But, you know, you spoke about Whippet having the m and m and m and jersey. I've actually got uh, a Heroic and the m and m jersey side by side up there. And one wow. of them will be taken down off the wall. You know, one, I have to take one of them down, depending on who gets the win. But I'm, I'm the same as Whippet. I think Riddle Coalesce probably going to be game of the night. But it all depends on what happens in game number two. You know, the M&M &M 
heroic game. If even if that finishes as an overtime loss or even just an overtime win for Eminem, could you imagine the pressure going on Riddle then, knowing oh. that they have to win at the very minimum? They need to win a regulation, and the Riddle boys will. You know, if I was on Riddle right now, and say for example Eminem gets some sort of a win not in regulation, I'd be rubbing those hands together you know how often in your life do you get the chance to play spoiler and on a stage like this exactly and and that's really what it's all about you know you can have whatever season you want to have but if you've got chance to really throw a spanner in the works right at the end you're going to give it your best go before that we have got a slew of games to be getting through we're going to be back after a very short break when we start to prepare 10 start versus ssp don't go anywhere we'll be back in just a few My name is Justin Ostafi, also known as Sinoxo. I'm playing the second entry for Tenstar. My name is Ryan, also known as Kangaroo Kenny, and I'm the coach of Tenstar. Hello, my name is uh, Jonka, and I play support for Tenstar. Another need thrown, another need wasted. The drop comes in, Azur's going to get one. Jonka gets the other, and another flawless round from Tenstar. We learn a lot from Split 1. I think that's the main thing. Bring in, in Jonka with like the experience, being able to, like, keep us consistent all throughout the game and those really tight rounds like he can call something just keep everyone on the same page and when a team's on the same page it's it just benefits everything that you're going to do in siege the team was very welcoming like the players the more we scrimmed together the better we became it became really comfortable to play with that team the vibes are really great to be honest i i don't think i had a team before that is like that tilt proof in general and had like such a momentum and such hype while playing like we're literally winning rounds and we're screaming no you got me i'm holding i'm holding oh, main go no, no, let's, let's go, go! Oh, let's go let's go guys we got this it's nice to be able to turn up every day and spend what five maps with with everyone and just have a good time even though we might lose some rounds which we shouldn't lose we actually we keep the hype up all the time that's actually magical in my opinion for me short-term goal is obviously making challenger league longer term would be making EUL and qualifying for invite like when we started i, f I felt like already that we're gonna be in EUL relegation contender uh i thought right off the bat that we actually we would harmonize really well as a team so as Jonker said already like for, for short term i think cl is a very good goal for us we, we have a lot of fun together we have the tilt proofness uh a, a really good communication i think we have the whole package in my opinion and that's one b1 six seconds to go little Ooh. swing and there you have it leader clutches it out seventh heaven for 10 star what a team performance Okay, guys, let's go. Let's go, boys. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let's go, boys. And then the swing from Gorgona. He gets one. He's going to swing and get another. There's 22 seconds left. Clear it, clear it. You win. Nice. Oh, oh my God. Jesus, <laughs> oh, my. Go now, go now, go now, go now. Yeah, push me crouch, 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 go now. Push me as well. Push it. Uh, That's fine. Nice. Bar double door, bar double door, bar double door. Nice, nice. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Office is clear, I can Office drop. clear. Construction I... and missing frost. Construction dead. I am dropping hey, missing on frost. Missing frost? Basement boat, probably. <laughs> Where was frost? Basement. Look at this, I'm, I'm coming up with you, Scott. <laughs> Where's your kitchen? In kitchen, in kitchen. Yeah, kitchen hatch. Don't give him any fun. Nice, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, what? Blades! You know what, Jake? What? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, you need to relax. You need Junker, to relax. Junker, can I get one big? Yeah. Justin, you need to yeah. relax. And yes, and yes, 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 guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like we are so much better players than they are, but at the moment we are sitting in a corner, like, you know. Benji, I think it's captain time. <laughs> hey, we're planning. Cover, cover. No one's got short. No one has short. No one has short. How much short? I've got it. I've got it. I've got box two. Cross. Pushing me. Yeah, he's pushing me. It's a box three. Star box. No, he got me. I'm holding. I'm holding main though. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. One more, one more, one more round, boys. One more round. Let's, Let's go, go, guys. We got this. Let's get cash. In radio, 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 default, 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 default. One now. You call him leader, the man, the myth. Is he about to become a bit of a legend for ten star in this one v one? Six. Nice. Let's 
Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Boys. You're so good. I'm so good. I'm so good.
go. Four quick kills come in. And Slothar just picks them apart. Let's try and put some shots on in and managing to find the last two. Oh, but Blur just decimates. Chris steps up huge for how much three kills all E1 DC is done. What? Hello everybody and welcome back to the Northern Premier League. We are here, of course, for our final play day of the group stage, play day number 18. But arguably this is when things start to get a little bit more exciting as we can start to see how the land lies, set ourselves up for playoffs and of course our finals. Before we get there, we have got four games to get through tonight and we're going to be kicking things off here with 10 Star versus SSP. Now, we had a bit of a conversation whip it on the desk a little bit earlier on. This one was looking fairly decisive for 10 star. Yeah, it is. Just just looking at the string of form, they've been on 10 star on eight consecutive wins here. It is absolutely brilliant. The second split has been 10 star's domain and the deep run into CL calls as well. They just couldn't get over that wild hurdle. So 10 star realistically should get over SSP here today. But it is Siege, it is best of ones, I'm never going to be a 100% call before we get into the action. It never is, and you know, looking on the flip side of things, Gibson, uh, just before we bring the rosters up, thinking about how SSP really are going to approach this, are they going to look to, you know, play this like an official, are they going to look to play it like a scrim? Like, what do you think they're going to try and get out of this fixture? Well, as far as I know, they're pretty much packing their bags for the relegations so they've got another game to play before they find out whether or not they're going to be back next season so what better way to prep for that than playing mm -hmm. one of the best teams in europe right now you know nine wins on the bounce for 10 star if they win tonight well it doesn't get any tougher than that for ssp so go in get your game ready you can you know you can probably show a strat or two this time around to really you know really sharpen those knives ahead of those relegation games so yeah i think ssp still have a lot to play for well let's bring up our first roster let's kick things off with the 10 star roster whip it let me uh let me know the details tell me why these are some of the best guys in siege right now Oh, I will be very happy to do so. Leader, Azur, Jags, Yonkins, and Oxo. This roster, of course, Yonka and Oxo coming in in this second split. Talent all the way through this roster. And I asked Kenny to describe this team in three words, but the one word that stood out to me most is firepower. And that is Leader and Jags. These two players. Give them any weapon they want. They can absolutely tear the opposition apart. I'm sure some people in chat have seen on socials leader during the quals. Kept referring himself as clear as to everyone he went up against. And sometimes you may as well just believe it. Zanoxo has been an also a brilliant injection of life and energy. Really in the, that perfect flex roller. Even so has the most plants down. It's absolutely one of the best players I have seen. So many teams wanted to grab him during that transfer window. Tensar got it and it has shown his value. This side, one of the best in Europe. No doubt we will see them in CL. And today, I think they get over SSP. Tenstar are going to quickly find themselves, in my opinion, in that sort of dangerous realm of having players picked up from them like we've already seen with savage where it's such a good it's, it's a great team they've got a great structure and sort of format that they like to roll with and it just it lets people shine and it you can see these players at the best sometime um and obviously that this is a double-edged sword isn't it because you see you, you know you get good results in something like npl but then your players are looking at moving up the ranks and, and getting themselves into eul and cl and so on but certainly a team i'd love to see go a long way definitely a team that i'm backing to get themselves into challenger league and here tonight against ssp let's bring up ssp gibson and you can give me the rundown yeah, so this is SSP. We've seen a lot of these guys over the course of the season. And normally when we get into this segment, I like to talk a little bit about South Park. I, like, I always tend to say that they play as he does. If he is on it, then SSP are on it. Much like, you know, much like when you watch DZ play over in NA. If Citizen is on it, you know that they're going to have a good game. But when it comes to these guys, I think they need to really up their confidence. You know, the entry conversion could be a lot higher. You know, we all know that Nicky is a fantastic player. He's been about for a, for a while. I think Kuzik has been in and around the scene too. So for them, uh, it is going to be a little bit of a change too because Reaxis coming in did mean that they had to change their comms. So we can't say that that doesn't have an impact as well when used to 
come and, and finish. And now you're bringing in a player from Austria. Of course, you kind of have to use English then. And that's going to be a little bit of a learning experience in its own. So if they can go out tonight, start putting something positive on screen. Look for South Park winning those opening engagements. You just never know where this game could end up going then. It's going to be a tricky one to call. So when we look at this, I think we have to, to wait. X has is, X is vanished off to the void, so you're stuck with two Irish <laughs> people now. Unfortunate for everyone's his ears. SSP, as we talked about yesterday, in particular against Cole Last, they really struggled uh, against our... Uh, really struggled with getting their executions rolling. They just didn't have that final edge, that final bit of sharpness, and that language barrier, that change of language that they come in, certainly going to be one of those massive factors. And when you're going as a team like Ten Star, who don't really make it easy to get your executions rolling, you can really start seeing them getting punished in this matchup. And that yeah, punishment is... Oh, he's back! I'm, I'm, I'm back. I, I just, I can't, uh, I can't give visual. That's the, that's the problem right now. Um, we're going to take a quick look at the previous matchup. Um, it's no real surprise to see 10 Star getting that win over SSP. Um, they, they really are just team, you know, two different teams with a different stamp at this point, Whippet. Yeah, they are. I mean, 7-0 is the... Kind of ultimate seal of 10 star domination in that one. SSP just didn't have a real chance to compete. I don't imagine we want to see Clubhouse. SSP will likely won't want to go there again. But for 10 star, I have a feeling we might see them maybe try a new map or a map that they're not overly confident on. They won't, of course, show something they're still hiding. Not really the time to do that, obviously. But they're going to either play something default or something you want to work on. They might just treat this as an official style scrim. Well, let's see how it all shakes down. It's certainly going to be a bit of a mountain to climb here for SSP. Um, everything, you know, really stacking up against them here. Do you think that the map has much to play? I think we're going to bring the veto up, Gibson. It definitely does. The map always impacts the game that you're going to see. And Ten Star a side that like to go a little bit, uh, a little standard. We're going to Shally, which is one of the most played maps this season. The SSP had the choice of going back to club. They chose to go to Shally this time around. And Honestly, it'll be a bit of fun. Shally's a map where, you know, a lot of the time, if you just go out and you, you win your ones, you're going to go ahead and win that map. So I'd love to see what SSP are going to bring to the table. But every time I look back at that screen, I look at those stats again, and you just look at the difference in the game that Faro and Vinoxo had, or Zanoxo had the last time around. A 4.3 KD with an 85% cost. If Zanoxo gets anywhere close to those numbers in this one, It'll be another one for 10 star. It's huge, isn't it? I mean, that's not even a, a sort of a gap that you can even try to bridge if Sinoxo has a similar performance here. You're going to need mm -hmm. some people stepping up on SSP. Um, in terms of the map choice, whip it down to a clubhouse or a chalet and 10 star opting to pick the chalet. Do you think there's anything really to, to read into that or, or are you just thinking 10 star are comfortable wherever here? Uh, Ten Star are very comfortable on a map like Chalet. Uh, I'll, I'll draw from the quad Seattle Quads this past weekend. Again, they had a very, very strong performance against Machko, a team from PG Nats here, where they managed to get two flawless rounds back to back to close it out. They are super comfortable here. I don't think it's going to be an easy day in the office for SSP. Ten Star certainly won't let it be easy, but Ten Star, this side has so much quality. Would have been comfortable basically no matter where they played. Well, we are ready to throw it over to our casters. We're going to be passing this one over to Jerry and Novi, our first game of the night here. 10 start versus SSP. Yeah, yeah, I was just... I I was, I was doing I was doing a quick check of crap. Am I am I muted? But no no, I'm I'm all right. I'm all right. But it's it's exciting, Jerry. It's the final final day of group stage. It feels it feels like it's been a really, really long time, right? Like it's been, what, 18 play days? Like how many? Three, four months at this point. It's so many games, so many teams, so many months, but it all comes down to today. Yeah. Um, I, I think that it's it's obviously a slightly different story for SSP because like their, their season's effectively over, right? They don't have anything to play for. Locked into that uh, relegation playoff spot at the very least. Uh, they do get the chance to fight their way back into MPL uh, next season. But 10 star, they do have some mistakes here. Of course, three points is what they need to be in with a chance of possibly 
beating Heroic to that first place spot at the end of the group stage. It is surprising that uh, at this point in the season, you know, considering how good a season Heroic have had and how dominant they've been, um, it's been... You expected them to be comfortable at the top here, but even now it comes down to that final day and, you know, Eminem Academy fighting against Heroic later for everything. You could see that upset happening and 10 star could snag that first position it, there's so many like high, i mean there's it, it all of it sort of boils down to this uh is it actually gonna happen but the fact that it could is just so exciting right because you know ssp have nothing to we saw yesterday riddle had have nothing to lose nothing to prove at that point they were locked in to going going home getting regulated from the league and they still put on their best performance of the entire season yesterday so far they didn't come up with a win but they were so so close and ssp i'm looking for that today i like you've got nothing left to prove you got nothing to lose though so play with your absolute hearts put it all on the line well they are putting it on the line of course right now we are through that ban phase and we've seen some interesting ones come out you've got the buck being banned out and that's a uh, Quite an unusual one, of course, does have quite a bit of impact on this map. You consider how soft a lot of the floors are, particularly from the top to the middle floor. There's a lot of vertical destruct destruction that's been going on Defense in that regard. And removing it from play, what 10 Star have wanted to do, clearly uh, seeing something in the way that SSP play this. It's an interesting map to want to take SSP to, in the sense that they've had a decent season here, honestly. You know, they I, this is on the, on the back of four losses, granted, but... The performances that they put up on Shally have been indicative of a team that, like Ubros and like Snow were, were sort of priming us for, that really do like Chalet. They do fancy themselves here. You know, they managed to take Victor to overtime here. That's no mean feat. They've actually put up decent fights against Heroic, both sides of the split here. So I wouldn't rule out SSP getting, you know, a good four or five rounds here, potentially. Ten Star, though, obviously have gone here for a reason. It's a map that, again, performance-wise, I think they're not at their best on, but they always get the result, and that's what matters. Yeah, this is the case of... Uh, Tens are still undefeated, right? Uh, since yeah. coming back from the split. So, like, they've got this undefeated run going. They are fighting. You made a really, really cool point earlier before the pre-show when we are talking about it, which is if you took before the break as a separate split to now, Tense, it wouldn't even be close. I know 10 stars on the heels of Rogue. They would be miles above everyone. They're in such incredible form. So the expectation is they're going to win in this game. Like before it's even started, you'd 100% say 10 stars going to win. But it's Rainbow Six Siege. You still have to win seven rounds or, well, more if it's going to go to overtime. It could happen. And I, I, and I want to I wanna, I wanna be proven wrong, Jerry, today. I want to be proven wrong. Now, I'm excited by one thing right now, but we'll get to that because right now we've got a bit of a scrap going on on the middle floor and Jegs is managing to duck himself back inside the safety of Mudroom for the time being because SSP have set up an effective crossfire on that kitchen hallway. They've got one still sitting in bar and one in kitchen itself. As is trying to sort of hunt down another Roma around this uh, top floor area. This is a wine cellar defense, of course, so SSP playing very far and very wide to try and waste as much time as possible and i'd say that they've done a decent job of it honestly one minute 30 elapsed and you can still see the drones coming up from 10 star they still haven't got that full control of sort of around the dining area that you'd expect them to for this kind of push south park still lurking as a insularium looking to try and get the pinch on he's got some vaguely fresh feet and of course the ERC tracker won't do anything to disguise that brilliant use of the gadgetry there. Vigil completely destroyed. Jegs will claim the kill, but that was all as at hard work. And the Thermites opening the snowmobile garage door. And now they've got that line of sight all the way across the B site. And the rest of SSP, they're going to start feeling the pinch from 10 star as they set up the vertical plate and the angles in. But Nicky Wu might be able to get no oh. not able i think that a, a bullet's ricocheting off the stairs and jeg swings around the corner for another one reacts is giving props as well into the server barrow tries to recover something but it's at least a one versus two but there's the crossfire set up and as it closes out that round 10 star looking very very controlled but maybe a touch touch too much chaos for them for their likings i'm sure kenny will be like come on guys play come on 
You know, don't don't let don't give them a chance to get back in the round. But still, very good job by Ten Star. Yeah, that's what I mean about this Ten Star team on this map is that sometimes this season it's been sloppy, but they've gotten the job done. And that's what matters most. The thing I was really excited about, and it did pop up in the kill feed during the end there, was we saw the fuse. And we love to see a bit of fuse here. We had a bit of Dinoxo running fuse a couple of weeks ago, in fact, on this map. And to quite considerable effectiveness. It was almost an advert for fuse, I said at the time. I um, believe it was the win against Coalesce, which they ended up taking 7-4. So... Yeah, a, a massive deal for them. They really do like to bring it, um, and you can understand why. He offers a lot of utility. Those cluster charges, not just used to, you know, get kills, but also to, well, primarily used to remove utility. But we also saw him using it to kind of clear areas in the same way that you might use a Ying, for example, to mark an entire room red so that you know your entries can push forward another sort of buffer room or two so that they're safe in doing so. And we may well get to see a bit of that in action on this site as it is kitchen and dining and my prime memory of that fuse usage was emptying out the bathroom and just enabling the uh, your entries to push from piano and claim that ground very quickly it looks as though we are however of course not going to see the fuse this time round and Octo instead on that nomad and well he proved himself on this operator too i, I feel like the last time i saw 10 star on this map it was all about uh, zanocto just flexing between these two ops and delivering absolute hell to his opposition yeah, he's really shown the depth in his operator pool, right? Like, we expect every player can shoot back. They can all fire the weapons. But the intricacies on how certain operators should just be played, it's, sometimes it's too hard for players to switch between those roles. You know, Thermite's going to feel very different from a Nook, for example, or, you know, Azza. I say this as he slowly sneaks on in. How on earth has he got it in that position? Snuck past the defaults. Gets two. He's on the site. Where's the rest of the team, Jerry? South Park at least gets one, but 10 star are on the bloody site. And that is Nook at her finest. Azza is doing absolute bits in this game, getting two entry kills for himself, and now he's hungry for more, taking out that key utility on site. Zanoxo finds Reactus again. That Nomad just set up to cut off as soon as the chaos is inflicted onto SSP. They scramble and they get caught by these angles. Farah and the South Park now in the two versus four. South Park does manage to take down Jegs and Jonker will fall off the defuse, but after that kill, he's safe to go for another one. As a team kills the planter. Okay, that was not in the script. Farah, you've got a bit of a lifeline here. Lots of time remaining still for 10 star they maybe have an idea of where farrah is but more importantly he's got yellow pings directly onto 10 stars location zanoxo trying to set that diffuser down maybe or rather covering for azza to set it down but he decides to fall off it maybe baiting a bit of a push it's all quiet now everyone's just taking their time Farrah wants to try and get this angle, but there's no prepped holes and has a cannon stick it and now we're in a post plant and farrah he can no longer play safe there we go azza Closing it. it out. That was... All right. That's a bit of a write-off. That was purely just Azur just <laughs> doing Nook things in this game. Like, that was SSP leaving a gaping hole in the middle of their defense, which Azur walked straight through. And walked straight into the building and just started causing havoc. Every You could see the slow reaction as well from Nikki Wu. So it felt, you know, we, we talked about SSP and the fact that they're now communicating in English. And they said that there's this lag, but they're still trying to get used to it instead of, instead of the majority of the players are finished. Um, and you could see it there. You expected the Maestro should have just like 180 round and start blasting that LMG in Az's direction. But there's that slight pause or that communication slipping. And that seems to be SSP's undoing. Usually on defense, it doesn't matter too much because it's more intuitive, I want to say, than attacking in terms of cohesiveness. But... 10 star just able to create that chaos and then 10 stars better in those situations than ssp is in their current form absolutely it really is just showing the depth of uh, experience the wealth of experience that 10 star have right now and the kind of the gulf between the two teams so another attempt at this wine defense coming through from ssp and they are once again going to try and commit to that heavy or deep roam or tall roam i suppose because the site is in the depths and the roam is in the heights. In the heights. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
a little bit, a little bit hot where I am right now. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling that sort of, you know, the the samba you, and. You wish you were on <laughs> this map right now, right? Like, oh yeah, you, no, I, yeah. I would be, I would be enjoying like the hot tub in whatever it is, like minus five degree here outside. But this would be beautiful. Oh, oh yeah, lovely. Oh, yeah, there's heat, heat wave going on. <laughs> if anyone can't tell, all, all the Brits are struggling. We're not we're not built for this weather whatsoever. <laughs> and SSP don't seem to be built for 10 star either. 10 star already. This is a minute faster than they did it the last time they attacked this site. So 10 star able to get through their checklist faster. And now they themselves are going to start opening up that vertical angle. And you said the fuse. So good at clearing out rooms. It's an exo. It's an oxo on the operator. And even if he doesn't find any kills with it, just like you said, the information gained from knowing that someone isn't in there is absolutely invaluable. I think this is an interesting move from Tenstar. They are not just committing to opening that snowmobile wall, but also doing a full top-down clear. It's what they did the first time around, but like you say, maybe a little bit different in the time front. Jake's though taking down Farah as the opening pick won't be sniffed at, and that is the opening that they wanted for certain. But it just makes me a little bit concerned because it means that Tenstar, they have to be completely ruthless and fully efficient with every second that's available to them in the round. If they want to do that top-down clear and get the execute, then they are going to need some kills to go their way. So it's good that they found that opener. Reaxis sending out a impact to try and remove that drone and actually does a little bit of tickle damage onto Jegs, but I don't know if he expects him to be quite so close. The swing comes with the LMG, but he's just a tiny bit better there. Nails the headshot and now... Four versus four, only one of those LMGs now remaining for the side of Ten Star. It's in the hands of Zenoxo. You wouldn't bet against him, but Reax is certainly feeling himself, holding aggressively now. Zenoxo can begin trying to clear out some of that utility on the site, and he will maybe miss the opportunity to hit that mute jammer that's denying that main breach. But the double swing comes through, and leader makes sure it's done in one. Reax is going down South Park, now reassuming this position and pushing up very tight with the ERC scanner in his hands. I'm not too sure if Azza will be aiming low enough to get this, but Zenoxo claiming Nikiwu. Azza does, in fact, win that duel, and now it's all down to Kuzik in a one versus four. Donker's starting to plant. Kuzik has a lot to do. The smoke is basically a barrier to him. He knows he can't push through that. Gets one before going down, denies the plant. But it doesn't matter. 10 start, move to a 3 and 0 scoreline. And Sis State Punks currently 0 for 3 in terms of entries they've lost that opening engagement every single time and i found it really interesting looking at their conversion rate their actual conversion rate is fairly high well decent at least uh, at, at an average level like 60 something percent mm. but collectively as a team they have the most amount of opening deaths of any team in mpl at the moment and you can tell that they're just struggling. They seem to be on a 5 versus 5. They just seem to be disadvantaged. And there's no trading really happening. Uh, you compare it to, say, Victus, who are so, so good at often... You know, I think it's because they've had to play with so many subs and everything. They get, they're they very used to almost sacrificing someone, but at least being able to trade back immediately and getting it to that level sort of player man count so they're not at a huge disadvantage going into the round. We're finally seeing the bar defense come out, and this surprises me. Of course, SSP really favoring that basement, but you've got to bring out what many consider to be the strongest site on the map at some point. Doing it round four, I don't know. It just means that you won't be able to do it twice, right? Or successfully, at least, because once it's locked out, it's locked out for three rounds. So round four means that you're only going to get to see it once, which is, again, just, just not ideal, especially for a map which is one that you may struggle to defend typically. Um, you need to be giving yourself every single possible advantage. So I feel like that's a bit of a, a misstep in terms of just stubbornly trying to stick onto that wine defense and make something work when clearly it wasn't working. So they're not so sneaking that drone in somehow evades the notice of Nikovu on the frost and takes out a couple of pieces of utility, including that default cam at the top of Ivy. But nothing too unrecoverable for SSP. They still have these positions in play. They still yet to see... 10 star enter the building at all they've got their drone set up and that entry is bound to come pretty shortly as a currently absolutely flawless in this game 7 and 0 right now gonna open up that a9 balcony and just get ready to hop on in but he would be doing so mistakenly if he were to with that frost map waiting for him to welcome him <sighs> he didn't I, i'm just didn't certain spot it. he didn't look he didn't spot he absolutely it didn't Does he shoot down this is the thing they have spotted the frost. They have seen the frost on the Twitch drone earlier. 
So he's going to send in that flash. And the question is, does he shoot down? Nice. Flying, flashing, but it's actually Zenoxo who's coming in all the way through library. Reaxis, though, does pick him up after Zenoxo claims South Mark. So good reaction there from Reaxis. As it doesn't follow it up with any attempted refrag, however, Leader just hoping that maybe Reaxis strays into his path in the in the aftermath of that engagement, but it doesn't happen. Reaxis playing very nicely. He knows his square foot. He knows exactly where he can and can't be. Very disciplined play from the Jaeger up this up to this moment. I believe Azza used one of the frag grenades just underneath the window to well, up just in case. I think, or maybe it was a miss throw. Either, way, either side, it works in his favor. And this is the closest SSP has gotten to actually coming close to even winning a round. Ironically, it's a one to one trade, four to four. And Star still have a lot of utility left. But SSP, their anti utility is working. Their ADSs, their magnets, it's all sucking up all of 10 stars ability and Kusik has just put them in a prime position in this round reaxis is going to yeet out that position back towards the site 10 star are behind for the first time this entire game excellent call there from ssp taking out Azor, who was lurking inside a fireplace as soon as he went down that was a perfect opportunity for reactors to fall back and now they have that numbers advantage 30 seconds left. Tensar really have to do something quite spectacular here to put it back. A lot of damage sent onto Reactors. Jegs just about survives it and takes down the Jaeger to even that man count. Still, though, only 20 seconds left. This power position of Kusik, he can cut off anyone that wants to enter through bar, but it looks like Jonker is deliberating going down the hatch instead. Nikivu spots it, sprays, but can't connect. Jegs goes down in the meantime. Kusik with that crossfire. Leader knows where he is, but can't do anything about it. And look at the time. Only a second left, and they cannot fight the anchors at all the three players of ssp stand tall holding out resolutely on that bar defense and they claim their first round far far better from ssp and 10 star first moment of shakiness of a slight bit of uncoordination in this team but still 10 star so i'm not going to hold it against them <laughs> This is probably the most important thing because it also that site, Bar and Gaming, is one of, uh, for, in my opinion, one of the stronger sites if you do the right setup and take the right boxes on the defense. They can't go back there. And they can't, this so where the do they, that's it. Where do they go now? This is probably their best bet, right, compared to Basement because this one, they pretty much just did an oopsie and let Azar into the site. Yeah. Now they get to actually play it for real. And when 10 stars playing into a, a site that they've already fought into, we saw that with Basement, they go even quicker because they have that confidence yeah, to take those steps. They shouldn't on this one in comparison. They should still be a little bit cautious because, you know, they got not lucky, but kind of lucky on that last attack into the site. Okay, so what we saw there in the prep phase, I'm not too sure if it happened in the first round, but either way, it's absolutely necessary. It was Kusik placing down that Banshee inside of the dining hallway. That's exactly the route that we saw the Nook just wander through and grab a free 2k last time around. So they're guarding against that possibility here, stacking some more Banshees around. Of course, they operate, you know, pretty similarly to barbed wire. They slow enemies, they give you a bit of a notification that they're there, they require some bulletproof utility or what? rather explosive utility to deal with them south Park just gets himself caught out there possibly looking for that cheeky run out but Azar is just in the right place at the right time to pin him down and that's a free opener south Park having not the best of games but i mean you could say that about most of the ssp players right now they are struggling to find especially that opening engagement i don't know what was happening there that just seemed a little bit odd but SSP falling behind again. Another opening death to add to the tally. They've shown that they can equalize the scoreline. I like that butter sledge <laughs> climbing yeah, on top. Just this. to open up the floor. Like that's a clever use. Don't usually see a vertical sledgehammer, but Farrow, for it. good work to bring Azza back in line. Azza, of course, the top performing player for 10 star. Not that it matters when Zenoxo is on the server, but it still, it takes out that extra man, that extra firepower. And now we're in that even Stevens playing field where both teams are at the even man count at the halfway point of the round. So a lot of utility left in the hands of 10 star though they have plenty of this hole the nade rolling in will take out kusik and that is just a prime example of taking an opportunity when you see it unfortunate there that kusik's the one on the other end of it it really could have been anyone but that's it three versus four now so on his favorite window in the whole game 
Just trying to pin back Barra. But of course, he has the protection of his own castle barricades. Won't stop those bullets, though. Nothing inside a bathroom to protect you from the LMG of Jegs, who will land that shot every day of the week. Reactus and Nikovut now in the 2v4. Like we've seen this sort of situation before, Novi, far too many times. SSP with their backs against the wall. Tenstar looking absolutely dominant at the moment. And still a minute to pin down these final two players. So much time left in the round. Well, SMT alarm's not going to <laughs> even last long enough for any of the SSP players to use it correctly. Raxus at least has a little oh. bit more freedom, but Xenoxo was ready and waiting. The order's going to go rat a tat tat, but it doesn't find anything because Jegs fires back, and that will be the round. 10 star push us even further forward. We said that if 10 star lose this game, there is, there is a chance that we could see that number two spot slip away from them. But so far, 10 stars say, nope, we want it. We want that spot. Give us that finals spot now. Yeah, it, only one point is what they need to secure that because Viperio 86 will be so far out of their distance in terms of round difference. It doesn't matter if they could equal the points, 10 star would still be ahead. But, of course, there's an added bonus. If they get seven rounds and close it out in regulation instead of just six, then they have that chance of even sealing the first place slot, but no, as we know. So it's uh, it's an exciting sort of scenario for them. And obviously, they look well on course to gain all three points here with the way they're playing. And I suppose the one caveat to that so far is that this is SSP defending Chalet. And maybe they, you know, if we see a round here where they close it and they make it that 4-2 split, it is possible to recover. It is possible to, to, to push them all the way, potentially. It's just so difficult given the form of these teams, given the strength of these teams relatively, as we know. You know, 10-star just coming off the back of a top four finish in that EUCL qualifiers. They've been completely flawless in this split of NPL. I think not only is it 10 or 9... Or eight, eight wins, rather. I think it's eight regulation wins. No, I am mistaken. They did get one overtime. But still. Farrah, though. Taking down Jegs. Big, big pick. Finker early off the board is a huge boon for any defensive side. Yep. That's a huge amount of utility removed. And as well as the gadget. That's what I always feel is the thing that people... It doesn't really come into the conversation as much with Finker because she's got the LMG. She's got the frag grenades. There's so much in her kit. That extra bit of health can be the difference between a player having enough HP to take a gunfight later into the round. And it does stack up, especially with the amount of boost you get. But without her, well, SSP, they have a bit of an advantage. They have about a 65% conversion rate as well. If they get the first pick, they are just quite honestly quite poor at getting that first pick. But mm -hmm. they're in a good position now. 4-2 isn't the best scoreline, but it would be a great platform for them to then build off on their attack. Yeah, it's a hell of a lot better than 5-1, right? So that's what they want. And like you say, they are actually in with a relatively decent chance given their form in terms of converting those opening frags. And here we go. Those are Noxo getting that eventual trade, finding Nikovut, but... The Rook already having placed his armor, everyone benefiting from that extra little bump up in HP. And of course, you have the healing stations of Reaxis. This is just a team that is engineered to take gunfights, to be able to swing these corners and juice themselves back up. You know, everyone on these comfort guns, these powerful weapons, with the exception of Pharaoh on the Valkyrie. But you've got the intel as well to swing with that she brings. That being said, we're missing the execute here because they've already managed to open the wall. Jonker in that default plant spot. SSP have no idea. They're not doing anything about it, Novi. They are miles away. Farrow with the only C4 in the lineup is on the bottom floor. And 10 star, they've just done a smash and grab. And Faro looked for the run out to try and remove Azra in the window, but the Claymore blocked it. Had to kind of fake it out, but there's the Thunderbird coming in. That spear is such a colossal piece of weaponry. But who can even talk about guns when we can talk about players? The weaponry on the side of 10 Star. Your kit is an absolute unit. Long angle in with the sight as well. Easy pickings, 10 Star genuinely make those firefights look so so easy that's the second time in that half that ssp have just let it slip a little bit taken their eye off the site for slightly too long at the wrong moment in time and 10 star have fully capitalized the first time of asking it was that slip into sight from azar on the nook in kitchen just completely punishing that 
sort of absence of any kind of intel looking in that direction or any sort of early warning system. Of course, the mice are evil eyes just bypassed by the by the by the nook. But that time round, it was a lack of intel on the site, a lack of a read into the situation that your breach is open and they're planting. When you've got a Valkyrie on the board, that's near inexcusable. Where were the bodies? They were far too far away. Like I noted, you know, the, the Valkyrie playing on the bottom floor, in no position to deny that part with the C4. All of the bodies completely far and wide. They're expecting maybe to come in contact with a, a deep 10 star clear on the middle floor, perhaps, but it didn't happen. And Star just took that opportunity. And now 5-1. They're two rounds away, Novi, from getting all three points. And one round away, in fact, from securing their spot in the playoffs. Or in the finals, rather. Skipping the playoffs entirely. One round away from Ten Star. This has been a long, old season just to get to this point. I'm sure, especially for the, the core three, Azza, Leader, and Jex, who have been with this team for a long, long time. I'm sure it would be such a relief to be able to secure and punch their ticket. They came so, so, like, they've been on this phenomenal journey. We've been talking about them for ages. You've been hyping them up. Fresh has been hyping them up. Everyone has wanted to see this team succeed. And it feels like the engine is finally, is finally being engineered correctly. And now 10 Star is firing on all cylinders. But just got to get that one more round and ssp they could be the gatekeepers they could be the ones to just keep 10 star at least on their toes so we're looking at a fairly standard 10 star defensive lineup here as a going for that early trench run out taking out nikovu on the repel and now falling back expecting the attempt of the refrag from reaxis who's nading deep into the trench wall he doesn't expect him to have fallen into wine himself that shot will give away the location of Azza, but playing this tight angle with the dmr reaxis is not going to have any of that the call is made he needs to rejoin the rest of the team they need to try and isolate this roamer on the top floor instead this guy holding the shield this is a wine defensive one no is it um, no, this is a bar defense. I've, I've, I had a very bit of a brain fart there. Yeah, bar defense. You've got all the shields. You've got the Wamai's, the discs, everything. The Warden coming in as well to guard that top floor. So they just want to try and pick apart the setup. But Jegs, he ain't done. The rest of Jeg 10 star, they aren't, they aren't done. They just want to keep getting these kills. Three versus five now, losing a lot of utility. There goes the final nade on the side of SST. Jegs with another. Jonka with a fourth for his team. And all up to Kusik now. This round has gone by in a flash, Novi. Kusik just about damages Jonka, but it's not quite enough. And he's expecting the jump outs now. The aggression is flooding forward. Go. Ten Star want to get this done quickly. Xenoxo will find it eventually. A near flawless round for Ten Star. And that secures their spot in the finals. Congratulations, 10 Star. You haven't even won the game yet, and already you have punched your ticket to finals. They are confirmed to be one of the two teams into that, not the next stage, but stage after alongside Heroic. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure Kenny and the rest of the team behind the scenes as well, because, you know, not just the players, but the support stuff behind, we've been singing their praises as well as the org. But it's six to one. Attackers need Can they get a nice regulation win? Like, what a way to lift yourselves up before going through into playoffs. Like, a 7-1 is a very comfortable scoreline and something to be happy of, right? Going forward, we said this with Victus yesterday. Are Victus or Viper going to try their hardest? Well, yes. There's not long until playoffs. You may as well go out with a bang and get yourselves a win because every single win is a positive. Every single loss, no matter the stakes, it weighs in on the mind. And winning, winning is a habit. And 10 star, you know, it's almost a foregone conclusion that they're going to close this out either in the next round or the one after or the one after that. At this point, you just expect them to. But they really do want to get it done in one, right? You know, this is a situation where they're making a habit of winning. They're riding that momentum. And also, they probably don't want to show a ton. If they can get this done in eight rounds then that's great that's less intel for their opposition going into those finals of course they played a, a fair bit of chalet over the chalet over these weeks but 10 star you know they they are just sticking to that speed run mentality speed pick uh, speed peaks <laughs> spawn peaks to galore i guess you could call it a speed peak Usyk will get that refrag reactors again there with a follow-up this is very rapid novi we had three deaths in the opening 20 seconds I speed peak sounds like Ubisoft is gonna readjust spawn peaking and rebrand it as speed peaks. 
Like, that's what it sounds like. It's like a new product introducing the new product, Speed Peaks. But speaking of speed, South Park and Co. have actually put themselves in a, such a good position. They might have lost Nicky Wee, but the rest are all alive and kicking. There's just two 10 star players left. Make that one because that was a bit of. I think 10 star having, now that they've secured it, they are just having a bit of fun with it at this point. But SSP, they're giving an itch. They're going to take a yard and they're going to get the plant down. It's all up to Azza, who is having a monster game. 11 to 2, 5.5, 6 KD. There we okay. go. Just bumped it up oh. to make the math a little bit easier for me. Can he make it difficult once more and give me a decimal to work with? They, they threw so that they could give Azra a chance to get a 1vx. This is my my theory here. And he's doing a decent job of it. Almost denied that plant early, but now it has been stuck. 1 versus 2. Defenders, well, attackers are now defending that plant spot. And they've fallen back. Still within reach, though. Now they've ducked out of the site. And Azra can maybe try and get the ninja defused. But there is still intel. And the active drone work of Farah, who's still behind that Twitch drone and really cause some problems. Kusi getting another drone into position and they're just harassing him at this point. No point zapping him. It's not going to do enough damage. As are just going to try go for the ninja defuse here. Maybe expects that drop but no, they haven't rotated that far. Send some shots his way. 10 seconds left. He really just has to stick it now. Past the point of no return. Yes, it is. As a doesn't matter what you do here. Go pad your stats. Try and get some kills but Barra will deny him even that joy. Doesn't want him to get the satisfaction and it was a quick round. It was a round where 10 star probably didn't show anything that could be entirely useful for teams that are coming up against them later. But SSP, they're prolonging this game. They're, you know, keeping themselves in with a mathematical chance, I suppose, of winning the game. Still, it's always possible. That being said, that felt like a little bit of a throw by 10 star in some mm -hmm. of those rounds. Um, Cis State Punks officially officially i mean i think already officially and in, in they've locked into that eight spot so they're not playing for anything other than pride but like riddle did yesterday can they mount a, like just a comeback even if they win like the next two rounds uh and and they do it in a in a good style using solid fundamentals i think it's a good demonstration of what these players can do when when they're firing at that sort of level um yeah but so far it feels like they're more winning on 10 stars mistakes than necessarily SSP playing particularly amazingly. Yeah, and that's not a discredit to SSP because we said the same thing about Heroic when they came up against 10 Star earlier this split. You know, it was a 7-3 victory for 10 Star. We saw the team comms in the video you might have been watching earlier. And that 7-3 game, it really was a case of 10 Star just dropping the ball a couple of times. So, you know, even the best teams in EU do this or are made to look like this by this current 10 Star roster. So, yeah. Uh, SSP, don't, don't be too heartbroken if, if you do end up losing this game. But, just just for a second, let's entertain the possibility that they could beat them. Could you imagine the scenes? Could you imagine the upset and what that would do as a kind of question mark going into finals or what have you? It's, it's what I mean by the loss. They could, 10 star could in every single one of these next rounds, right? All the way through, give uh, not give SSP the win, but le essentially have them win and 10 star doesn't change the situation whatsoever however it's like you said it's that mental aspect everyone's going to be going they're going to be going yeah we 7 3 heroic and it's like yeah but you lost to ssp <laughs> from a 6 2 6 1 lead or whatever like yeah. you, like come on stop like stop talking and you, you have that aspect and that most players like 99 percent of players are fine but i don't believe for a second any player who says oh yeah, yeah it doesn't bother me i, I guarantee you, the tiniest little bit it will bother them and that little bit could be the difference between them winning and losing or oh. hitting that shot because they've got confidence but that is huge uh, electrochlor has just denied that and no. you can see the thermite's kind of looking and the twitch is looking dumbfounded at least Farrow's opened it back up it's acoustic no look there's still an opportunity you've got to come back i need to open it up again yeah there's no world in which an electrochlor trick should work against this lineup you know you've got the twitch you've got the nades you've got the thermite the quickest possible hard breach so the fact that he even managed to remove one of those exothermic charges is huge because you think about ssp strategy they want to try and open up and maybe rotate round but in the meantime there are kills going back and forth through that open breach leader at least stems the bleeding for the time being taking down reactors and the finker gone the lmg gone as always a huge boon as mentioned but so Obviously, with that one exothermic charge gone, now they know that they need to push deep. Doesn't 
really react to the presence of the Cade and Jonker with two massive picks there. That could be the end of the game right there. Nikivu does manage to take him out, but is caught out by Azza lurking inside a bar. All up to Farah, now down to the one versus one after taking out leader. Diffuser is recoverable, but this is a nice angle being held by Azza. Spots the gun barrel, but with that pickup, now Farah can duck and deep into the other side. Expects perhaps a push. Wants to try and set the diffuser down. Tense moments here to try and keep SSP alive in this game. Comes off the plant. Nice reactions from Farah. But Azza has the HP advantage here. The peak comes through. Ooh. Farah lands the headshot. SSP. They close that gap. And maybe there is some hope of maintaining pride. Oh, Farah is one of the newer sort of... They sort of swapped a couple of players around. He came in and he has been performing very, very well. He's been a... a Definite high point for this team alongside Reaxis. Let's have a look at that. Oh, so that close. just that you can see because the thermite had run away. He thought he Kusik thought he had it. I think it, literally the Twitch had to Faro had to say, "Hey Kusik, we haven't got the breach open. You've got to come back <laughs> because he run around the side of the building." I mean, the thing is, right? Jonka got a two K in that round, and he electro claw tricked a breach. He will be mad that the 10 star have not just close out there and then, quite honestly. Given his individual performance in that round, that is a win con right there. Honestly, yeah, y y we should be we should be back to cams by now. We should be talking about how 10 star have won 7 2 or 7 1. But they, in, I think they're adopting the mentality of their bigger brothers in heroic a little. You know, they, they do a little trolling. This is this is not <laughs> this is a not little trolling. Yeah, little they do a little trolling. trolling, and you know that mentality. It's something that you don't want to slip into necessarily because it has cost heroic the odd point here or there, the odd game here or there. In fact, within MPL, and it's what gave Ten Star the possibility, and still gives Ten Star the possibility of finishing in first place right now in this season. You know, so up against Eminem Academy later, that it, it really could go either way in the sense that Eminem Academy have almost everything to fight for. So. You, you know, making that winning mentality a permanent thing, it does have its benefits. Definitely does have uh, its benefits. But also, I think giving SSP a little bit of rope to climb themselves back on to the game and <laughs> get cruel. themselves into it. It, it. I mean, it's a little bit cruel, but also I, I've got to say for these teams, for SSP, this is their final game of the season, right? They're not in playoffs. Yep. Giving them a few extra rounds to have a bit of fun with it and and show show what they can do. I'm I'm kind of all for it. I you know SSP seems to be enjoying it. Barrow's starting to heat up. Yeah. He's, what six to six? Who six on six to seven? Like South Park's, they've started hitting their shots right, and now Ten Stars also having fun with it. I'd be I, I wouldn't be surprised if SSP are like, yeah, we had a lot of fun in this game as well. Maybe just maybe they might be able to get that fourth round. They haven't lost anyone yet, and that's usually their their main hurdle that they come across is getting that opening kill it's usually that opening death if not for that mentality then farah wouldn't have his you know 1v2 clip against 10 star including xg2's jonker to add to his you know little personal highlight reel so yeah there's the there's the benefit i suppose we're already halfway through this round 10 star just waiting for ssp to do something they've shot out a fair few drones but besides that haven't come under too much resistance shakes fighting back through this hole and finally the breach will come down he's gonna play this half wall position though and we've seen some crazy crazy plays from this spot in recent times just hunting for something on the bottom floor leader and Azza on this deep deep flank but farah will spot out both of them with that drone so south park and Co should be alert to this fairly soon. Oh, wow. Whether that was Intel or whether that was a nice swing on his part. Either way, he nailed the headshot. Farah takes down Zanoxo and there you go. That's a couple of people gone. Azza and Jegs, though, hitting hard. Azza on the flank and Jegs from the site. And now Jonker sat and waiting. Three versus three. 39 seconds left. This is that middle floor site. They've cleared the top. They, in fact, no, they haven't cleared the top. They've still got the vertical control here, 10 star. South Park, if he wanders into sight, he's going to be wandering into a plethora of angles here. Farron needs to do something about clearing this position. Jake's under that pressure, but Nikivu taken down. Down all the pieces fall like dominoes, and 10 Star finally lock it out. And that is it. 10 Star make it nine wins from nine. A superb split from them. Everyone at home, everyone who is watching, you can welcome your new 
finalists, 10 star, will be going through to finals. Question is, will they be going through in first place? There is still that chance because they're currently sitting equal with Heroic on points and they will have the better round difference. Question is, is that our next game, MM Academy versus Heroic, if Eminem pull out an upset on on the EUL side, well, okay, well, maybe 10 star gets that top spot. We'll have to see. But they have punched their tickets through to the next stage. Commiserations to SSP, that was their last game of the season. But I've got to say, they, you know, they, they gave it their best try. They started, you know, they didn't give up at that last moment. It was 6 1, and they still managed to pull back rounds. I just felt like I wanted to see them perform at that level earlier, Jerry. Yeah, yeah, there, there, were, there were some flashes of brilliance, but this is the thing. This is what we've been saying about SSP a lot of the time this year. It's, it's just not enough. But, you know, a lot of their games in this league, they've had that aspect of coming up against a team that they're not expected to win. But they have given a good showing. They've never, ever backed away from a fight. And I think that is one of the big takeaways for SSP's season. I'm a little bit sad, honestly, Novi, that we don't have Na'Vi Seal in this league because I can see 10 star potentially have won, win, like, win against them if they were. And it would have been 10 from 10. 10 for 10 star, you know, the end of game call would have written itself. But, you know, can we call it that? It was a forfeit win, technically. I, I don't think it's fair to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it counts. I don't know. Well, maybe let, let's ask the X, the 10, the XR Troika, Ooh, if he agrees. Should it be, uh, you know, 10 for 10 star with a forfeit win to Na'Vi? You tell me, guys. Nova Jerry, thank you very much for the call on the cast. I would wager that it does not count. Um, I think you've got to get all 10. I think the, the little DQ win, the forfeit win, it's not good enough. Should have got 10. Um, cracking performance from 10 star, though. I think we were certainly expecting it to be uh, over a little bit sooner, uh, but we did see SSP hold on there for a couple of crucial rounds with it. Yeah, SSP continued to fight to the death. And as uh, as your cast has touched on, we could have seen a little bit more from SSP if they done this more often, but it's been the story of SSP throughout this entire split, this entire season. They have potential. We see it time and time again against big teams. So they can grab rounds, win key moments, and look like a very good side. But then they just don't have the consistency. They can't string it back round per round. And 10 star structure seemingly just smothered SSP a little bit on Chalet. They really couldn't get the momentum rolling, but they were fearless when they needed to be. Got those key rounds to show that they're still in that matchup. Yeah, they certainly weren't rolling over, were they? There was definitely a little bit of fight in there, Gibson. Um, something that you commented on while we were watching that, um, you said Trade Star back at it again. Mm -hmm. They were on form today, weren't they? Yeah, they are. It's, it's the way they play. You very rarely get a kill against 10 Star for free. You know, Whipple would probably be the best person to ask, but I think... There's probably no team out there that have had little as, as little flawless rounds against them as 10 star. They always get at least one or two every single time. Well, we have an interview with the man himself, Kangaroo Kenny, the uh, the puppet master pulling all of the strings for this team. Kenny, how are you feeling today? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, pretty chill? Yeah. Same emotion I as mean, ever. Yeah, t t I mean, to be no, honest, I, I, it was I fairly feel expected. Good, in finals. Yeah, you've locked in it's... finals, nine wins on the bounce. You've, you've got things to feel good about here. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we we feel good about ourselves and, and where we're at. Um, finishing top four in CL calls was really good. We had some some really tough games. Um, I think we beat teams that should have finished top four anyway, which is good. We just kind of ran out of steam on Sunday. And then uh, it, it's our first loss as a team that, that we had against Wild on Sunday. Um, so mm. it was just about... it was We all but confirmed our place for finals. So it was just about managing everyone after the first loss, the fatigue, just to make sure we turned up today, got the win to secure the, the final spot. And now mm. we can have a nice little break. God yeah, because of course, what you, well, you will need it, but of course, on for the game that you're referencing on Sunday, there will have been a EU Challenger League qualifier. Um, mm -hmm. So obviously, you guys are, are going in tandem for that as well um, to guarantee your spot. Obviously, um, it's uh, it's it's something that you're going to want to compete in. You're going to want to try and advance up to that next level. Um, a lot of your focus going in on that now, or are you going to be turning your attention toward the playoffs and, and potential, well, the finals that you're getting straight into here in NPL? Uh, 
But the open calls are always the fallback um, option yeah. if, if you don't make it out of your respective National League. Uh, with MPL having two CL spots, I think it's it's pretty... Well, it looks pretty good with us going straight through to finals. Obviously, heroic don't count, so we're only Half have to beat yep. we we'll only have to beat one team to make it into CL mm. through MPL. Um, and with eighty six practically already confirming it through the open quals, if eighty six make it through to finals from playoffs, it it, it gets easier with the run. Um, but yeah, we've got to focus on on the finals now, which we don't know when they'll be, but we have a nice few days off um i think everyone everyone needs it get, get out enjoy the sun because uh we've been stuck in our rooms the whole time during this nice little <laughs> yeah. heat wave in the uk uh, which isn't too too good i've got a nice little inflatable pool outside that i'm gonna go and have a little jump in soon oh well, uh, we but need to see guys, that on the timeline i think she got a cast well, it's all right. I'm 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 hosting tonight, so I get to I get to sit here with the fan on for the majority of the time. But uh, I want I want to see the pool on the timeline, Kenny. You make sure you tweet, and uh, we'll we maybe show it in the debrief at the end if it's uh, if it's appropriate. But um, it's been cracking watching you develop as a team throughout the season. Obviously, you didn't have the start to MPL that you really wanted, and I think you were very vocal about that in um, you know in the opportunities that we did get to speak to you about. And obviously, on on a more personal note, we've had conversations about this. Um, you know, just when we've been playing together um, in the day. So how how is it for you to have sort of been able to turn this around and and turn obviously losing Savage into a bit of a positive and and almost not quite start from scratch but start to rebuild the team again? I think whatever setback we've had, it's always we've always turned out the positive side from it. Whenever we've had roster changes, which may be forced, um, such as Savage leaving or Boomed having his escapade um they've always turned into positives for us and i think that we've always i think the word i'll use is we've always bounced back whenever we got relegated mm. from yukin we we stuck with the core we rebuilt and and we came back through yukin 2 got into mpl we had a terrible split one for our expectations um we rebuilt and redeemed ourselves and showed what we we truly can be i think that the mental fortitude of who we have on this mm. team is just second to none like we can constantly come back from disappointment and show that we, we can be one of those top teams going for seal absolutely it's been a pleasure to watch you throughout mpl this season and i'm looking forward to see how you do in the playoffs and how you do in the eu uh, challenge league qualifiers and hopefully fingers crossed if you get yourselves into cl as well uh, any final words kenny Yes, can I just say for everyone watching, by the way, if Eminem beat Heroic in the next game in regulation, we finish first. So, come on! <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think there's a lot of people hoping for that one. Uh, I put it down in my predictions, to be honest, so uh, I'm certainly a believer. Yeah. Um, there'll be a big party if, uh, if Eminem get themselves, uh, get themselves a win tonight. Kenny, it's been wonderful to speak to you. Thank you so much for giving you time, and I'm sure that we'll speak yes. to you come the playoffs. Yes, enjoy your evening. Well, there we have it. Always a pleasure to get to speak to Kenny for a little bit and get to dig a little bit deeper. Uh, we've spoken to him a few times over the course of the uh, the MPL, and nothing really much phases him, does it, Whip It? No, Kenny is a veteran coach. He, he talked about it there. He's been through so many roster changes, so many hard times. He always finds a way to get that team back in the winning form. And nine consecutive wins this split. Henstar are very much in that winning form right now. Absolutely, and they are going to be looking to extend that into the finals, I am sure, and finally give Jerry the line that he was after 10 for 10 star, but that's a little bit of a ways off. Up next, we have arguably the first of the two most important games of the night, depending on how this first game goes. A little bit of a confusing one there, but it is one that you are not want to... What, one that you are not going to want to miss. There we go. Um, we're going to be looking at Heroic versus Eminem. This is huge for the Marshmallows if they can pull it off. We're going to hit a short break. We're going to switch out the desk and we'll be back in just a few. I'm pushing. What am I doing? Nice. nice. Reading, uh, reading nice. done. Nice. Nice. Pillar, pillar, pillar. pillar. Reading, reading hole. Reading hole. Reading yeah, hole. I'm gonna plant. I'm gonna plant. Reading hole. No! Nice. Nice. Oh, come on! Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, Flex. You're insane. Uh, really nice, boys. 
Oh, me too. We can see if, it, if they drop back. Uh, yeah. The case has been dropped. Relaxing can recover this and hold on. He is in a one versus two. He will hear that drop. He'll swing wide, finds one. He's on for the second here and he finds it. Oh, nice. he's relaxing. You're so insane. You're insane. Good shit, bro. Oh, mate. <laughs> Kill thermite. No, I kill thermite. That's what yeah, I'm That's down. why we, we won. won. Yeah, exactly. 2v2. Pick up the box, maybe. Did you put them in, Kim, Chris? I'm finding full table. On single door. 25. Let's go! Oh, nice. so much, so much. Hey, holy. Let's go! I'll play, boys. Let's go, Josh. <laughs> You're a beast. Inside, 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 inside. That's one dead, one dead. One more red, one more red, that's one red. Red, 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 red. Top red, top red, top red. Hype, 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 hype. Nice! Oh, that's so good, that's so good. Let's go! Oh my god, they're so bad. They're so bad, let's go! What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, GG, lads. We needed that win. We needed that. Little bit, dude. Full kitchen. Bomber's office, Malusi office. Where's the castle, though? Coming in. In here, no. Okay, okay. Go on over, careful. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm not running. Malaysia was office. Mega, mega smoke. Good. Oh, nice. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not boring, man. Let's just get it out the way. I'm leaving main. I'm, I'm coming vault with case. Gold killed me. Push cane, push cane, push cane. In the water, water. Kill gold, kill gold. Win it, win it, win it. Three one. Window, 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 sight. Window, sight. In the corner, deep above. Let's, oh, let's, let's go, 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 guys. Well could be played. Heroic, could be heroic. Could be heroic. Oh, we're we're heroic. Heroic. Could be 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 heroic. We're the best. We're the best team in Europe. We're the best team in Europe. We beat the best team in Europe. Oh my god. Oh my god. My name's Will. I'm a C4 tetraplegic, uh, following a cycling accident in July 2012. I got back into gaming in 2013 when I found out about Special Effect. For the first time I came, I really didn't know what to expect. I've been playing a lot of games prior to my accident, and of that, FIFA was one of the main games I had played. And literally within half an hour, I had the shoulder switches and had FIFA set up. I've got movement of the uh, shoulders to limited hand movement. So I've got two shoulder switches. They can be set up for whichever trigger button you need them for. For example, you've got X on one shoulder, circle on the other. So for FIFA, that's two button mode and chin control, like the one I use for my chair on the analog stick to control the ball. I was quite fortunate that after I'd been to visit Special Effect the first time, I took all the equipment home with me and it gave me a couple of months to actually get to the grips with, you know, whether it's something that I was going to enjoy, or something that was going to be suitable for my needs, and it certainly was. And then we got the links to purchasing the right equipment. Games are another aspect of the life that I had prior to my accident, and a real social occasion. Great to be competitive with friends, or just to pass time myself. When I was in hospital, I was seeking advice as to what would still be possible, and I had been told that I wouldn't be able to play games like FIFA again. I'm just really grateful I managed to find out about Special Effect, that I've had this opportunity to get back into gaming, and I wouldn't have been able to do it without Special Effect. And I would recommend it to anyone else in a similar position.
killed come in and Slothar just picks them apart. Let's try and put some shots on in and managing to find the last two. Oh, but Blur just decimates. Prince steps up huge for ambush to re-kills all E1 DCs. Oh, what? Hello everybody and welcome back. We are here with Novi and Jerry for game number two tonight. Played at 18 inside of the NPL. You two just had the uh, the little warm-up gig that was uh, 10 Star versus SSP. Um, I think it was a game that kind of lived up to expectation there, but the game that we have ahead of us, Heroic versus Eminem Academy, Jerry, it's an entirely different beast. Oh yeah, this is one of the games of the night for certain we were all looking at that playoff spot who's gonna make it will it be eminem academy will it be coalesce the run-in looked so much more favorable for coalesce and that's still the case here with heroic in front of the marshmallows right now it's absolutely the roast that they are gonna have to endure and get out of for this playoff spot yeah, for sure. I mean, Novi, have, uh, have you got any strong feelings for this one? I noticed that I was a little bit on my own when it came to the predictions. I was disappointed in the gang. Uh, I was really hoping for a little bit of support in that Eminem pick that I uh, threw up in there. But everyone else pretty uh, pretty stoic in the in the old heroic pick on the predictions. I I think it's a hard one to get behind Eminem on this one. Just pure, It's like, easy. It, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like it, one of the bits of advice Demo gave me. Like when I first did you can, he Advice said, I, I, demo? I, I, yeah, no, I did my predictions and he said, he said, don't bet against <laughs> Navi. And I've taken that to heart. Like Navi's not here, but an EUL side is here <laughs> and I cannot anymore? bet against heroic. They've lost like so many games recently. It, you though. don't this is bet the thing. against heroic. <laughs> I mean, the, the, to be fair, you lost me on that sentence when you started with the first bit of advice that Demo gave me. Um, as, as soon as you, as soon as that came out, I was like, you know what? If he's giving you advice on predictions, then uh, then Lord help you. Um, let's start having a look at these two rosters, familiarize ourselves with them. Uh, I mean, as if we really need to. Jerry, do you want me? Do you want to uh, run me through heroic? Yeah, Grizzly, Gorg, Benja, Uno, Sloth. There you go. You got any more? standout? Got any maybe. standout points? Anything right, that you right, want to maybe bring to Fine. the desk? Fine, all right. You can squeeze blood from my stony heart. Okay, here we go. So Grizzly, I mean, he's like the kind of guy that's just doing all the dirty jobs. Gorg and Benja are the ones to really look out for. They've been the top of so many stats. And then you've got Uno, the rock behind this team. He, when he was brought in, just transformed them, gave them that organization that they were maybe hunting for for a while, but meshed with the team in such a better way and sloth as well who was out yesterday and uh we saw maybe the results of that as to be honest for a team that came out of you know the last stage of eul looking really hot they've been in a little bit of a dip recently you know losing to secret losing yesterday as well to victus and i've always said that it's rare to see them lose twice in a row but they they actually did it yesterday and now it's the case of a really eminem academy coming up coming up against a side that are probably just looking for revenge and looking to pick themselves back up this is a scary heroic prospect it really is one of the stats that really sort of draws my attention here novi and you almost had a little bit of a part in uh, in in this stat as well the the entry conversion stat here of 70 percent now at the top of the show for anybody that was here we were showing the sort of kill death uh, differential for opening kills now benja has dominated that stat line but we looked at it in a very different way today and we instead looked for how positive a player is on opening kills versus deaths rather than just the sheer amount of opening kills that that player has benja has a lot of opening kills but he also has a lot of opening deaths yet still we have heroic with a 70 percent entry conversion yeah benja's sort of been on this knife edge this entire season either he pops off and it absolutely utterly decimates the opponent or he's kind of absent for the most of the game because he gets picked off quite a lot i think the difference we saw was something like 30 to 27 it was only he only was plus three uh, so he is dying a lot, but that was partly due to his form earlier on. I want to say at the midpoint in the split, the past recent games, even though they have been kind of a struggle for Heroic and they haven't been pleasant, Benja has performed at a far better level than we've seen at previous points in the season. And um, I would be surprised if he manages to increase the entry frag uh, statistic just a little bit going forward in this final game. 
Let's have a look at their opponents now then. We've got Eminem Academy lined up to face off against the mighty Heroic. Uh, come back to Novi for this one. Novi, Eminem Academy. Nerf, Dyer, Relaxing, Eco, and Urkari. Now, this team um, lost Skiddy. I say lost Skiddy. Well, we know where he went. He went. He's not a set to... of car keys, mate. How'd you lose yeah. him? <laughs> He's down the side of the sofa. He got promoted by the sofa, yeah. Um, you know, and Skiddy was that X factor for Eminem. It was whenever their backs were against the wall, Skiddy was always performing. They lost Skiddy. They brought in Dyer instead. Uh, and it's kind of been, we've been waiting for the rest of the players to step up. Yesterday, and it was absolutely gutting to watch. Akari came so close to so many clutches, but he played phenomenally yesterday. Just such a good performance um, from from Akari. And it's like it's, we've been screaming it for it the entire season to play like that. This is their final opportunity. This is the last moment in the group stage. It's theirs if they want it. It just depends how hard they're going to really, really try today. Because heroic, even when they're doing a little bit of trolling. They're still an incredibly good side. They are. Often you have to play, you know, the game that is placed in front of you, though. And sometimes Heroic do leave those holes. Uh, and Eminem are more than capable of, uh, of sort of plugging that gap and seeing if they can take any advantage of any sort of lackluster play. You mentioned there, of course, losing Skiddy a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago now. Um, and, and they kind of fall into a very similar bracket to, as to uh, as to Ten Star, in my opinion, where they've got players that are of that level of talent that will be, you know, getting looked upon by UL teams to go, you know, are we, are we going to be bringing somebody like this up or not? Let's take a look at their previous matchup. Uh, of course, double round robin. All of these teams have played each other before. And it was a 7-4 win to Heroic on everybody's favorite map of Oregon, Jerry. Yeah, and it's interesting that it was on Oregon because I wanted to bring this up slightly that this may be a map that they want to go back to, strangely. It's the only one that they've managed to gain any points on or at least win outright uh, during this split. But the problem is those two wins, they came against City State Punks, against Ridley Sports, against the bottom two teams that you're expected to win against. So, I mean, maybe they don't stack up too well on Oregon against this Heroic. We saw yesterday that Eminem Academy were happy to bring something really out there, bring out the Skyscraper. Only the second time this season we've seen it. So maybe they have something else in their pocket ready to bring up here when it matters most. I think the difficulty that you've got when you face an opponent like Heroic is that where do you realistically take them? Because mm. they're going to be prepared for everywhere, right, Novi? Yeah, this is team, even if you go for something that's outside of their map pool, they're going to be comfortable with it. You can, you cannot take this team by surprise. Um, it's more about letting their complacency, which does seem to kick in sometimes, as well as their jam-packed schedule with EUL. We saw Golgona I talk about it on Twitter, you know, they said one of the hardest games we've ever played and we've got to play an MPL the next day. It's difficult, it's tiring. You know, that's when they show that weakness, that's when you need to strike. It just depends. If Heroic want to, they can just remove those weaknesses. It's just quite difficult. It takes a lot of effort for them to do that. Well, let's throw the veto up and see where we head today. Are we going to be going back to Oregon as Jerry predicts? The answer, yeah. Jerry. How smug are you on a scale of 1 to 10? I'd say I'm about 7, because I did also throw out that possibility of, you know, something weird like a sky or a theme popping out. But no, of course, Heroic looked like they wanted to ban out anything funky in this ban phase. Both of those gone, and yeah. We end up on the Oregon. Again, I feel as though it's it's not the worst shout. This is a map that we have always pegged as where good teams go to die. I know it's a bit of a, an old one, but yeah, it still rings true and there are possibilities to win here. It is where Eminem have looked best so far this season. So if you're going to choose anywhere and you have the choice, it makes sense to go here. That being said, it is actually Heroic's map pick. So out of Bank and Oregon, interesting that I honestly would have preferred to see Heroic go to Bank, but they want to go here instead. I think that Heroic are obviously working with the uh, sort of the, the pending major that's a, it's around this time that we always start bringing mm -hmm. up the major and sort of saying, you know, well, there's there's a couple of play days of EUL left, sure, granted, but should we just be going somewhere that's fairly fairly basic, fairly straightforward? If and, I'm not mistaken uh, as well, their record on bank in EUL is actually looking pretty bad right now, right? Like they've, they've lost a lot of bank lately, so maybe they just don't want to go there. 
Yeah, and it could just be a comfort thing, like you say. Like, why make the game any harder than it needs to be, right? Just go down to an Oregon. Everybody knows how to play an Oregon. You can really hit your defaults quite well. Is this going to be a game of defaults, or is this going to be the upset? that I know that some people want it to be, uh, and it really isn't anything against Heroic. It's more you'd love to see an underdog do well, or at least I do. We're going to find out. We're going to throw this one over to Whippet and Gibson. Heroic versus Eminem Academy on Oregon. Take it away, guys. Thank you so much, Ollie. And this is it. One team, Eminem Academy, fighting for their playoff survival. The other side, well, they just saw their rivals for top spot close that gap. So a win is a must for both these teams. But whip it. Can Eminem Academy do what their sister team over at Eminem couldn't do in EUL? It is going to be a very difficult mountain to climb. Heroic for all of the results or poor results they've had so far in MPL. They are still one of the best uh, mm -hmm. sides in Europe and it will not be easy to get over them. Both of them want that win. Both of them need that win for the optimal placements in this season. And it will be Oregon, the battle it out upon. And we were very excited when we saw this map come through the video, weren't we? Definitely. Look, this is this is our favorite map. It's so exciting. We've every time we come here, what? But we, see, we uh, you know what? I can't even keep up the facade. Look, this is <laughs> Oregon. This is a map where everybody knows what you need to do to win, and nobody understands that better than M and M Academy. They tried last night to take a team over towards skyscraper it didn't work so we are going now to oregon it's a best of one you're playing like you referenced one of the best teams in europe and well you look at the team that eminem academy have in a best of one can they be the heroic they definitely can will they well we will know in the next half an hour yeah as eminem academy on their day can be a very, very deadly side. It is just a question of what Heroic has decided to show up, show up today. It is, you know, we see again, this is an EUL side, you're going to come into MPL with a little bit different expectations than the other you know, teams grafting for those CL spots, for example. So we've seen lots of, you know, lots of Mr. Officer coming in for certain players when he couldn't make play days, etc. So now is the real test. Heroic, all roster, need three points to keep themselves guaranteed in that top spot in our group stage. m and is in position. Three points gets them playoffs. I, I, it's too close to call. I went for Hawk on my predictions. But the jersey behind me, as you may have saw, <laughs> it kind of screams my heart wants m and M. I, I have both, but I've got the heroic. You have a heroic jersey as well. You know, we we had the <laughs> pleasure of meeting these guys over in Charlotte. And I'm going to tell you right now, they were heartbroken. But they were determined. They saw the way things went. They want to win MPL today. And they want to go ahead and qualify through EUL as well. And winning is a habit with it. And if they don't win tonight, people are going to start looking and they're going to go, right, how are they doing in m, &M? Attack well, they've, Or how are they doing in EUL? They haven't been doing very well as of late. How are they doing in MPL? Well, they've lost to Coalesce. They could potentially lose to m, &M tonight. Honestly, if Heroic lose this one, there may start to be some alarm bells going. I, I wouldn't say it's going to be abandoned ship for everyone who's backing no. Heroic if they do lose this one, but it is that red flag, as you said, that warning. I, said, I, I like the little bit of back and forth going on in the chat already. Everyone seems to be having a little bit of fun in this matchup. And for m &M, they really cannot afford to make mistakes. They can't let Heroic into this matchup at all. You really need to press the advantage and do it early and play the most fearless game of Siege they've ever done. And we might see this as a very far out extended roam getting set up on the western side. That will be Azami helping to back that up. Those gadgets keepers can be very deadly at locking down lanes and giving massive amounts of control, but so could Osa. And that was what Grizzly is donning. Yeah, that also we've seen so many creative ways of Osa being used just to create openings to take map control. We watched Skyscraper last night where Eminem had absolutely no answer whatsoever. We spoke about our carry down by Shires. Well, this is a very direct push coming in from Heroic as they make their way in through Armory, Main Door, and Master bedroom and at what point does our carry fall back with it and at what point does Eminem flip it or are they just going to go straight for the jugular in round one well for Eminem they did call your own presence back now this is going to be a push from Hulk that has not got any fat on its bones at all straight direct and they are being very very punctual with their arrival 
Sloth will get some, uh, a lot of map control very, very early. And very nearly finds himself an opening pick in this, putting pressure down the player who's deep inside of Arctic as well. That will be Eco. He won't be very comfortable having to fight all the way around Arctic. Relaxing looks to get a flag, but look at Grizzly. And also Shield and a 2x as well. He will make this very nasty for Relaxing. Spots the head, misses the initial shot, but Relaxing will not repeat that one, knowing that is near certain death. And now there could be an opportunity for a pick, and Eco just goes into T2, spots the head of Gorgona, and takes him down. So what could have been a 5v4 the other way has been flipped on his head in a matter of seconds by Eminem. Uno chasing that refrag now as he's going to get dragged in, using the aces to spot an Eco. Eco doing the smart thing, drops down into meeting, and so far Eminem moving through the map freely whipping, and I love to see it. This is a very good round for Eminem so far, considering how much pressure arrived on them early. They still have to worry about Sloth, though, up in Trophy. That's not going to be an easy one. Akari is just waiting to pounce as well, but Benji will strike. Day is now off the boards. More pressure arriving now inside of Armory. Trying to queue themselves up and get this entryway going. Just under a minute left to go. And can Eminem Academy hold on? A second nade sent in. Oh! oh. Sloth is going to find that one. It looked like it was arriving at the gates of hell. Uno will get in the action as well. Find it too. Leaving Relaxing alone against four. His own Goyo has burned his entryway. Leaving him 15 seconds of sitting and standing and waiting. A C4 will get sent. But to no avail. And it will ultimately be Benja who shuts him down. Heroic. Take our very first round here in Oregon. And that is exactly what you expect from Heroic. Things didn't look their way, but they stayed calm. They reconvened. They moved around the map, and utility usage came out trump for them. Not only their own utility, but, but they used the defender's utility against them as well, popping those Goyos in really good positions, and it allowed them to take map control and get the diffuser down. I mean, when you get, you only have an opportunity to use those Goyo canisters against the opposition, why not work that perfectly? They had no way in, no way for that retake at all. And Heroic, as I said, just no, nothing wasted. It was a very direct push. They didn't play into the Rome presence that Eminem Academy had set up. And when you don't have to clear, worry about a Rome clear, you can be very efficient, very quick. And you can worry about getting those picks and beginning to dismantle a team player by player instead of room by room. And that's exactly what they've done. Now, we go to the basement. Little bit of a different story here. You're going to have to go through the checklist. It's going to be a little bit more procedural. And Eminem Academy will have a better chance here, at least, because it does tend to be one of the more defensive favoring sides that we do see on Oregon in particular. Mira, Wamai, Jaeger, there is so much denial being pushed over towards construction. And how will Eminem face it up? Well, Grizzly is just pushing towards Garage with Monty, and that'll be a, a very big key for them in taking map control. But this is the opportunity for Heroic to take a second round in a row, and don't get me wrong, but if Heroic win this round, there will be no bigger roars than those coming from the Coalesce players at the end of this. Absolutely, Coalesce will be very much watching this one with keen intention. So far, once again, Heroic look to be very direct and punctual in their playstyle. They're going to take, or try their best to take control of Tower, but they're going to, going to be the first one to get slain out. Relaxing will find that. A double roam presence is automatic. Will now be unleashed to roam free. Will they find much success with it? Though as Benja still alive, will claim one day a carry on stage. And that will be a bit of a warning sign so far. Will Aron be able to have an impact now? They will be very timid, a little bit more passive, knowing Benj is lurking, but oh! He thought he had a freebie, Uno on the cover, Day is slain, and Heroic in a 4 versus 3 now have the advantage in terms of players, and look at all that time to work. You can storm your Monty in and take all that control for free. That man mountain pushing down back stairs, providing drone work as well as Sloth spots out the head. Eco will pull one back, and now all of a sudden it is a 2v3, but you could class as a 2v2. The jar, the drop will come. Uno will find Eco. It's all down to relaxing, and Uno will get another, and it is 2-0 Heroic, and they have been near on flawless. The only negative on the side of Heroic so far as well, Gorgona. Not in two. He has been the entry pick both times around for Eminem. Yep, that's not an not ideal personal start, but the team has got two rounds. And two rounds that look to be very comfortable. Eminem certainly had good setup. They had good procedure. They played well enough around the circumstances Hero put them under. However, they didn't have an answer to the mechanics, to the kills coming out. They couldn't find enough trades. That's how Hero played. They weren't playing to go that procedurally. They just wanted to go get positions, get picks, and play off of that. 
Eminem need to read into that one now. And whether that's playing for turtles or more extended roams or fighting the initial entryways, something needs to change already for Eminem to start getting some defensive rounds on the board. Something has to change indeed. Last time we came here, the push from Heroic completely focused on going in through Master Bedroom, taking the main door and holding the flank watch. Normally, Whip, but you've got a camera or a player down around White Stairs to prevent the cutoff point over by Shire. Last time around, they made that cutoff the main door in towards Meeting Hall. What's going to happen this time? The spawn location has changed as our carry will be the first line of defense. The head will be revealed, but he misses it. Gargona will live to fight another day. Our carry now pushing himself into a corner as he goes up inside small tower and really whip it. This is a dangerous game our carry is playing because there is no retreat. And well, there ain't none at all because there's our carry. But here is relaxing whip it waiting to get some revenge and the swing comes and he gets it and he falls back that's what Eminem need they need to find those trades they cannot give up player control they cannot give up map control for anything for free right now they must make heroic work and bleed for every inch of this map so far, they're doing a very good job of that one. Relaxing will swing wide from bottom white window. Get the pick on the sloth. Removing the twitch. Removing a very potent weapon and player from the cards. Massive pick. Eminem far better this time. And a little pinch of aggression has gone a long way. Helping them secure this site so far. But Heroic still have three players alive. You can't count them out. And you look at the players they have, Benja and Gargona, both in the top five when it comes to those KDs. It's a scary situation to be in. But where will that next pick come from? They've still got three nades. They've got control of the bottom floor. And when will we see those nades being cooked? Well, here is Benja now beginning to do some prep. Or will it land? Well... Just as we were expecting a whip it, Ben just has a shot instead, and the caster's built it up for nothing. Oh, it's so unfortunate. Even Medic <laughs> threw up. He was ready to catch that on observation, but they don't have solid information, and actually, that's why he might have pulled off. He had it ready to go, waiting for a ping or something to arrive, but now we'll just send them at these default positions. They don't have live pings, and three <laughs> bodies stacked up inside of Attic. Oh, a good decision from Eco to rotate away, but it's going to be somewhat shooting fish in a bar if they all stay in there, and pressure arrives. Rizzy can essentially walk in once these flames stop burning on the white stairs, and then every Everything gets a little bit uncomfortable for Eminem as Gorgona has rotated all the way to Big Window. And that might just read the intentions what Heroic want to do. A direct push, vault the window, get the case there as Grizzly might just push in through the smoke. And that's exactly what he'll do. He has to be forced to back out now. Didn't go deep. Toxic counters won't make that easy. Yeah, and now Benja's got another need, but there's nobody on that ping whatsoever. So it's another exercise of utility, but Nerf is holding the window. Gorgona, I believe, has snuck on any crouches and prones and he takes one down but Daya trades it out it's a 3v2 inside 15 seconds pushing through the smoke is Benja and he's taken down and it's all down to Monty Grizzly well he finds one he reloads Nerf is going to take out his own teammate as the pre-fire around the corner comes out and Daya sends him down and well Eminem game on I was internally screaming, no, there's no way, not with Monty, no, 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 surely you cannot do that, and thankfully, thankfully, for Eminem's sake, they managed to shut that one down, heroic smited, and the extra bit of aggression that Eminem brought out, that's what they needed, they found the early pick, well, sorry, as they found the early trade, and then relaxing, found the second on the sloth, and once they had that player advantage, they played it very, very well. He almost, as you could say, got a 10 star and traded themselves to victory. Mm -hmm. Very well played from them. They get themselves that war round back. They get themselves one round striking distance away from Heroic. And now they go for their second bite at the cherry of this basement defense. Three rounds down in the history books. We're still on the way. And, you know, we've we've got our boy Jerry on the desk with us today. Yeah. But, and Jerry's, Jerry loves a good stat. You know, one of his favorite stats is the entry and plant conversion rates. Well, Jerry, you'll be interested to know that it's a whopping 0% in this <laughs> round so far. Whip it. That is, I mean, in this round, Gibson. In this game. This game, game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're technically right about the round. Technically. Yeah. So, I mean, you're right. <laughs> but it's unusual to not see the conversion being far higher. Being a very 
different style of game, you could say, at least so far. Sloth will be oh. very keen to get a rapid entry. That's exactly what he'll do. We'll see no one on our silhouette, so we know he's safe, and I don't think he even had a drone, so he just decided, yep, yeah, I'll win my ones if need be. He'll make a very quick descent and likely put pressure on the player, who will be eco on these basement stairs, and Sloth wasting no time at all, being very forefront. Dea is there to help find that trade. This could be all important. They play together. They can make this direct push be in the waiver. Yeah, and the pings are coming out, so Heroic know roughly where Daya is, but Daya's given up no ground, given up no quarter, and maybe he should have. As Sloth gets the opener on this one again, will the 0% trend continue? Aliko pulls one back here. Carry is in the spot to get the headshot onto Uno, and Benja trades it back. It's a 3v3 now, weapon, and the accelerator has really been pushed in this round. And then with this way more aggressive style than what we saw in the opening round, far better from them, but now they need to convert that early success into a more dominant mid-game. You fought the entries, you got your trades, okay? You've done damage. Both teams are weakened at this stage. For m and it puts them in a little bit of a better position. You've took away Uno, you took away Grizzly, you took away that Monty, a massive piece of utility heroic. We're likely going to rely on waltzing that down and applying direct pressure onto site. Can m and trade? Can they hold power positions as Rook begin to formulate what they want to do and how they want to do it? They have lots of time and all these hatches are all reinforced. They have no easy way in and no hard breach at all. They will be forced to funnel themselves in from a very limited number of entryways. But they do have two LMGs and they do have the L85 with the comes some nades in the back pocket. Sloth pushes down to the freezer as the push is going to be coordinated in through main stairs as well. Gorgona peeking around the side. Soft ping is coming from Laundry as he attempts to find that pick that'll give them the sight. And here is that nade being prepped. This time the nade will be delivered, but relaxing ain't going to be there. Pre-fires onto Gorgona, but not enough there. The flames will be thrown and and Earth is going to get one onto Sloth and Whipper with 40 seconds left. Eminem looking to keep that trade up of the 0%. Well, what? what? Benja and relaxing, pulling one back and whipping. It. It's all down to Benja now. He has an LMG and only uses him there. Two left in back pocket, but we won't see time for them. He'll try to stick this case, but only to make the sound. 20 seconds. He'll creep and crawl. Looks for an angle. Has information to play here inside of Elbow. He'll spray just a little bit. Watch will give him away. Up close and personal. No with the shock of a no relaxing way. down. Surely not, Benja. Surely you can't pull this one out of the bag. Stims himself up a little bit more HP. We'll try and get this case down. The downed m and teammate can try and give information. But now, Benja Ooh. caught out by Eko as he goes for the swing. Should have planned. It should have stuck Eminem now level. And that 0% still stands up at four rounds in. And well, it seems like getting that opening kill is just a recipe for disaster. This game, two more rounds for Eminem on defense and whip it. They're, I think they're going to need to go 4 2. A 3 3 split for, for Heroic on this map. They're going to be incredibly difficult to take down. But momentum is starting to build. Eminem, they've won two in a row. They've tied the sides. Can they get that third round, which gives them just a little bit of breathing room? To draw your memory back to what Victus was like against Heroic yesterday. Heroic mm -hmm. had a very strong start in the opening against Victus. And out of nowhere... Victus found an extra gear. They figured out what Heroic were doing and played perfectly around it. Eminem not playing perfectly around it yet, but playing very well to get themselves level again. Starting to build all that momentum, starting to figure out Heroic in this matchup. Surely we aren't in store for yet another upset. Eminem really want to get this as well. They need three points to guarantee their ticket to play off and really spoil Coalesce's night before it even begins. And they have a little bit of momentum to fill their sails. Well, but we have said this. We are agents of chaos as casters. We want a situation where... I think, I think we said we would love to see Eminem win in overtime to put a bit of pressure on the Coalesce to win in regulation. But Eminem, they want to win this in regulation themselves. They want to get those three points and secure their spot in the next round. And then, well, heroic. The, this is an EUL team. They want to finish top of the table, and if they lose to Eminem, they lose that out. So Sloth will begin the entry once more as he pushes in through T3. Last time around, it was done with Amaru. 
And nothing was found. Eco hears all the noise, drops back into meeting as well, and it almost seems that he was on a 40-second timer when it once the 40 seconds went down, he left, and Uno will get that open and pick onto a carry. Surely at this stage, that 0% conversion on the opening pick's not going to stick. I really, for everyone who's a statistician in chat and on the desk, this is absolutely <laughs> bizarre so far that no one's converted the opening pick into success. They have tried to find a trade, battling away the player on Master Vector. Balcony even very nearly finds their head cleave from their shoulders. Grizzly fighting a very nasty angle as they will drop down, retreat, and try and regroup. We're going to have to take buckets of control upstairs and will be a real problem now was Eminem have forfeited all of upstairs. They have, but there's a minute and a half on the clock. The knee comes out to nerf and relaxing the dynamic duo, holding their crosses. Bring it back to a 4v3 now as once again the open and pick seems to work against the side. Gorgona beginning to open up that cross so we can keep an eye on anybody pushing up through that Shire corridor. But nothing will be found. Benja still joining his friend on that top floor. But whip it, Eminem Academy. This is a situation where they have really thrived in, in this game. Bring it back to a 4v3 and well the longer that they wait and the more obvious that the push is going to come from that top floor the easier it becomes for Eminem in a good position here the only player for Eminem a little bit away from this primary front line could pounce and really be a distraction for heroic oh Will no not attempt to retake but and I almost say that I almost cast her curse the alibi Uno spots out Dea knows exactly where that is and Benjo will find that pick very efficient clear with information but 30 seconds remain now level in terms of players Eminem trade your way to success will no longer work you've got to find something you've got to take the initiative just a little bit or choke out the time as much as you can as Roach still find themselves caught up upstairs. Uno will drop now working on the case and Benja's on the cover. Eco, you're gonna be a little bit quick if you want to stop this going down and he's not gonna be fast enough. He'll run into Gorgona soon enough. Do they know each other there? So tantalizingly close. He's on the hatch. He'll find one back as he drops and might commit to the lion's den. Benja's fallen back just a little bit but upstairs the cover might just be good enough. 30 seconds. That case hits critical. Can Eminem claw it back? Well, the pre-fire's coming out now on the top floor as Gorgona looks to create a line of sight onto the diffuser. A long-arm temp, you said at the time, is against the Benja. It's going to swing and he gets a triple. And here comes the attempt at the fuse. Nerf beats it out. Now he's going to go back to that diffuser. Oh. He's going to get one. And Benja is on the hunt. Benja is on the hatch. And there's no way whatsoever that Eminem Academy win this. And well, Jerry is just going to take a big sigh of relief as finally five rounds into this game the team that got the open up pick get the round but whip it it was close a lot closer for comfort than what Heroic would have wanted considering they got the case down it looked like Eminem at any moment could have found themselves success back in this and that might be a little bit of an indication of how close this matchup get it is Oregon so we do tend to see a lot of overtimes a lot of very close matches and well, as we said, we are agents of chaos in our casting booth, and we do want this to an overtime, especially if they end up getting an overtime victory. Well, that's going to really make that last game of the evening a very, very exciting one indeed. But I shall not lock into my crystal ball any longer, as we must look to the present as Heroic now find themselves 3-2 up against Eminem Academy, and in what has been a scrappy matchup from both sides so far. It has been scrappy, it has been punchy, and it really is the side of Eminem Academy that we've not seen enough this season. They're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Heroic, and if they win this round, they will take the 50-50 split going into their attack. Here, Carry once more, just playing over by Small Tower, relaxing, playing on those back stairs as we tend to see him do, but this is it for Heroic. Can they bring it in? Grizzly's going to take a Maru this time as he goes straight into the top floor. Sloth gets the opener, so the tempo is up and can they catch them cold while relaxing with a beautiful little feedback shot with that lovely lovely vector we'll pull it back to a 4-4 and all the pace taken out of the rounds 
very good from Adam yet again, finding that initial trade, giving nothing up for free, essentially. Massive crowd to relaxing, always the player popping up and finding those very key, kind of crucial mid-round fights and winning them a lot of the time as well to give Eminem that little bit of an extra chance. But Heroic, very similar structure oh yet again. What a shot from Akari. Finds Benja, takes and blunts the Spear of Heroic. And this is a very good round already for Eminem. Can they capitalize once again on the early success in a round? Well, to do that, they need to make sure they do not lose two players back to back like they lost the last time they were in this situation. Eco just roaming around now, looking towards the white stairs. Sloth begins the, the sneaky crouch walk as he takes a master bedroom as suddenly heroic start to take what little map control they can with three men on the board. One minute and 30 seconds and look at those m, &M players. Every single one of them has an angle to cover. Every single one of them doing their due diligence by holding that and the gunfire switches the pick around a little bit of scout work coming in from Iana as they look to dissect this defense and whip it at what point will we see them make the move Gorgona is looking for that headshot and if he gets it that could be all systems go for heroic Rook just need one. They need one person from an M just to be getting a little bit overzealous and then they will strike. They have information. You know the players, they know where my exact position. What can they do? What will they do to clear this? An impact sent to try and stop the ace charges burning away. The wall won't last too much longer. I mean, Eco is not safe. We'll have to hide in this corner, but a good position can deny them if they want to push that doorway. And with 40 seconds left to go, he spots one going. That was a Yana clone. He would have called that for a team. He'll fall further back to keep himself in this fight a little bit longer. Toxic Cancer is now spewing and getting tossed out to choke out Heroic. 30 seconds. They'll try and clear what they can, but at this stage, it's down to a brawl. And Relaxing will draw blood first once again. Gorgona slain. 25 Five seconds and they need to funnel in one by one. Lots of damage done. Sloth will get one there, Kari. And now it's gonna be bare knuckle. Brawl deep inside of sight. Relaxing with three in the round. Huge popping off. Leaving you to all alone against three. Crossfire set up and established. Surely not. Surely you know you can't find this one with such little time. No. Nerf shuts it down. Eminem draw themselves level once again. A 3-3 three, three split and absolutely everybody watching this one is on a knife edge. Coalesce thinking what has happened. It looked so good when Heroic took that two player lead. And what, but I'm just going to double check. Was the, was the first, was that another round won by the entry? I think, I think it was. I think we saw, yep. Yeah, nice little, uh, yeah. no, it wasn't another, oh, another yeah, round. Slot. Because the opening pick happened, I believe it was Sloth got it. Yeah. Whoever we, yeah. And then we saw the relaxing trade in Big Tower. So, once again, <laughs> yeah. This no is siege. opening pick conversion. <laughs> but That's, that has to change now on the defensive side. You gotta imagine for all get it now on the defense. Surely then, the normality of the numbers game will come back to us. Fingers crossed. Or have I cursed it as uh, the casting. First struck once again. Already happened once this game. Not wanting to tempt faith too much. But we see the basement getting brought out by Heroic on their first wheel of the defense. Lots of bodies dropping out of the match. They've got to rotate up in attic as well. But pretty standard setup for them. Again, not expecting the bleeding edge. They're going to be a little bit cautious about showing too much considering. Still got some players of EUL going up and they want to be biding their spot from Berlin as well. But can they break down the fortress that is this basement defense on Oregon? Well, we will soon find out, and you point there out, Heroic don't want to give too much away. They're looking to pack their bags for Berlin, but Whippet, after their trip to Charlotte, maybe packing the bags would be the wrong idea for them, because they, uh, they were waiting a long time for those bags to finally arrive at their destination. They're also being made wait by Eminem Academy in this game, as it is 3-3 three, three at the half, relaxing on the entry. Ash, we love to see a bit of Ash back in the server. The drop down in the freezer, that audio cue given away. The pre-fire from server, from security as well. We'll also give away the position Ooh. and relaxing. What a shot onto Sloth. And now Grizzly is pinned. Relaxing will continue sneaking on down, but you have to clear Goyo from Freezer. Goyo beginning to peak. Relaxing moving the other way. Whip it. This is a tense tango that we're watching between these two players. 
We're going to we'll get one on the day. Eco will find one on the bench. Uh, level trading once again, but Eminem will be better off for that one now. 4 3 in terms of player count. Uno will have to fight and scrap with a shotgun up close and ready. Relaxing has taken not a single point of HP, but now he will. C4 up to the hatch inside of server. Doesn't find enough to down or kill, but Gorgona, look at this flank on a long way around, but decides better of it. Goes back the site, reinforces the site itself, will play the objective. With three members left of Heroic, that is probably the best case scenario for them, as this site can rely on hunkering down, but a good entry once again from NM. Very good early game. What can they do for the middle stage of this round, however? Well, we will see. Nerf's going to open up that laundry. Hatches, we're going to see another attempt at that push down through laundry. Nerf opening all the hatches that he possibly can, creating possibilities, creating opportunities, opening doors for them to potentially get this round win. But is it going to be possible? All three members of Heroic in spot. And look at this one. But Eco is just redesigning this map, making it so that whatever decision they make, every player can go full tempo on it when it comes. And when they need to get full tempo will be very, very soon. As we look at that time, 45 seconds just under to work with. Pressure being put on. Uno deep inside of barrels. Shotgun, though, up close and personal. He can cause a mess of damage with that one if left unchecked. You'll see one close, but that fire pops instantly as that wooden barricade brought, drops, meaning that player on blue, he's locked out here. Eco really can't push in, and there's a Blanche there as well. He's been relegated out of this round by Utility alone, leaving Eminem the brawl with three players who can still get in the side itself. They'll drop, relaxing will lead the way, but caught out by Uno, he'll find two! Uno, go big, go large, finds a third, no he can't, but all down the time now, Eminem has have to get heroic and surely they can't now as nerf all alone and time drains it out heroic back in charge back in the lead but it was a very narrow margin at the death and uno massive impact from you that just that go you on the door that pops automatically once you open it was the winning factor in that round. There was no way for that to push to come out. And then Uno with the shotgun. And he didn't get Uno. He got Dosi. Nearly got Trez. But that is a round win now for Heroic. They take the lead once more. And just to play back to your little storyline with it, Eminem Academy got the opening pick and they lost the round. There's a part of me that despises this. <laughs> I, I, I love to You're bring up the fact. That, You're a purist. Well, I love the conversion rate, right? So yeah. I used to love saying, you know, defense gets the opening pick. Oh, hurry, hurry, hurry. They have a 60% chance of winning the round now, right? That's what I use, love to say. That's kind of how the math works out. This has been... You know, the upside down just a little bit. We're not exactly seeing the the average siege narrative on phone, but I'm a little bit here for it. I know all of our statisticians are gonna be looking at this going, what is, what is what's going on here? But M&M, &M, they just start looking at this and go, oh, we get ourselves level again. Offense, a little bit more difficult on Oregon in particular, and they don't have a lot of time to get themselves level and in the lead, considering lots of pressure on this occasion. And Benja, oh, no. if you get away with this, no way Eminem let you do this, surely they see you, surely they know Eco looks to be aware, and they are! You, no Benja. way! Oh no, he gets one for his efforts at least, but Air Carry's there for the trade. My heart dropped him when I saw him get the opening. It's uh, it's one of those engagements, look, Eco is just like, why was he there? The cry of every single ranked player playing inside goal or gold or below across Europe. But now Eminem, they brought it back to a 4v4. The refrag was just a second too long. Finca wasn't able to get the boost and the res wasn't able to be pulled. And now, well, with two minutes and 10 seconds to play, they're beginning to make their assault onto this map. Grizzly with the pull though can be such a vital position he spots out Daya and he's gonna get him through the wall with a beautiful little pump and well whenever you talk about pulse being a situation law operator whoop it, there you go spot out your own player shoot him through a soft wall run away 
are you also missing the fact that's a pulse shotgun? A little mm -hmm. bit of pulse gaming action right there. Very unusual combination, but it certainly worked a devastating effect towards Dea. Caught out completely unaware. Relaxing will push up very quickly after the gone six detonates just ahead of him, looking for an opening as Eminem really forced to go to the direct avenue here. Route one play, but they will get shot down by Heroic. Sloth and Grizzly popping off, leaving Nerf alone with the pistol. With a Keratos in the hands of Omai, locks it down. Heroic clear Eminem no. by two rounds. <laughs> what a shot that was. You, you know you know me, but I love watching a beautiful pistol one-tap. Usually because I am watching them in the kill feeds whenever I'm dead. So, to be fair, I appreciate it, but look at this Grizzly. He set the trap. Daya didn't react whatsoever. And well, Pulse Shotgun doing the work, and sure, uh, you know, there's an another member of the Rainbow Six UK scene who really said that the UMP should have an orange tip on it, but because it's a non-lethal weapon. <laughs> I know the exact social post you're talking about. <laughs> I can't remember who it is, the appropriate credit, but I, I disagree. That's a thumbs down take from me. I think the UMP is serviceable at best, but it can do the job. You don't need to put the orange tip on it just yet, but the shotgun certainly worked out very well for Grizzly, and I really do love the positioning that was set up from that pulse as well, right in the heart of the building. Inside security, able to feed infinite information with that cardiac sensor and drop away for free as well. Uno, big impact in this matchup so far. 2-0 the opening, KD, and a high cost of backing it up as well. You expect that from the man himself, one of the most famous Finnish players there are, Benja, not doing too bad themselves either but only finding that one opening pick so far one opening pick but a lot of the weight's been carried by sloth in this game he's got the opener pick quite a few times going eight and six but benja he's been finding his kills elsewhere finding his engagements and making them stick as he goes nine and six grizzly getting into a fight with that smg 11 will take relaxing down making it a 5v4 dyer's hp looking a little bit dire right now as well as he makes his way into that closet but two minutes and 20 seconds it's time to relax it's time Time to drone work out where those defenders are where are they weak where can you possibly take advantage of it and do you know but see this little line of sight that's been created from trench from you know from attic looking towards master bedroom i love it because it can it can really slow down a push because teams are terrified to push into trophy and they have no information either so they really have to essentially try and face check it Eminem looking like they want to rotate and put direct pressure on, and well, that's exactly what they'll do. Akari will vault on in, and Uno will be the first to fall. Looks for a second, couldn't quite find it on towards Sloth. A minute 40 left to go. Gone as deep inside of sight, but is there a trade? Is there a reaction from Heroic here? Yes, there is from the vertical. It's still not yet cleared, but Kogona's gonna find themselves down. Akari in a massive play. Everything's gonna pop up in that kill feed. Benja with two huge picks, leaving Akari now all alone. A single point of HP. And that round on Benj's shoulder. Well played. Heroic now three rounds clear of Eminem Academy. Three rounds clear and everyone from Coalesce cheering because they feel that they are about to be giving the opportunity they dream of. They're on match point or heroic. And if they win, it is simple for Coalesce later tonight. Win and you are in. For Eminem Academy, the writing is in the wall and that writing says you need to be perfect. Three rounds coming up, three wins required and whip it. That, at this point, will not guarantee them to go through. Even an overtime win for Eminem Academy takes it out of their hands and puts it in the coalesces. So that round one for Heroic has completely changed everything, regardless of what happens in the next one. Okay, I suppose we'll, we'll follow suit with the chat as well. Congratulations, Benja. 200 kills. Congrats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 201 more than I've got. Wow, it's not hard, Gibson. It's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> I think Benj I think Benja could win blindfolded against you and me for, for that measure as well. But for Eminem, you touched on it is time to be flawless. It is really do or die now. It is no longer in their hands. Even winning this now is putting it all in the ballpark of Coalesce. Coalesce will simply need to outscore Eminem in this current situation. This is 
a real team defining moment for this side jump down at the bit get the work done if you can but you can't back out of this fight now and heroic they are not the person you want a team you want to see on the other side of the server when you're facing off against them because you know that talent pool runs so so deep and they have made this <laughs> offensive side so difficult for nm so far I just, I just read chat i'm so sorry i just seen the shade being thrown saying that you lost the secret in chat as relaxing is throwing it back the other way <laughs> and you know what the best thing is for anyone watching at home this is banter you know th these guys they all know each other they're having a bit of fun there's nobody actually properly throwing shade right now but let's be real, real for Eminem Academy. They need to get out of that chat right now and get into their heads and get into this game because you have three round deficits to turn over if you want to just go to overtime. This overtime, though, does confirm Heroic as number one. They will finish the groups at the top of the table. Ten are coming tantalizingly close, but ultimately, Heroic will get that one done. So that's a point to take out of this matchup from them. We know we'll find the opening pick towards Eco though. That's the blow that Eminem did not want. That is a massive, devastating loss. You lose those nades. Oh, Eminem already in dire straits, it feels. It really does, and for Heroic, they've also just sealed themselves top spot in MPL in the regular season with that extra point at a minimum they've gathered. Uno and Akir Carry are going to get one-on-one -on -one back either way. Daya tossing the Ying Candela in, and it will begin to pop. Another one thrown just to be safe. There's a player behind the boxes. Mozzie swings. Finka times it absolutely perfect, but still, it doesn't matter. Sloth pulls it back. Air Carry now in this 2v4 situation. One before the whole season rests in the hands of nerf and whip it it would be a sin if i didn't hand it over well i was just about to hand it over to you but gargona will clutch it out and heroic take top spot and coalesce the ball is in your courts that sets us up for a very very spicy final game of our group stage but eminem what a performance on your defense. They were able to get themselves to a 3-3 split, and it was hard fought as well. They really had the shoulder worth to get that get level at the end of the half, but when they side swapped, when they had to attack, things are a different story. And whether it was the structure, the strategy, or just the aggression and confidence heroic, they could not find an answer, and ultimately. That now puts them in a very difficult position, leaving Coalesce in a very good chance of booking that final spot in playoffs. Well, it is all down to Riddle now. If Eminem Academy want to make it through to the next round, we look back at the replays of this one, and Eminem, they really started the game well. You know, they were 3-3 at the split. Even whenever they went on to attack, they were still able to find kills for fun, but just heroic. Their, their style of play with it, the fact that even when the numbers were against them in the server, like this situation here with Uno, they didn't panic, they stayed calm, and Eminem just were not able to take advantage of the numbers game when it mattered no they really did just struggle capitalizing and i mean the way heroic set everything up this wasn't like it was the most bidding edge strategy but they played with such a high level of confidence and composure they never got flustered and that's what you'd expect from a side they are in eul for a reason they're one of the best performing teams in europe as well eminem though very very good kind of shaking the defense but ultimately it just couldn't break down heroic defense and it really showed and ultimately that's going to be the hardest pill to swallow of the entire season it will be and well even though eminem couldn't break down that heroic defense we've got a couple of guys back at the desk who might be able to do just that let's throw it back to ollie and the guys gibson whip it thank you very much indeed i am joined here by novi and jerry and we have the fortune to break down the game that we have just seen between Eminem Academy and Heroic. Um, I went for Eminem. I'll hold my hands up. Um, and I'm, I'm proud to, uh, to say that I supported an underdog here. But it was, uh, it was a good, good display there from Heroic, Jerry. Yeah, they, they just transformed when they went onto that defensive side, right? It was, it was genuinely a really good game, a really tight game. Up until that point, I thought Eminem Academy, they always looked solid in the clutch. Every single one of their rounds that they took in that game, Eminem Academy, came from a losing position, came from mm. suffering that opening death. It's been a, an interesting season for them, but I think that just potentially goes to show that 
there's a bit of inconsistency there, right? That you, you're you winning rounds that you should, you're losing rounds that you shouldn't. Uh, or the other way around, you're losing rounds that you shouldn't and you're winning rounds... Oh, you know what? There's no way to say it. You know what I mean. And, yeah, I think that if now, now it's out of their hands, that's the scary thing, is that they know that they should sit ahead in the standings, but they're hoping now for a Riddle regulation victory against Coalesce. This is a team, Riddle, that haven't won a game this season. So Eminem Academy are sitting there, and I don't think they have any fingernails left at this point. Novi, I'll come to you in just a moment, but first we do have Sloth on the line for an interview. We're going to bring him in, and we are going to get to speak to the man himself. Sloth, how are you feeling today? Are you nice and warm? Oh, it's, it's too warm. It's too warm, Mike. I've just, burned, I've just had to buy an aircon unit because it's getting ridiculous. I've heard for Sunday it's meant to be like 30 odd degrees. <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, certainly coming in for the weekend. You're bringing the heat in the server as well today. Uh, good win there for you guys. A little bit of a confidence booster maybe? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, Nice little win. You know, nice to not, uh, nice to not lose NPL, you know. Like we lost, uh, we lost against Coles the other day. And people, you know, it wasn't great. But uh, it's nice to be back to winning again. I didn't play Victor. We lost Victor's yesterday. I didn't play. Like, uh, yeah, well, it doesn't count if you didn't play, does it? Um, exactly. Do you do you feel that sort of pressure almost coming in as a as a team that is inside of EUL to to perform and to just go out and win every single MPL game? Do you sort of feel that a little bit? And does that mean the losses hit a little bit harder? Uh, I don't think we feel the pressure, but I definitely agree with you that the losses hit harder because. It is definitely a thing of, you know, you know, at the end of the day, it's still official games, but these are teams that are easier yeah. than the ones that we're playing on a regular basis, right? So, well, theoretically, anyway. Um, yeah. So the losses definitely do hit a bit harder. Absolutely. And uh, I guess it can be difficult then, especially with the fact that you jumble your team around quite a lot for MPL. You mentioned there that you weren't playing yesterday. Um, must be difficult to sort of, sort of keep on that sort of level playing field when you are bringing in Mr. Officer and stuff. I mean, we, we'd love to see Mr. Officer in MPL anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's been a thing since you can. Everyone loves uh, everyone loves a good little Murak play, you know. Uh, back in the days when we used to play against Navi and he'd whip out a 3K and they'd have you and Demo shouting, you know, it was great. It's, it's fond memories, and I'm sure a lot of people listening have, uh, have got memories of watching him play as well. It's uh, it's always nice to see him out here. What's, uh, what's the focus for Heroic for the next couple of weeks then? Obviously, um, you're sitting pretty here inside of MPL. Um, you're going to be going through into finals. I don't think that there's a chance that you actually drop down now. Uh, there was a chance where 10 Star could have overtaken you for that top spot, but you're going to finish inside of that top seed. Um, aside from finals for MPL, anything else that you guys are focusing on right now? Uh, EUL, obviously, that's a big one for us. Uh, trying to qualify for the major, you know. Uh, we had a tough loss against Secret, that was completely our own fault. You know, like, uh, they, they played better on the day and we, we, we did not play anywhere near the standard that we like. Um, you know, last last season when we were in, last play of uh, EUL, sorry, we were in the same position as now. We, we were an, mm. an additional three points from where we are, you know. We, we'd only had that one loss, but now with the overtime, when on the overtime loss, yeah, we're already in a worse position, so... It's about getting back on top. Absolutely. And just one last quick question. Do you feel like if you do make it to Berlin this time, you'll have a little bit of a, a better time of things? Because I know that Charlotte was quite rough for you a lot. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think everything will be better this time. You know, everyone's had the experience of going to a LAN before now, like a, a bigger LAN, because I think that was the first actual decent LAN for four of us out of five, you know, and it was a, a yeah. nice experience to meet everyone. Um, and on top of that as well, I think... We've had more time now together as a team so that, you know, in these situations where we do get a little bit more stressed, you know, we know how to calm each other down. We know how to play properly off each other. Sloth, I really appreciate your insight and I appreciate your time here today. Any final words before I let you go? Uh, yeah, thank you for everyone who supported us. Uh, even when we, you know, trolled a few games at MPL, uh, not purposely, <laughs> but, uh, you know, and uh, thank you for the interview. Sloth, take care. Thanks a lot, mate. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers, mate. And there we have it. Sloth feeling good off the back of a win. As he said there, a little bit of a confidence booster. It's uh, it, it's a difficult situation that they do find themselves in, Jerry, when there is that sort of expectation and you can you can really see how the losses must, uh, must really grind down the mental. Yeah, and they've been kind of hot and cold the past few weeks. So I, I've got to actively disagree. And I think with, with what Sloth was saying there, I feel as though the current state of affairs, a loss to 10 stars should be more expected. A loss to 
Hyperio 86 should be more expected than one against, say, Secret, for instance. That's the level that I hold these teams to. But you know me, I'm a massive stand for these uh, these up-and-coming teams. But, yeah, um, it's about a mentality thing, right? They, they want to be consistently winning, and this is the kind of thing that will bump them back up. So, power to them. And, you know, everyone that had Sloth saying little trolling on their bingo card, they can tick that off. <laughs> so it's, a, it's a firm tick off on the line. Every um, time. I, I think it, it's one of those things, isn't it? If we do see Ten Star and, and Vipero get themselves up into uh, or Victus up into EUCL, then maybe we can maybe we can take that take that point a little bit further, Jerry. Novi, any finishing thoughts on that game? Um, I I think M and M put together a solid performance in that first half. They they were win they were winning until they weren't. That's what it sort of felt like, and they just fell apart in that attack. Moving forwards, they did decently in the Challenger League Open qualifiers. Even if Curless wins today, there is that still that chance through the qualifiers. They still need to be looking at what they can do better because this team is improving and it'd be a shame if they get knocked out of playoffs and then they stop trying for the open quals. I want to see them still bring it, even if they don't make it today. Well, because of the result that we have just seen, it means that our last game of the night has even more riding on it. But before then, we are going to hit a very short break, and then we'll be back with Ambush versus Viperio for our third game. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a few. Yes, guys. Yes, guys. Yes, guys. Yes, guys. Yes, guys. Yes, guys. In pillar, pillar, pushing, One. pushing. Hallway, 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 we need to hurry up, guys. I'm ready, ready to smoke. I'm ready. I'm ready to smoke. I'm, sm I'm smoked off. I'm s let me I'm smoke off. off. I'm okay. firing. I'm dropping. I'm smoking. Smoking. Firing. I smoke closet. Watch out, water, if you don't. Pushing it. Yeah, yeah. Fuck that. Right, right, right. Mine, mine. Thank you, guys. Freezer, freezer. Freezer, dead. Let's go. Yes! Go, let's go. Well played, well played, well played. Well played. Well played. <laughs> we have heard him flank then at the last second. I'm gonna play Hobo. I think that's nice. Nice. Right, Trophy door, left hand. Trophy door. Dead. Be injured. I want main bridge, main bridge, main bridge. Main bridge. Drop the tick, drop the tick, drop the tick. Trophy door. Trophy, trophy. One HP. Trophy in pit. Nice, let's go! Nice. You're so much better! Nice. Let's go, guys. We're let's so much go. better. This is what we needed. We needed momentum. He's in tower right now. He's making a rotate. Punching a rotate. In attic, in attic. We can help him run. Might be on that tick rotate. Joining is clear. I think I'm hearing a rotate. Nice. 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 I'm joining short. Shut up, shut up. Let's go, guys. Play your life, play your life. Hold on, hold on. Where? Where is he? On the hallway. Dead, Jager, zombie dead. Nice. 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 Let's go. The Amari works. Nice it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Next round, boys. Next round. It's fine. We can't act like that, boys. It's fine, it's fine. We have to go next round. You rotate. See, boys. It's good, boys. It's good. Stop stressing. Let's go next round. We got this. Son of a son. Trophy, 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 trophy. I can plant here, guys. I can plant. They've got shelf. Shelf. Trophy dead. Oh, oh, no! No! oh my god, man. Yeah, oh, man. Such a team go, effort. Boys. Daddy. What a comeback, boys. Let's go! Nobody likes being left out. That's why Special Effect are helping people with physical disabilities to play video games. But this isn't just about having fun. The gaming setups we create are personalized, so people can play to the very best of their abilities. And that opens the door to inclusion and independence, confidence and creativity. Help us level the playing field and create more magical gaming moments. Because it's everyone's turn to play.
go. Four quick kills come in. And Slothar just picks them apart. Let's try and put some shots on in and managing to find the last two. Oh, but Blur just decimates. Chris steps up huge for Amber. Three kills. All E1 DCs. What? what? Hello everybody and welcome back Whippet and Gibson joining me here on the desk for our third game of the night. We are going to be looking at uh, 86 and Ambush. I tried to say them both at the same time then, um, but that's that's certainly not, not advisable. Vipero 86 versus Ambush. You guys just had the pleasure of casting Eminem versus uh, Heroic. Um, not quite the result you were after Whippet there with the Eminem jersey in the background maybe. Yeah, a little bit. Now, my prediction, Elo, that's going to be up good. I went for Heroic. But my, heart, my heart wanted Eminem so, so much to get that. Just because I love the side. I love the org. I love the ro roster. They just couldn't get it done against Short. They played very good on their own defensive side. But when I went to the offense, Heroic kind of woke up. They brought the quality that we know they have on the side. And they kind of locked out Eminem. Leaves it all in the hands of Coles. Who gets that final spot for playoffs? I'm very intrigued about how the rest of this night can play out. What good is prediction, Elo, if your heart is a hurting, brother? <laughs> um, Gibson, any thoughts on that game? That was fun. It was a fun game. The pacing was strange, but in a good way, because it kept us on our toes as casters. But the main thing is, God, Ollie, I don't know if you've ever been in this position, but Eminem right now, they they got to sit and watch this game and the next one, not knowing for sure if That's they're the going to go through. Thing. Mm -hmm. that, that's, no. that's the really tricky thing here because mm -hmm. everything rides not just on it's not even on this game they've got like an hour or so wait until we get into our fourth game of the night um before them as i've said we've got viperio versus ambush let's kick things off with some rosters we're going to throw ambush up on the screen first whip it what do we need to look out for with this wonderful nordic side well, the first thing I will draw your attention to is the lack of Rody. He's not playing in today either. Unica is still filling in. So, not a full side ambush. Unica, of course, formerly on this roster, so not too much catching up to do as well. They're on a little bit of an upturn in form after a bit of a bit of a slump. You know, we heard Nick talking about it yesterday, but Diffila, Unica, Achilles, Rastin, and Nick are a very talented Nordic squad. Their style of play is one of the most entertaining and interesting ways they break down and think about the map. Again, you know, me and Gibson are pretty close to some of the people part of this team, and we, we know how they think, you kind know, of the core flaws behind this team, and it is one of the most interesting ones I've ever heard about. I just hope they can put that all into play because the recent form hasn't been the greatest. Such a strong group as well, Gibson, when you look at them. You know, Kilius is the leader. Um, I think he does a fantastic job of, and I'm sure he's not on his own in this, but mm -hmm. the morale of the team always seems really high. Uh, and yeah, they get frustrated and you know when things don't go their way or when they maybe lose, but ultimately it just seems like such a good team atmosphere that they're building. You can sort of spot the teams that, that look to garner that. Is there anything that you can sort of pinpoint with them saying you've got a bit more sort of inside knowledge, Gibson? Yeah, well, it's the fact that everybody in that and that roster, they love the vibes, you know, Coolius and Devella, they they have some fun with it. Even their warm-ups, which Whip and I, you know, we've been involved in once or twice. They, they like to have some fun. You know, they're getting ready to play a, a game that really matters most of the time. And they're just running around, running around theme park, drop shotting people and making little punch holes. It's just all about the vibe for them and you know, without Rody, you know, I don't know how much you know about Rody. You're losing one of the one of the most interesting players in MPL to watch, but you're bringing in Unica. He's been part of Ambush for so long. It's not a bad sub to bring in. And what I like about Unica is he, you know, when he left and went to Yukin two last season, the biggest thing for him was to improve, to get better. And he always spoke about, I want to get back with Ambush. I want to be back in that five. Since he's come back into the team, they've won every game. So Long may it continue for them. Well, the best of luck to our Finnish team here tonight. That has been Ambush. We're going to flip things over and take a look at the other side. We're going to be checking out 86 here. Gibson, I'm going to come back to you to kick things mm -hmm. off here. Yeah, well, what can we not say about 86? Every single player is brilliant at multiple things. Curly, best player in MPL, pushing F. And by F, I don't mean for respect. He just gets that diffuser down every single time. 
The numbers came up on screen earlier. The fact was it 23 times or something he had the diffuser down. No, uh, or Ollie. It, could, it should be 10, 10 times higher. The amount of times that Viperio get a kill, the final kill when he's halfway through or 75% yeah. through planting. I know it might bug him a little bit. Vitaline, Whippet, and I watched his massive resurgence with Dead Inside whenever they knocked G2 out of SI. And we were kind of saying to ourselves, this guy still has so much to give. He's coming to Vi Viperio and being fantastic. And you've got Hungry. You know, another player who has played at the highest level of Siege coming into Viperio. They're the feel-good team of Yukon last year. And I'm not going to lie, they're starting to become, along with 10-star, the feel-good team in MPL. You do just wonder if Hungry was almost a bit of a missing piece here, Whippet, in terms of the experience that he brings. Yeah, the, the massive change of, not even the change of pace, but the reassurance that right, Viperio 86 now have with Hungry in the back lines. He plays in these way more difficult positions, like we saw the, him getting stuck on Clash. He likes to play Osa as well. He has to do a lot of critical work to get the strategy rolling. He's responsible for setting up crossfires, pinches, and being in charge of helping the rest of that support game get rolling and enabling Astro, Grubby, and Vita to do all the very flashy work to get to do. And speaking of some of the flashy work, Grubby, one of the hottest talents right now, absolutely in fantastic form, Give him a 1v1, and he's going to win it. Let's take a look at the previous matchup. These two teams have, of course, played one another before. A fairly close game, by all accounts, on Clubhouse. 7-5 in favour of Viperio. That's going to give you a little bit of confidence if you're an ambush fan, right, Gibson? It's going to, and I remember watching this game, and it was an, one of the really good games in MPL. Like, you just have to look at the stats of Rastan and Curly. There's not too much there separating them. And what I loved about this game was the fact that they really went toe to toe. Ambush played their fun freestyle that Whippet alluded to earlier, and Viperio played their really regimented, we're going to play objective style. They clashed really well. And then I think Viperio. You give a team like Viperio a round or two advantage and you're never pulling it back. Yeah, it can be very difficult as soon as that does start to slip. You would think that, um, you know, we would be going to a fairly a uh, fairly plant orientated map here again tonight whip it given ambush's play style that's obviously something that viperio are going to be well aware of how do you think they're going to try and play around that because we know that Kilius loves to get that plant down both teams are, are very object objective focused. So when it comes to the map bans, I think we might see them avoid an Oregon or a clubhouse again and go to something a little bit newer. And the thing that's going to spring to mind is Skyscraper. Now, 86 have shown a lot of Skyscraper recently, but they are very, very good on this map. It is a nice back pocket to have. Not as many teams have it as well prepared. And I really think if they let it get through, they're going to be very keen to go there. But Ambush... They would have seen how much the 86 have played it recently, and they'll likely ban it out early. So it's a hard case to justify, but I really am predicting and somewhat hoping we don't get an Oregon. Well, let's have a look. I think we've got the veto ready so we can see just exactly where we're going to be headed here. Oh, <laughs> oh well, whip it. Unfortunately for you, well, I guess fortunately for you, you're not casting. But unfortunately for you, we are going to get an Oregon. Now, Skyscraper was actually left in there right up until the bitter end, and it was actually Ambush to get rid of it. That smart choice from Ambush. Definitely a smart choice from Ambush. My people are so, so, so good there. If anyone wants to see how, how to break down a karaoke T defense on Skyscraper, just look what 86 done yesterday, and the way they used Blackbeard, the way they used Asa, it was very, very good. Something That's... that I've only just noticed, Gibson, sorry to jump in, but yeah. Curly's cost 91% in the last time these two played. That's got to attribute, you know, a good couple of rounds there to Viperio. Is there a danger that if someone doesn't pop off quite big on, on either side that it could uh, that this could fizzle out? I'm, I'm not sure because if Curly doesn't pop off, Grubby pops off. If Grubby doesn't pop off, it's hungry. And on the side of Ambush... A lot of that popping off falls on the shoulders of Nick. You know, he's that guy that's that I whatever love Nick. Rody's not yeah. He's he's incredible. And when him and Rody are together, there's magic. But now Rody is gone. Eunuch is a very different player. So I feel like a lot of front of getting those kills tonight, Ollie, will fall on the Nick's hands for ambush. 
Nick is uh, he's a cracking player to watch. He's got a great Twitch emote as well that always gets spammed <laughs> in the chat whenever Ambush are playing. I'm sure that we're going to see it here and now tonight. We're ready to get thrown into this one, so we are going to head ourselves over to Oregon. Jerry and Novi, take it away. Thank you so much, Ollie. Thank you so much. We are here, and it is Oregon. We were this close, Jerry. This, this nice. close to getting Skyscraper, man. So close. I wasn't holding my breath, honestly. This is a pair of teams that have very little kind of in their states. Ambush are locked into fifth, right? They have been, even before this point, just hiding maps. They've been going to the same three, maybe four maps. They added Chalet to their sort of list of that maps at the split. And they have just been saying, you know what? We don't want to show too much because if we get into playoffs, then we've got the best of threes. And that's when we bring out the big guns here. I felt like a club or an Oregon was almost inevitable. But, you know, we, we could have seen that skyscraper. Viper86 were clearly happy to go in, <laughs> go to it after, you know, showing their hand on it maybe a little bit yesterday and over the weekend. But yeah, we're not we're not going to have that luxury, unfortunately. It is an Oregon. And I mean, we have seen some some boring Oregons, to be fair. There's a reason it's got its nickname. But we have also seen some proper cracking ones. And to be honest, these two sides, I think they could deliver a really good one. They definitely have that potential. It It depends what ambush we see today. Uh, I think that's the biggest factor. Just although the stakes are very low, to go over the stakes once more and reiterate them. Uh, Ambush, they're locked into that fifth position regardless of what happens. They they will be in fifth, even if they lose 7-0 or even win 7-0, they're in fifth. 86, though, they have the opportunity to move up to third place, secure third position. If that's the case, they will then end up playing either Eminem Academy or coalesce in the next playoff round or if they uh, if they actually lose this they will be against ambush if they're in fourth so that's That'd the only funny. real stakes but it, uh, for, regardless ambush is not going to want to show anything just in case even if they do tr win this game and force the fact that in the playoff round they will face 86 they're definitely not going to want to show anything right like this is a potentially their playoff opponent they don't want to risk it this is the thing is that there's no way they chose skyscraper right in in any world because you what is there left to show on oregon it's already a well played out map in a lot of regards and to come here now at the end of a season where you played it a ton yourself it's it's absolutely the 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 sensible tactical choice We've got our bands in already, and of course, uh, there's some interesting ones there. The floor is probably the most the of those, and uh, definitely a targeted band when it comes to removing utility. He's got a very unique way of doing it, and particularly especially useful when getting rid of any sort of elbow hold down here on the bottom floor. And uh, Ambush are going to try and benefit from that as they head down here. Of course, that being Viperio 86's ban. The Thatcher gone as well means that the Kai often paired with it can't be used. So uh, a lot of Maverick going to be in play most likely to try and... Uh... Actually, you know, you don't need the Maverick at all cool because, of course, there's no electricity on the Thatcher. So you're going to see a ton of Hibana in this matchup. And then the last one, the Valkyrie, a very powerful operator all around. Does leave the Mirror open, does leave the Azami open as well, as we see her banned quite often. But... For a basement defense, no mirror. That's uh, that's an interesting choice by Hyperio 86, quite honestly. It's, a, it's an interesting one, but I'm trying to think what options. Why why wouldn't they bring that operator, I guess? You know, they've got the Azami, they've got the Goyo. Maybe they have something in mind. Of course, mirror does lend itself to being a little more rigid in terms of how you might control that site. It does mm. give you options with the Black Mirrors, but Mirrors, uh, she's a three armor. She's not a quick operator, a right? A Azami, a little more flexible. You can change with your gadgets on the fly what you want to do depending on the situation. And maybe rather than sitting back, oh. they're going to be the ones who are hunting. Robbie takes the first bite into Nick. Astro follows her into Unica. And that is Viper 86 looking very, very good in the opening minute of the round. And an excellent call here. You see the value of those impact grenades as well. Astro able to cycle back to site very quickly. That extended roam, they just pushed out past the network of drones that ambush had already set up and that just shows that maybe they had some active droners but they didn't have anyone flicking through the, the static flank cams if they were in play and that's really cost them here early two-man advantage for 86 and we know how difficult this basement can be to attack that is even harder it's amplified 
a loss of two bodies. So Ambush, they really have to put together something. They've got still a lot of the tools to do so. Not all of their frags have been lost, and they do have Killius still with that hard breach in, you, in pocket, so he can... Try and open up all these hatches and make sure that, at the very least, Viperio 86 need to be playing this relatively well on the basement hold. Yiki Pete coming through from Defel. Looks like he's just going hunting. Hasn't droned this, but the shots coming his way does indicate that 86 are aware and alert to the potential threat that he poses. But he really is just fishing right now. He's, he's taken a risk in pushing into that position. You into got it into laundry but at the same time he's there waiting to see if viper 86 will re-aggress and there we go there's the snap Killius picks up the first one for ambush you see his army removed off the board but hungry he's certainly hungry there we go viper 86 is a quick flow of kills quick one two three but ambush they try to I, they're doing a lot of the same things that were quite critical of Ambush all the way going back to You Can Rainbow Rumble. On their attacks, they can get a the, the tiny, tittiest bit slow. Like, they just, you just kind of want to like slap them and be like, come on, move a bit quicker. Please, you are wasting time here. And it feels like Ambush is maybe waiting for Viper 86 to make a mistake rather than taking the initiative and trying to be proactive in the game. Yeah, the, the wrong play was maybe a little bit behind schedule in that round, but I'd say probably the bigger problem was just not having a lock on those roamers, right? They, that's what punished them, and, and playing out the 5v3 is always going to be uh, advantageous for the defense and ambushed. Yeah, they, they took their time about it, but I guess they just didn't want to be punished. There's... an interesting point I want to bring up about Grubby, right? Uh, I, I swear, this guy only gets double kills nowadays like he only gets two kills around the other gets nothing or two or three or four never does he just get one kill and of course and now i say that this is going to be the game where he turns around and has a slow and steady performance racking up exactly one kill every single round but the number of times i feel like we're calling his name in the kill feed and maybe even shouting it as he gets triples or quads it's really increased i feel like his stock has improved and he's placed in the team is so much more valuable now the first split we had our eyes firmly on astro and now it seems as though grubby's the one that's really taken the spotlight yeah grubby certainly come into the conversation i think at the start of the season maybe a little bit quiet i want to say compared to hunger and the rest of the team but he's certainly making a name for himself there's a very very fast kill to kick us off Speak of the devil, hungry, getting that one onto Unicus. That's the Iana taken out. That's two frag grenades removed, a great weapon, plus the infinite ability to essentially get free drones as well. All taken down in less than 30 seconds. That is probably the best operator, I'd argue, to kill this early on on that attacking lineup. But there is a reply. Rastin takes down Vito, Vito. Uh, and that's the Jaeger removed. Less important so far because he's already put down the ADSs. And we're slowly gaining control in the western portion of the map. This is just a lot of teams will do this now. They much prefer going for that white stairs, big window push, and it involves clearing out these key positions. Hungry is on the pulse, though, and reading into this push and relaying that information to Grubby, who's sitting down inside a monitor. You also got the support of Curly above, and they have drawn this line in the sand, whether it's from beneath or above or right in the middle. There's no way that Ambush cross it without getting a little bit of a pick here or there. Something cheeky. This is a nice position by Defel. Grubby drops waiting into the waiting arms of Grubby uh, of Defel there, but Hungry. Oh, brilliant call being relayed there by Grubby to Hungry. Immediate pre-fire onto the elevated position. A great refrag. Now he does need to potentially so let's say uh, a rotate back up, and this is going to be a little bit tough. Rustin, no way should you lose that. Hungry's reaction speed on point with the UMP black. And now Killius has to try and mop it up, and he will do that with the pre-fire from the LMG, just catching the knee of the pulse, but damage done. Two versus two, not unrecoverable for Ambush. Not unrecoverable, but still tricky. The time left, and with the operator still alive, with Curly being that smoke with two canisters still in pocket. 
There we go. There's the first one thrown in. And you can see the work that Azami's doing, forcing the, <laughs> the ambush players around. Kidius, did he just check Jenny Wall just to check to see if it was open? But it's not. It is still reinforced. They have to force their way through. Through the smokes. They're going literally through a chokehold right now. Nick cannot push through without dying, taking significant damage. And Astro mops up alongside his teammate to take the round for Viper 86. And that's just excellent use of the utility available to you. You've got the Azami, you've got the smoke, two of the operators that if you were to choose any two in that kind of 2v2 scenario, you would probably go for them. The ability to adapt to the situation that Azami has, and of course those smoke canisters in play always have been just so, so strong at locking out those entry points. And because Ambush lost so many pieces of the puzzle in hunting down this pulse and dealing with the mess he caused, they couldn't leverage those entryways. You know, you, you only had realistically two points of entry. They didn't have any hard breach to open up the closet. They didn't have anything to force like a good big window play like you'd want a Ying maybe in that situation. They just had two people that had to funnel through either the bottleneck from Trophy or either the bottleneck from the top of White Stairs. And, you know, Smoker's Army, it, it's... They win when they come down to it, when it comes down to fighting through bottlenecks every day of the week. They're well set up by 86. Lack of that buck as well hurting. You know, you could think that if the buck has survived late on, then you can do some dirty work from inside kitchen once you gain control of it. But they never got comfortable control of it. And now, speaking of the kitchen, we are heading there, as is the meeting kitchen defense coming out from 86. Perfect couple of defenses. Let's see if they can do a circuit. And they do the same. And they bring it. The trio of sites together. I was going to say like the Infinity Zones, but that's not a trio. That's five that or six. That's, is it that, six? That's, I'm, I'm showing I think my it's like... I think five, it's right? five. I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen that movie, but still. It's on a gauntlet. It would make sense for it, it to be five. Yeah, five it, fingers. It, 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 yeah, it would make sense. All right, we'll say like the Triforce <laughs> from, from Legend of Zelda. Something, something, yeah, like, something along those lines. There we go. That that, <laughs> that fixed the narrative a little bit more. Um, but for Ambush, it's a worrying sign, right? Because yes, every single site can, can work and every single site has been done to death, but you, you'd expect at some point to pick up a round, right? And mm -hmm. the longer that donut sits on that scoreboard the worse it's going to feel for the players and the more power that will hold up onto them and influence their play and their mentality we often talk about how there's the mechanical element sure and some players are just better than others but there's also the mental element how well do you communicate with a team how much do you support them and how much do you not give up when things are getting tough at the moment ambush is slowly getting squeezed 86 seemed very, very fine to carry on this tempo and really, really push Ambush hard. That was some perfect movement coming out from Vito on that retreat. Just want to highlight it because sometimes movement is overlooked as a skill, but he really did keep himself in that aggressive position as long as possible. And then his retreat was completely safe using the cover available to him. Drop down that hatch and rejoin the rest of the defense. Astro destroying one of those barricades early. I'd like to see that enable some mobility for the team. Curly finding the opening pick there onto Ambush with a shotgun. Hungry drops down to try and get that flank going, but Rustin is wise to it. And in the meantime, Kilius gets that refrag on to the smoke now no more smoke canisters in play i believe he must have died with a couple in pocket now three versus four 86 lacking some of the denial that they would have wanted for this hold we see a couple of kiba barricades in the pocket of astro but besides that it really is going to be a, con a gun game and it's going to have to be one from that man disadvantage to win it out grubby taking down Kilius though evens it out oh the frag grenade by unica so that puts them back on the aggression Back into a good position. Attackers have located as soon as Rastin fires his gone six, his position should be revealed. There we go. You could see the hit. You see the defenders instantly turn their heads to look for where that's coming from. Groovy picks up the first onto Rastin. So that's an equal man count for Unica going down. Pushes 86 into an even better situation, which Vito brings home. And that is a trifecta by period 86. Three rounds on the trot. They look like they want those points. They look like they want that guaranteed third place finish on the season. The best of the rest. Absolutely. Three in a row. I think we're really getting to see some of the biggest strengths of Azami in this game. We saw how useful she was in adapting the site in the two versus two prior. And then there in a three versus three, you saw that the setup was just a little bit 
befuddling for the player coming up from freezer opening that wall opening up that barricade and then suddenly there's a maze ahead of them they can't go into the monitors area they can't peek effectively around zulu and they get peeked instead by Zabia herself, who knows the lay of the land, who understands what's on the other side of it potentially and how to pick those barricades and how to use that SMG at close range to good effectiveness. So just really, really good stuff coming out from Viperia 86. And as I'm singing the praises of the Azami, they've decided maybe they've gotten the most out of her in this round and they are opting for that more rigid option that we mentioned at the very start of the game. Astro on the mirror now. Astro's on the mirror, bringing it back to basics. And this is what I really, really like about Viper 86. They're three rounds on the trot. They've looked in control in almost every single moment in the game. But even with all that being said, they will still switch things up. And it keeps ambush guessing, right? They're not always walking into the same sort of situation. They've got to think. They can't just go on autopilot. They have to oh. consult, have to talk, have to communicate. No. Hungry. No. no. <laughs> Defele. He was aware of that one. Is, I was about to say, is Vita going to have a look? Because he was on the camera, but no, he's not in position. Curly is near a window, though, so he might look for some kind of run out. It's, it's being pinged. They know. They know that he's there. Mm. The thing is, though, is that with that jump out, Rustin or Defele rather absolutely knows that they have intel on them. Maybe he thinks it's a... I, I have no idea. He's, he's got to surely sense that this is the default cam. Partly this is on him, but whatever. If he's using it to bait some aggression from 86, then that's just absolutely gigabrain. Uh, like 3000 IQ power to him. But 86, they're not going to bite a second time. And instead, the drone work will come out because they know that there's going to be some players inside of this big tower. Early is the last of them, though. And he will try and shoot that drone and fall back. Doesn't doesn't quite catch the uh, switch drone there. And now ambush. After a little bit of a sketchy start to the round, they still have the opening frag. And they have gotten the control that maybe they should have had a little bit sooner. But they are working with it now. They are opening up these hatches. And they are opening up their options for whatever execute they want to go with. Definitely have to be careful. Very, very, very careful. Ambush is close, knocking on the door. This frag grenade. Okay, it's got cancelled by Nick. If it goes deep into freezer, I'll be able to catch one of the 86 boys out. No, it does not go off. The hot pocket also doesn't go off. I'm, is Ambush's grenades just all duds? Like, what's going on? There we go. <laughs> Finally, something explodes. Flash to blow any kind of ADS. A grenade rolled through. And here's the push getting readied by Ambush. Once these flames die out, they're going to start seeing if Viper 86 step out of line. It doesn't seem that way. They're Vito. entrenched in their position, setting up the crossfires. Vito pushing aggressively up elbow and getting rast in, evening the man count before this execute. Nade sent down will actually find Gruppy. Well cooked. Kitty is taking out Curly as well, leaving Astro and Vito in the two versus four. One gas canister in hand, but it's going to take something miraculous. They do have one mirror left up for them. C4 in hand of Astro as well. He can try and send out at an opportune moment. Nate comes out from Nick. That is the last of them. It's now a gun game, but Nick will put that gun to good use. The LA will melt Vito all up to Astro. We've seen big clutches from this position before, and the timer is working in his favor. Diffuser tries to get set down, but Defel holding the angle from the south wall will find the final player. Ambush capitalize on that collapse and find themselves their first round. They turn that donut into a baguette. Into the baguette. Can they turn it into a swan? A swan? That remains, to be seen. <laughs> that remains to be seen. Ambush, though. Certainly looking better. Um, uh, who expects the prone player slowly prone peeking an ankle? No one. Uh, 86, not going to be too disheartened. That was, a, you know, to quote Sloth, a little bit of trolling um, with the jump out and everyone is sort of yeah, running up to bomb. Big Tower and going, should I have a go? <laughs> Um, but no, the, the, I expect them to get back to business now. They've gone for the dormitories hold, which they had a lot of success. They were very, very good at forcing Ambush into choke points and taking advantage of their mistakes. Ambush did not go down the checklist correctly or in fact got stopped purely by Viper 86 taking kills, so they didn't have the utility to do so. Uh, the generator wall was never opened, and that just caused so many issues later into the round for Ambush. Ambush needs to make sure that they're not losing players too early, and they can still get their objectives completed. It was a little bit of a 
a worrying round for 86 because they did overly commit to that aggression inside a small uh, big tower rather obviously losing the opening pick does make a big difference but it was still recoverable and they caught them themselves out with a couple of things in that four versus four the nade certainly opened things up removing a power position is massive and then i was kind of flooding the site they did that very effectively i thought there have been questions about how well their executes can be used in MPL so far, and I think that they did something to, to quell those worries. But they're going to have to do it a few more times. Of course, getting a couple rounds on the attack would be good for them. Getting three would be fantastic. 86 realistically want at least one more from the remaining two. Oh, them. We've got ourselves a dorm defense. There's a little bit of a roam game going on downstairs, but Unico is ready, waiting for the cutoff. I believe Grubby suspects that, though, and he's going to be very careful about how he peeks this. Jiggles for the intel and then commits to the shots. Lands all the body shots against Unica. Very nicely played by Grubby. Once again, proving an impactful player for his team so far. Incredibly important. And he runs a lot. <laughs> he runs back into Feli still holding the angle. How long is he going to hold us? Because also, the tower hasn't been fully cleared out. And that could certainly bite ambush in the behind later on they're at least droning through so they're sticking to their fundamentals committing with these up nades and often we we see these pings of where they're trying to throw them and you go there's no one there of course on the x-ray but it's like with the fuse cluster charge we discussed and chalet he said even if it clears a room where no one's in it it gives that information a lot of those spots are predetermined spots where players are likely to be and so you can just kind of remove them, at least guarantee that when you swing those corners, that there's no one there's no one going to be there. Plus, you can open up a line of sight if someone rotates there later on through the floor. So it's worth throwing utility around these corners, even if there's no one there, if you can't check it with a drone and get that information. It almost reminds me of the way that Lion used to be played. You know, you'd hit that button once you droned an area and then claim that ground for free because you knew that you weren't going to pressure. You can do that without the droning aspect if you've got candelas in play. So it's a really strong utility, even in that use. Nick finding a delayed refrag there to close the gap somewhat. Taking out the Azami, a fairly big deal, although I believe on this site, a lot of those Eber barriers will have been completely uh, set up already. And look at the time, Novi. Only 31 seconds left. Ambush don't really have the power positions in play to get this push going. They are pushing blind at this point. They don't have time to drone it out. Will they expect Hungry on this corner, or will we see that DMR pop up in our kill feed for a good few? There's one right next yeah, to you, Hungry. He's completely blind. He doesn't realize. Now he finally really unleashes that MK14. Grubby takes down one. Hungry with another, going completely undetected in trophy, and he adds a couple of scalps to his tally. Ambush just leaving it far too late. Ambush moving too slowly. It's something that's been kind of synonymous with this team. I remember, like I said beforehand, in Yukin Remo Rumble, but even before that, X used to cast the Nordics, and he said, uh, we asked him for information on Ambush, and he said, sometimes this team on attack can just, they just don't do anything. They wait till the last 20 seconds, but by that point, it's too late. Uh, so it's something to keep an eye on. And it seems like that's still ingrained within this team's play style. Um, They've looked good on like one or two rounds, but the rest of it has been Viperity 6 certainly leading the way and, and kind of, it's like uh, leading the lambs to slaughter. That's what it feels like at the moment. Ambush is mm. being led on this ride. Viper 86 is very, very happy to take them to that destination. So oh, the swan eludes them for the time being. Like the one in Hot Fuzz, I guess. And... <laughs> The site rotation is very important on this map, right? We've seen Ambush manage to snag around on the basement, which is a pretty good thing. A pretty big deal on the attack, right? Usually you're winning the tertiary sites. And we're back here at one of those tertiary sites meeting. Despite the fact that, you know, 86 did have the option to go down to the basement. They want to come back here instead. So this is where it all matters, right? 4-2 obviously looks a lot better than 5-1 at the split. And Ambush really do need to take this with a bit more conviction than they managed last time. Okay, they had a decent opening. They just didn't convert it. They they got a bit confused by the setup and their late game play was to backstab from freezer stairs. They didn't have the knowledge, they didn't have the intel of the setup and that cost them. So maybe a little bit more drone work, a little bit more intel required. They've got that zero once again. They've got the Yana, who of course brings the intel with her in that utility. Unica though upstairs looking to try and get this entry. He's got frags in pocket. He's being fed that intel by Rustin. 
Harrison trying to get that cut off, but it looks as though 86 have managed to scarper. In the meantime, the rest of Ambush, they're working on this tower clear. They want to get that vertical. They want to exert pressure onto meeting itself, get that hatch control, and open up the wall on stage as well. They're doing quite a good job of this top floor push. Everyone on Viperio 86 forced back. It looks like the Jaeger is fighting for that ground inside a pit. This is Vitaline. Here's the front line, Grubby in tow as well. At some point, they're going to come lock horns, and there will be a death on this top floor sooner rather than later. Sooner rather than later, but ambush. Oh, they fell off, okay. <laughs> Yo, they <laughs> fell off, man. Like, <laughs> they are gone. He fell off. Defele, he's falling in, into Attic. I don't have that push. And actually, that's a good point to raise about this army, actually, is the gadget can work both ways. It's not just Defender favored. They've actually given Defele a little purchase point. It's harder to pre-fire that. You've got to, if a player's not aware, that Azami has used the gadget there, but there's Groovy oh, picking up the first one. Speaking of the Azami, there's Vito as well. That brings us to a three on five. And all's well and said, we said we're going to see some contact sooner rather than later. It's already firmly going the way of 86. Grubby with another entry kill. I believe that puts him on three for the game. Just a monumental impact this man has had. And now 3v5, Nick. Trying to hope that someone wanders into him. 86 won't budge. Or oh, a tight angle being held by Grubby in the distance. Gilius doesn't quite spot him. The smoke's come out with 42 seconds left. That is the second canister. They've still got those pop pockets in play as well. Astro swings from kitchen, punishes Kilius, just wandering into the midst of him. Astro with a second onto the head of Nick, and now it's all up to Rust, and he's going to try the same thing twice. Barricade's already gone, mate. That gone six ain't doing anything. You've just sounded your own dinner bell here. Everyone's going to converge on your position. If I appear six are hungry for more, and that's what they'll do. The drop comes through, and soon enough, he'll be backstabbed. Rust and takes down Grubby, but there it is. Astro with a 3k on the round. A dominant performance in the final defensive half for 86 put themselves up five to one novi five to one viper 86 putting on a solid performance an ambush falling by the wayside so look at this here Kilius. just look at the timing that was a nice shot by Rast in there, but oh, yeah. it, it's just 86 seem to understand the timings a little bit better for ambush ambush seem out of sick sink and look uncomfortable i think that's the key thing they don't look natural at the moment on this map it feels like they're trying to force their style a bit too much and it's not working um players kind of just need to relax and just chill just a little bit but maybe we'll see a different side to them on their defense opting for the mirror as well on the basements both sas operators and then the two anti-utility operators in Wamai and jaeger so well-rounded composition to bring a lot to the table there's not many defensive rounds left for them to play if viper 86 carry on it with the performance that they're currently putting in whenever i see ambush on the defense on oregon i i cannot shake my memory of seeing their first competitive game within the UK scene on this map against Delta Project, or one of their first at least, where that whole game was just people jumping out of windows. It was the game that crashed the stream, if you remember the clip of Fresh casting, uh, I believe it was Defel on tier two, and he just jumps out, grabs a double kill, and then a knife, and then the broadcast just kaput. It's beautiful timing, comedic. You, you couldn't have planned it any better than that. But that is the ambush that I want to see. I want to see them ballsy. I want to see them full of fire to, to try and give Viperio 86 a, a bit of a fight, you know? At the moment, they're sitting back, and sure, they haven't got much to play for, but that's it. That's the aggression we want to see. Nick taking a a bit of a hit, but taking down Vitaline as well. The finger out of the picture and ambush with a man up. A man up with less than a minute gone in the round. So that's one of the better positions ambush has found themselves in. What can 86 do from a position that they're behind in? Quite interestingly, with their conversion rate, I'm quite interested to why 86 is, isn't as high as it might seem. Uh, for a team that has shown how good they are, you, you know, they've won the last Challenger League Open Quals. This is a very, very strong side. But 86, one of their talents, 
with this roster, like every 86 roster that has ever been, is their ability in fragging when it you push comes to shove, you can rely on these players to get those multi kills. Like Grubby, for instance, who seems seeming eternally doomed to always score two Ks in every single round. But also <laughs> Astro, especially as well, hungry. All these players can pop off and Curly is the IGL plus on the hard support. He's having a quiet game here. But he's still winning his ones when it's required. Grubby always getting 2Ks. I wouldn't call it a curse. That feels much more like a blessing if you if you ask me. But yeah, he is, he is shown his worth for certain. I mean, this is the guy that we were highlighting and for good reason. Look at him. 8 and 3 after that first half. Someone on the side of Ambush really needs to step it up. I'm glad to see Nick finding that opening pick. But it'll be a team effort as well. So you can't always rely on just one person. Six, slowly sort of closing this net. 50 seconds left and it looks like they are fairly committed to an E-Box drop couple with some blue pressure, some tower pressure. I want to clear some utility out. Hungry taking a bit of damage but he does manage to get some lifelines off. First flash will be caught by a magnet but the second one will go through. That forces the pillar player back and now Hungry can try and maybe go down those stairs safely. Worried perhaps about these long angles watching from deep inside of the supply. Let's go for the drop here. Astro doesn't get the C4 out of midair, and Diffel will claim his life. Three versus five now. 20 seconds left. Surely Ambush holds it. No. Hungry swings it, takes down Nick. Still 15 seconds to work with. Curly holding onto the fuser. Will set it right by the door, evading that hold from the freezer. C4, nothing connecting. He might well stick this. He does. Down goes Hungry. Grubby and Curly now in the two versus three as they pick up one during the plant. And this is certainly winnable. Defell trying to swing round. Wants to try and connect. Collect the kill onto the player in Shiko, and he does. Grubby goes down. All up to Curly now. He set this diffuser down. It's going to have to be a 1-3-V-3 clutch. Rassin claims the downs player. Curly does have the audio. He has full sight of the diffuser from this spot, but Unica can try and long arm it. He doesn't have any flashes. He has to drop, and there's the shot to the cover from Defel. Unica will close it out, denying the heroics from Curly, but 86 pushed that all the way when they had absolutely no right to. And Gibson will be very, very happy because Curly's extending his plant stat. Um, currently, the leader in the entire league somehow manages to stick that and then Scarpers. Shame, actually, that the teammate, I'm not sure who it was, I think it was uh, Groby got killed on the exit. He got taken down. It's kind of a shame because 86 might have looked a bit differently if it was two on three instead and they could have had someone on the ground covering where the diffuser was, so the opportunity for long arm didn't come in. But Ambush, they get the swan. Can they go for the... Defenders, protect your I, uh, I don't know what attackers. would be for a um, three. Bomb? The bum. The bum. The bum. The bum. Yeah, the bum. It's like a bum. It's the bum. Can they get the bum? All right, no, doesn't sound too I, I'm good. I'm not comfortable with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, let's, let's, let's ditch this one for now. Let's move on. Can Ambush get their third round? They start equalizing the scoreline. Just tiniest of pieces. We are onto the dormitories, and we've seen, I want to say, mixed success when Ambush was attacking this site. Can they fare any better on the defense? It's the most Viperio 86 thing that even in a round where they are looking like they're going to lose, and they do eventually lose, they still get the plant down. Curly is just... He, he knows how to hold F. Gibson said it best, you know? <laughs> like, the best at paying respects is it, it, just so good at it. And it's that win con, right? Because you have no right to win that round. But the plant gives you that possibility, that, that inkling of hope. And that's why they're always in with a chance of winning any match, any round, and you cannot count them out. Ambush, right now. They're sitting back. They've just finally managed to get that round win on the defense that they really needed to sort of secure themselves, you know? Uh, they're, they're sitting on the cusp of Viperio 86 gaining a match point. So every round really, really does need to be stuck out for him here or them here. It's uh, obviously low stakes for them, but they, they want to get into that winning habit that they've lost before they come into the playoffs. Ambush. Tough situation to be in. They haven't managed to find that early kill did in the previous round which set them up for success the fellow is going to get droned out might have to back out of the position but it's nick who takes the first blood traded well not quite traded astro does pick up the fellow who was spotted so even stevens across the board yana 
can have a look with the replicator and get some more information for the side of Viperio. It was alive a long time before eventually getting shot out, so that's a good read on hopefully where some of the defenders are. But Ambush seems steadfast in their approach. There's a yellow ping through the floor. This could get dicey if there is a player. Groby's, Groby is underneath. He doesn't have any frag grenades. There's no frag grenades remaining. So no up nades going to catch any ambush players out. They're going to have to go for the good old fashioned approach and take it them with gunfights. They do have smokes in the pocket of Hungry. And, you know, as a player, he absolutely knows how to isolate the site into his favor. The shot in midair onto the position of the smoke will actually catch the canister and then the smoke. And then Grubby gets another and Curly gets another. And suddenly, 86 have destroyed any hope of ambush holding on to this round. As Rustin just held at bay by his own team's flames and now... An impossible retake, Novi. How is he going to do this? I don't even know if this wall is open for him. There is a rotate, so it is possible. But Curly with another kill. Two from Curly, two from Grubby. That was a sensational collapse. Sensational. Absolutely amazing by Viper 6 and their match points. So one point away, one round from securing third place spots in the MPL group stage. Ambush, not the performance they want. Those shots were so clean. He that only is... gets two keys. Two keys. <laughs> he, gets two keys. <laughs> he gets two keys as well, apparently. We should start calling him the swan because he always gets, he's always getting two, isn't he? The swan. We're going yeah. back to the analogy. <laughs> no, no, no. I okay. hate it. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, by period six, they're... they're flexing their muscles a little bit. That's what it feels like. They, they know that this game's in their control. They've already pretty much got the CL spot as well. This is the players demonstrating just how good they are in the server. There's a lot of mechanical skill going on in this 86 lineup. I was a little worried for the mid round, honestly. I was looking at their drone economy and thinking it's not the best. You know, they, they managed to get about a minute into the round and they've lost all but four of their regular drones. But there was something that I believe it was Grubby on the Yana was doing very effectively, which was maximizing the use of those clones. Hungry as well with his shock drones, gathering a bit of intel before that push. And it didn't matter that they lost so many of their regular drones. They are stacked to the nines when it comes to alternative sources of intel. And that's super important when you consider the amount of utility and knowledge you need to be going into that roam clear with and then into the execute with. It's a great lineup for that particular site. And of course, they've altered it a little bit for this site. You've got the Yana off and this Said it's just hungry with that extra intel but he will be able to provide it no more as defel will melt him from inside of dining it seems like the intel was maybe a little dry they just weren't expecting that roam not expecting a roam and it finally works out for ambush we know that they can convert the first blood into a round win but you can see grubby's on the case putting the edge ups down and that'll prevent that roam from biting them later down the line if ambush choose to rotate underneath the basement what a fantastic frag grenade nick did not know what hit him and there we go even man count once more ambush. That's always a risky that's always a risky spot to sit in you know yeah. that there's that drone hole right behind you it's a, it's a tight one. Of course, though, power position given the meeting defense, but Astro has snuck his way in. Takes down one, not confirmed, but Unica will find the reply. Grubby, though, takes down Unica. Defel with a get another response, and it's effectively a two versus two. All of a sudden here, Curly and Grubby now teamed up. How many times have we seen this before? Grubby holding on to that solo entry away, but there is the soft wall. They've accounted for this. They have the rotate available to them so that they can play deep roams and reconnect to the site later on. The diffuser is going down safely though. Rustin and Defel cannot get an angle onto this spot and Curly once again exemplifying why he is so good, why his stats are so high with these plants, just finding that gap in the armor. Now Grubby trying to hold against the push from stage. Meanwhile, Defel, he is pushing in, but he gets taken down completely by Grubby. Rustin in the one versus two, making a one versus one to keep Ambush alive in this matchup. All all up to Curly now. He's planted. Can he seal it out right this second? Pistol out for Rustin. 
15 seconds left. He has to find this in the next few seconds, but he just checks the corner and That's Curly. It. That's it. With a round winning play, will seal the victory a 7 2. What a fast Oregon coming out from them. And they secure third place preferential seeding in the playoffs. Oh, 86 makes a statement in their final week of the NPL group stage. Their position was pretty much guaranteed. This pretty much cements it. We've had a lot of conversation about 10 star, our undefeated 10 star look amazing. Yes, they do, but 86 is so hot on their heels. It is ridiculous. Playoffs and more importantly, finals are going to be absolutely insane. They're going to be litty, absolutely litty. This was just such a dominant display from, from Viper 86. I almost said ambush there. That would have been incorrect. 86 were on top from start to finish. Even in the rounds that they lost, they somehow had some way back into them. It could well have been a 7-0, the way that they dominated. And for a team that have just managed to become the first team to almost certainly effectively book their spot in Challenger League, you wouldn't have bet against them, and it's exactly what you expect. They are on the form of their lives, ambush. They've come up against 86 at a very bad time for themselves. Yeah, we're starting to lock in that leaderboard. We've got Heroic and first, then 10 start, and now mm. Vipiro, Victus, ambush. It is all about that sixth and seven spot. That is the final piece, Jerry, and it is all coming down to the final game. I mean, like, I, I, I know we've had so a good. lot of quite predictable moments, but Jerry, this is one of the most exciting ends to a group stage we've ever had, right? Absolutely. Well, I think that we could gush about how important this next match is for a long, long time, but we've got a wonderful analyst desk who will break down just how Viperio 86 managed to smash Ambush out of Oregon. We are back, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, Jerry, Novi, thank you very much indeed. Whippet and Gibson joining me here to break this one down. I mean, blinking you miss it stuff tonight, guys. We've seen a lot of quick games and Viperio really not looking to hang around there. Absolutely not. Viperio 6, again, such a good team with the class that they bring. I'm not too surprised that they really get it done. But one of the last tricks that I was, we, were, we talked a little bit after, after we saw the map videos, I'm very surprised he went to Oregon. Now, it didn't look like it was, but that's one of Ambush's best maps. 86 mm -hmm. absolutely dismantled them. I think that's a credit to how good they are playing right now. Confidence high, and clearly their structure is just working out perfectly. It really is, and to say that it was a good map for Ambush historically, Gibson, it, it certainly didn't look it tonight. It was very one-sided. It was, and it wasn't even a case where... There was glimmers of hope, but Viperio just really sat them down. And for Ambush, you kind of struggle to see in a game like that any positives. The only good thing is, I guess, it didn't matter to them. You know, the sixth place was confirmed. But yeah. as far as prep for the playoffs is concerned, getting dismantled by a team that you would, in your head, think that you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with on your map, definitely not the way to do it. Yeah, it's certainly not going to feel fantastic, but... Um, as you say there, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Their position was locked before this. Uh, someone that I want to highlight with Pitt was Grubby. What a performance from him. 11-4, and four, closing things out. Nothing could stop him tonight. He was picking up 2Ks for free. Yeah, it felt like Ambush were almost just worried and concerned he was going to come around the corner and swing at them. He is such a fantastic player in server. When he has to take those ones or win those ones, that's exactly what he does. That's his role, that's his job. And he is so, so good that we saw it all through the CR calls. We've seen all through this split this season. Robbie is almost untouchable on his day, and today was certainly one of those days. I'd maybe go as far as to say that he rivaled Curly's statistics for the last time that these two teams faced off against one another. Um, we, we sort of questioned whether it needed anybody to, to stand head and shoulders above the rest, and it, it didn't really need it, but it must have felt pretty good for Viperio there. In terms of Ambush Gibson, let's just take a look at the other side for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, their focus now is obviously going to be on to the playoffs. Do you think they're potentially just showing an Oregon here and, and not really um, you know, giving too much away in terms of, of strategy is going to benefit them in the long run or are they just in a bit of a slump at the moment without Rody? 
there's a, there's a fine line that you walk, isn't there? It's like, yeah, you don't want to give away two strats, but at the same time, you don't want to go into any sort of a fixture in a bad run. Losing Rory is a ma is a massive player to lose. When him and Nick in stage one or split one were just roaming around the map the way that they play picking up kills, it was so much fun to watch. You've lost that now with Rory not being a, not being around, you know, with the sub Unica stepping in, and. Unica is a fantastic player. We we love Unica, but he's very different. So they have a lot of work to do, I think, over the next couple of weeks to get themselves ready for these playoffs. Because if it's like it's been in split two, it may just be a very short lived trip to the playoffs for them. Well, we will have to see. For the meantime, we do have an interview ready with PX7 from Viperio. So we're going to throw over into that PX. It's got to feel pretty good having a nice speedy win over on Oregon tonight. Yeah, feels good. Um, not much to say, to be honest. Just uh, another day at the office for you guys, like fairly fairly straightforward? Yeah, pretty much. I, I don't want to sound like cocky or anything when I say that, but it was we knew what they were going to do and uh, we just executed. That's it. It went well. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing cocky about being confident in your preparation, um, especially when you've sort of pulled it off. You know, it's not like you've had a, a really hard-fought game there. You've obviously put your time in. Um, Ambush are known for a bit of Oregon. They're, they're quite successful on that map historically. Yeah. Is is that one of the reasons why you chose to go there? Because there was plenty of VOD to go over? Uh, that and also the fact that we are also good at Oregon. I mean, it's not that difficult, right? Um, but also they won against teams on Oregon, but not really good teams, you know, like, um, nothing that was, that was scary. So you just sort of saw that and thought, yeah, we can, we can firmly take it there. I mean, that's absolutely fair enough. How are, how are things feeling in and amongst the, the players at the moment? Are you all getting a lot of good practice in? Obviously CL qualifiers are knocking around at the moment as well. And I'm sure that you're participating in those. Yeah, I mean, chemistry's good, everything's rolling, it's, uh, yeah, pretty cool right now, pretty cool. Brilliant. PX, have you got anything that you want to say to anybody that's watching, any Viperio fans? Uh, not, not really, honestly, I mean, the usual, thank you if you're supporting us. Um, and I guess I'm just going to say something in French real quick, because I know some of my uh, French friend. friends are, uh, are watching. Um, uh, merci beaucoup, si vous êtes là, regardez l'interview, et, uh, puis voilà, c'est à peu près tout. Thank you very much. And then that's all I got. Uh, my French is a little bit rusty, I'm afraid, PX. I really appreciate <laughs> you jumping in on the call. Um, thank you so much. And I'm sure that we will be seeing more from you guys during those playoffs. Thank you very much. No worries. Take care. And there we have it. Man, a few words. Just happy to get the win in. Seemed like another day at the office there for PX Whippet. Yeah, 86 are making a very good habit of winning and winning in high profile situations and winning mm -hmm. in fantastic form as well. That matchup was a very, very strong display on a map that historically Ambush should be very good at. You'd imagine even with the lack of ability that they'd be able to kind of bring that same strategy, that same philosophy in. In 86, it just got absolutely smashed. 86 are just to another level right now. It is very hard to see. Many teams getting past them, maybe Heroic, maybe 10 star, but 86 in the form of their career right now. It's going to feel pretty good for 86 as well, moving into those playoffs, Gibson. What's bound to be? You know, you go into the year, into the MPL season, and your main objective is to get the CL. The, f the fact that they haven't even gotten through the playoffs yet, and they're already basically guaranteed CL, it's job done. But we know what PX is like, we know what Chris is like, we know what all the guys in that team is like. That's only that's only the start. They're looking at the likes of Eminem from last year, and that's what they're aiming for. I, I guarantee it. In their heads, they're saying, if Eminem can do it last year, we can make that exact same run this year. Lots of strong contenders in the scene at the moment, that is for sure. We're going to hit a short break, get a refresh, switch out the desk, and then we are back with our fourth and final game of the night. But you're not going to want to go anywhere because it is going to be a banger. Still a lot on the line, and it all comes down to this. Coalesce and Riddle in just a few. There are many finite resources attackers have to manage in Rainbow Six Siege, yet arguably the most valuable resource is time. If the clock hits zero and the diffuser hasn't been planted, the attackers lose the round. However, deciding on an attacking strategy isn't so simple. Each round, attackers are faced with a plethora of ever-changing variables. 
There are multiple bomb sites, over 30 potential defending operators, and destructible surfaces that can be manipulated by the defenders ahead of time. All of these variables create uncertainty, and uncertainty creates risk. Attacking teams can take steps to mitigate risk, but doing so will cost them time. Let's take a look at two contrasting strategies attacking Villa's trophy and statuary bomb site. First up, we've got an attack from Arctic in their Play Day 1 matchup against Victus. Arctic's plan is to simultaneously sweep across both floors, from the south side of the map to the north side, clearing the area of Romus. By gaining significant map control, Arctic can reduce the risk of a sneaky late round flank from behind. Fast forward and Arctic has successfully pushed all four remaining Victus members back onto site. However, they barely have any time left to effectively set up their execute. Without the time to use their utility to open up angles onto site, Arctic are forced into a haphazard push through a chokehold in the last 25 seconds of the round. More of an execution than an execute. On the contrary, Viperia 86 had a very different approach against Eminem Academy. They completely disregard the south side of the map, instead focusing all their efforts immediately onto the objectives. Using the windows and their utility, they can force the defenders to rotate back or, unfortunately for Skiddy, eliminate them entirely. They've chosen to ignore a lot of Eminem Academy setup which could leave them vulnerable to nitro cells from beneath, but the risk pays off and V86 are able to seize control control of Master Bedroom and Astro before the halfway point in the round. This fast, risky strategy attempts to make up for a lack of map control and options through speed and aggression. But a good strategy will only get you so far. Small decisions can swing rounds in an instant and sometimes you'll just get outplayed. My name's Nikki, I am Chase's mum and we first met Special Effect at EGX some years ago when both me and my husband went up for the day and uh, we found a stand called Special Effect. Never heard of it before. Didn't realise there was such a thing as a, a gaming charity for the disabled. So before we visited Special Effect, I mean, we've always been a huge gaming family and um, gaming is something I wanted all my children to, to be able to have the opportunity to do. Chase has got a severe form of cerebral palsy and he has dystonia which means he can't fully control his body very well. Even trying to get Chase to push uh, a button is really difficult to do because he just doesn't have the fine motor skills to do it. But he really loved gaming and you could see that he wanted to do more. So we went up to the uh, gaming room in Oxford and so throughout the day we tried lots of different pieces of equipment, lots of different games until we found out what worked best for Chase. As a parent, it's uh, made so much difference to Chase being able to access video games. You know, I was really sad that I thought that he was never really going to be able to join in and do those things on his own. Ah. <laughs> Particularly to disabled people, I think games are really important because, you know, someone who's uh, able-bodied can go out, they can play golf, they can go and drive a car, they can do almost anything in real life. Chase isn't going to have those same opportunities. So being able to sit down and put on a game means that it creates a level playing field. He can do an activity that he probably wouldn't be able to do in, in normal day-to-day -day life. Um, but even better, with gaming, he can play alongside someone who's able-bodied. And it gives a real boost to his self-confidence, I think. Mm, that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that was really
four quick kills come in. And Slarfar just picks them apart. And try and put some shots on in and managing to find the last two. Oh, but Blur just decimates. Prince steps up huge for how much three kills all E1 DC. What? Hello everybody and welcome back to the NPL. This is our fourth and final game of the night and our final game of the group stage. And guess what? It still means something. That's right, we have got action right up until the bitter end. Here and now, we are going to decide if Coalesce or Eminem make it into playoffs. I'm joined by Novi and Jerry. The game that is uh, in front of us is going to be Coalesce versus Riddle. And, Jerry, there is a lot to play for here, and I'm certain that there are at least six people watching this that are glued to their screens right now. Yep, those six players on Eminem Academy and staff and what have you, they will be hoping to heavens above that anything, fight that, that, that Riddle can, can summon up all of the the improvements that they've made throughout the season that have just not come good yet they've they've been improving so steadily and and every single time they just cannot cross that line because all coalesce need for this is a point they just need six rounds and Eminem academy they have to hope that riddle beat coalesce in regulation is it possible novi i think it is because riddle showed us a different side to them yesterday and looking at what the players were tweeting, they weren't happy, even with that performance, that they didn't win. They felt like they could have won that game. This is their last opportunity to truly put onto display for the rest of the league why these players should be an MPL and why their MPL calendar, the, the caliber. This is their last opportunity. And from their reactions, I'm betting they're going to come in and give it their all. They are not going to roll over today. I certainly hope so. Let's meet the team. Let's bring up our Riddle roster. Jerry, you can talk us through. Well, Kevin Catal and Perry, the trio that have remained since the very start of MPL, but you've also got Reich and Vabs in there too. A couple of players who have uh, become well-known through the university scene coming and competing as the new roster within the new roster in Yukin too. A couple of times and just actually being generally quite impressive. Always... Uh, sort of outdoing people's expectations. Do not think too little of these guys. And the supporting cast as well uh, have shown considerable improvement under uh, a bit of their stewardship. That entry conversion rate, well, it's very telling. It's one of the, well, it is the lowest in the league by quite some margin. And to be honest, it really is indicative of some of the troubles that Riddle have had up until yesterday. They are very good, at actually, at getting the opening pickle in a lot of cases, but they just never managed to you know, hammer that home. So yesterday we saw a lot more regimency, a lot more ability to get the opening pick and convert it. But on their attacks, it was a little bit lacking. So they just tighten up the attacks from yesterday to today and they've got a good chance here. Absolutely. And as you say, bringing in, you know, more experienced players or players of a different type of experience can often uh, just take a, lot, a little bit of time to, to settle. But once you do it, it can be of a great benefit. Let's take a look at Coalesce now. Of course, these uh, these players here, they're playing for themselves at this point. Coalesce need a win here and that is all it will take. Novi, talk to me. Hi, Oli. Um, Coalesce, similar story in terms of the player break. Two players leave, two players come in. Uh, instead of taking in two fairly rookie players, they brought in, they opted for experience instead. And you can see the impact that Nixon and Divide have had on this team. It is a complete, you compare, we, we talked about earlier comparing 10 stars like first split to second split and the difference, Coalesce is on a similar meteoric rise. They beat Heroic for crying out loud. Like This team is on such good form and Nixon is the player that's worth shouting out the most because in the interview with KB yesterday, uh, they said, what Ian asked him, why is Nixon so good? Why, what, what makes him so special? And KB said, Nixon works harder than anyone he has ever met before or played with. He wakes up, he lives and breathes Siege. He is looking over VODs. KB was like, I don't even know if he sleeps because he's working so hard. I 
guarantee that Nixon will try his absolute utter hardest to win this game tonight. Well, we'll have to see if the Nixon effect is in full flow. Obviously, in his tenure on Wild, he has seen success um, and then being close to the top. And maybe this is his time um, to to play with these uh, these players and get themselves through. Uh, let's have a look at the map. We need somewhere to play. Let's see. Uh, oh, sorry, where this previous matchup was. Um, fairly decisive, Jerry. I mean. I'm, I'm not going to divide the room. I'm not going to sit here and say it could have gone either way. It's it's pretty one-sided to call us. No, and um, this was, of course, before Reich was in the roster, so that graphic on the left is more likely to be uh, Sepega, I would imagine, um, with the, the, the impact that Riddle had in that game. But it's still just a, a story of... Um, oh, this was actually... Yeah, this was the start of the second split. Sorry, it was Reich. My apologies. Anyway, um, yeah, Coalesce did just do coalesce things and uh, it's strange to say that because that wasn't the coalesce thing at the start of the split this was the result that surprised us and the result that gave us an indication of that newfound structure and maybe riddle were caught a little bit off guard by that you know this was a chalet that came out from them that they had never shown before and so this time around i think it will be a little bit different riddle they have improved coalesce have also improved there's a reason that they finished top eight in the recent eu cl open qualifier so it's still going to be tough, but I I would bet that it may be a closer affair. I remember this game, and I remember it very distinctly because it, the first thing in my mind was, okay, great, you've done it against Riddle, now go and do it against somebody else. And that's what Coalesce have done throughout this second split, is they have done this against other teams. Maybe not 7-1s, but they've been able to go out there and get wins. It's, uh, it's an entirely different team, first split to second, in terms of their results. Let's have a look at where we will be playing here tonight. Are we going to be going back to Chalet, or are we going to mix things up? We are going to go to Bank. I'm actually quite pleased about that. I was low-key dreading three Oregons, Novi. Yeah, oh, three wow. Oregons would have been a bit extreme. But also Bank, you can see Riddle had the option there. Did they go for the rematch in Chalet, or did they play it on Bank? They opted for Bank. Uh, and I'm kind of excited. I think this leans actually leans into their the newer pickups for Ike and Vab's favor. It's a it's a large map. They can play off of each other, most importantly. And we've seen on an individual level, Riddle can work. They do have the firepower. It's working together. Maybe with a bit more space where they can sort of pair off rather than having to coordinate the entire five-man unit as one cohesive being, it might work out in their favor. That being said, Coalesce, they've, they're in the hands of Nixon on bank. A map where a good IGL can absolutely tear the other team to shreds is going to be a tough one. They beat heroic here they beat heroic here 87 if you're gonna take coalesce somewhere this is not really the place to do it i know this is maybe somewhere riddle have been hiding they've banned it all season long but you know if you were gonna show a map you were hiding you would do it at a point where it mattered right they're already auto relegated so i don't know this feels like a bit of desperation and maybe the the possibility of saying you know what we're gonna try and take you on one of your best maps come at me could be looking to go out with a bang, could be hiding, or could just be playing into Coalesce's hands. Whatever it is, we are going to find out right now as we throw this one over to our casters, Whippet and Gibson. Guys, enjoy. Thank you so much, Ollie, Novi, and Jerry. Well, this is it. 18 playdays. This is the final game of play the 18 the final chance for coalesce to stamp that ticket into the next round and whip it as we move into bank our coalesce going to be able to cash that check and make their way to the playoffs i think they've been given they've been handed the golden ticket this is a map they've looked brilliant on as jerry touched on they beat heroic here and mm. they were the first team to get over that hill 10 star victors they done it after and Hero or Coalesce were the first to do it. Riddle, this is not going to be an easy day in the office. And everyone from Eminem probably saw those map bands come out and went, oh, seriously, you went to bank? Oh, it's going to have to be a real heroic one, of course. I do want a little bit of Eminem luck. You see the jersey in the back, right? I can't hide. I love the org. I love the players. But I also love Coalesce. So I'm in two minds with this one. But may the best team get that playoff spot. Eminem have left it all in the hands of Coalesce. And now it's time for them to grab that ticket. We go to bank. 
and for every single viewer at home the number that matters is the number six rainbow six and six rounds for coalesce that is all they need to get any overtime whatsoever will give them some more time inside mpl as they will progress into those playoffs for riddle the whip it this is a very big game for them yes in the grand scale of things you're relegated you're not going to get any further up the table. You're too far away from SSP to make any sort of a difference. But in that first two columns, there are two zeros. No wins, no overtime wins. They want to change that as well. So the, for the pride of the players' riddle, I know they really want to get this one. Oh, absolutely. No one wants to end this season with no wins to your name. So these teams are, I should say, Riddle, they have it all to do now. They want their first win. Will it arrive at the last play day of the season? And if they do it in regulation, that upsets Coalesce. Lots riding on this final game of our group stage for the inaugural season of the MPL, and it will be a very interesting start on bike down to the basement we go and for coalesce look at this lineup it is every single tool you need to have every box on that checklist ticked well what could riddle do to try and disturb that and make it a difficult time well, that Kaid is going to be the difference maker as those hatches become completely, almost impossible to get rid of. You're going to need a twitcher. You need some sort of impact in sight to be able to open them up. And as we look, with well, Legion gives you that intel. Rike will allow Riddle to completely traverse through that map using Oryx. And then Perry will catch those all-important needs on the side of Coalesce. Well, you you said it. Something you said on your very last broadcast. Noah, you said you would back him in any 1v1 against anybody in the world. How hard is it going to be for Riddle to shut him down? It will take a lot of coordination to get rid of Noah. And the thing about Noah that I really want to highlight is you've, you've got my brain now rolling in the Noah hype train once again. He's not on that traditional entry. He's on that flex roll, bringing utility like that sledgehammer, like those nades. But Katal is going to try something very early. A little bit cheeky. Will it work? It might just end. There's Noah. You've got to do something to catch him out. And a spawn peak. Well, wow, that's a good start from Riddle. Well, that is the start as he looks to control out, delete the rest of those members of Coalesce. And well, with Noah down, that is your big, your big fragger. But you've still got Kane. You've still got Zeus. You've got Divided coming in from PG Nats. And let's not forget the glue in this side, which is Nixon. But this is bank windows will become very important. But Qatar will take down Kane as he gets his second kill of the map. We're one minute or less down. And already Riddle starting very strong. Riddle have realized that they have to commit to a pretty aggressive and substantial roam presence. They've not done a lot of setup. There's not a lot of utility, but they're committing to someone fighting entries, making this initial push as awkward as possible for Coalesce. And so far, we've seen a minute go, and Coalesce have lost two players, Kane and Noah. Huge parts of that initial pressure. Divided, though, will be the next to fall. Vab's inside of archives gets a freebie as he'll play around the labyrinth of documents and Another green mine goes off, leaving Nixon to get picked off. Riddle looking huge. And well, Zeus, if you want a quicker reaction, tells you want to win your ones. You get that opening pick to Reich, but a little bit too late to have an impact as he finds himself now left in a one versus four. Requires an ace clutch to get this round for Coalesce. And what a way that would be to start the night. Zeus in a 1v4. He's already got one, but now he needs to isolate. As I like to say, divide and conquer those members of Riddle. Pushing in now. You see those silhouettes off in the distance. The player has no clue where those defenders are. So Zeus will just start making his way through. If he pulls through that rotate, he will make a lot of noise. Vabs is peeking around the side. Zeus is going to peek and he's going to get that one down. So the 1v5 is now down to a 1v3 and slowly but surely whip it. The odds are increasing. 
But the clock this is against them. Slowly increasing, Gibson. But don't give me hope. Don't give me <laughs> any energy as he'll be met by an onslaught of rounds up above him on that hatch. And there's Perry emerges from the dining room to claim that soul. Riddle, start off strong. Get themselves the opening round here on Bank. But we did see a similar story against Ambush yesterday. Riddle came out of the gate swinging. And once drop position right into them, they began to fall apart. But this bomb peak by Katara, exactly what you need to do to impose your will. An awkward fight and archives are divided. And, well, leaving Zeus all alone in a 1v5. He was able to get one, we get two. Couldn't make it three, four, five. So, good start from Riddle. They'll go upstairs to CEO now. And this is the site I'd expect them to lose. This is a difficult site to hold. It's been the primary for many years, so everyone okay, tends to understand the intricacies very well. I will keep your eye on what type of roam presence they'll do. Will they commit downstairs? And we have an Aruni in play as well. So watch all of these long line of sights. All these lanes constantly get pressured, constantly get caught at all as it will be a very difficult thing to clear with the amount of utility the rest of this team will provide. And that wall that's just being reinforced by Kevin as well, over by Kanto, by the elevators, is so important to this defense because if you can keep that wall solid and you can keep your eyes looking down the corridor, that Medics is just giving us that panoramic view of you've got such a powerful position. The shield in position as well makes it even more powerful. But the one place with it that this whole it's a little bit, you know, can be a little bit unraveled as the push in through ATMs as that player playing Kanto will be forced to look the other way. But that normally happens much later in the round. Coalesce, make it inside the first 15 seconds of the round, not taking any casualties. So that's an improvement on last time. But Whippets, Coalesce, how is your metal? How is your nerve? This, this is essentially one of the biggest games these players have ever played. I mean, you gotta consider everything in the grand scheme of things. This team, this roster in the first split looked a little bit shaky, a little bit unsure of themselves. Perry has created one of the most evil angles I've ever seen. <laughs> yep. If someone gets caught by that one, that is, well, that's Tough. a shame on you. That is disgusting. I don't think anyone will walk into that one. But Cole, that's a team that is really on the bounce right now. Those massive roster moves coming in, divided and Nixon, have helped this team find that potential. But now, playoffs. One game away, one point away, just six rounds they need against get get against Riddle. Don't even need to win this game. But can they do it so far? Riddle making it a little bit of a puzzle to solve. And they haven't found a solution to even start putting pressure directly with this entire external take. No one's inside the building and Riddle, you can just sit and wait. You know this pressure's not arriving. It is slow from Coalesce, but this is a best of one, best of one bedlam, as we would like to say. The LMG is going to work now through those windows from Banana Hallway, and all of those defenders fall back. Look at that meeting right now. Well, they're having a little meeting of their own, and will they be met with force as they push through the window? Those Kiba barriers coming in clutches. They do some work, and Zeus this time finds the open and kill on to Perry. And now, will they put it to work? Divided, sneaking in through. But that Malusi is going to pop on off. And that'll give away the position. So pre-fires again. Kane sneaking up the stairs. Divided is going to take down Vabs. And is Kane going to find the next one? Well, he spots him out. Divided will flush it and whip it in this 5v2. Coalesce have a chance to pull it back. We're making a four versus one now. Reich will find one of his own, but Yusuf will do even more damage. Guitar now slain. Reich very much cornered. He's got no way out. Nixon shuts it down. And Coalesce get themselves level. And that is what we expect from this side. No early spawn peak. No early bedlam on the room clear. Simple, clean, perfect execution. That's what Coalesce are known for in this second split. And that's what we saw. Riddle. Now find themselves level, and now got a little bit of a taste of why maybe you didn't want to bring Coalesce to bank. This game is going to be a roller coaster of emotions for three teams, Eminem, Coalesce, and Riddle. And they all want to just ride it. Riddle, of course, they want their first win. Attackers and whip us. You know, they can. not to say that there's a result that would suit most of the sides. But if Riddle could get their first win in overtime, Coalesce go through, Riddle get the win. 
However, if Riddle just won this in regulation, we say goodbye, good night to Coalesce and Eminem. Well, they somehow will make their way through after what's been a disappointing second split. Oh. This is what I love right now about the MPL. <laughs> yeah. We are down to not only the final play day of the groups, the final game of the final play day, and there is still all this up in the air. Will Riddle get their first win? Will we see Coalesce get that final spot? Or will Eminem, who had the chance to claim it earlier against Heroic, have to wait or sit and wait to see the outcome of this one? Can you get any better siege? I don't think so. Outside of EUL, of course. So... We see ourselves beginning to roll into this round, and we hop on board with Noah for the time being. He's had a quiet game so far, not quite hitting the mark. Hasn't got rolling in terms of kills yet, but I imagine they'll start flowing as we progress deeper into this matchup. Yeah, well, we could, we could just uh, put it up to the caster curse. We singled him out for a little bit of praise, and he got spawn peaked about 10 seconds later. But now we're inside 30 seconds of this round, as bullets are going to be started to spray, but there is a little puzzle ahead of Coalesce. They want to take the site. But the tech open area, you must control the top floor. Reich is there, and he is waiting. And Reich, of course, is a player that I think he's coming late. He came in and split two with it, but he has proven he is more than capable of playing at this level. Katarl, another player who has at times shown what he is capable of. He opens it up with that first kill again, and, well... A little bit of deja vu, because once again it is Noah that will fall to Qatar. Oh my, oh my, I think the caster curse might be strong with this one, but a good start <laughs> once again from Riddle. Finding the early pick, no trade from Coalesce. Sounds very familiar, will we see a nightmare inside of Archives? Reich is going to have to bear down an LMG, and Kevin will find one, the cane. Five versus three, a minute 30 left, and well, Reich will find himself deep, you know. No think of the defense side to get him back in the fight, but they're gonna play around his body and try and bait for the extra pick. And Nixon will get caught out doing so. Kevin finds a second in the round, and things are looking very dangerous for Coalesce in our third round. Riddle in fantastic form, but can they close it out? Can they close it out indeed? They've got the numerical advantage, but Divided has the LMG. Zeus is going to find one, but he gets traded instantly, leaving it all down to Divided. And well, there you have it. Another round win for Riddle. As we go back to 2 1, we said this is a roller coaster and whip it. It is. We have gone up and down and up again. And well, who is going to be at the summit by the end of this climb? Every round, Riddle will get themselves closer and closer to this one. You can just imagine all the boys from Eminem Academy are cheering them on with everything they've got, giving them every bit of power and will that they can summon through their screens and team speak. Coalesce, when they don't get the time to set up that perfect pinpoint execution and they get pressured, you start to see some cracks. Qatar has found that several times by getting that pick to Noah so far. And this isn't to single anyone out, but losing someone so early and someone who is as influential in the later round as Noah is a massive blow for a team like Coalesce. So when you look at how they want to change this to get more pressure on your attacking side, you've got to try and get your entries to be a little bit more effective. Otherwise, Riddle might start start to get a lot of rounds. You don't really want to be on the back foot considering the stakes of this matchup is. You definitely don't. This is in or out, all or nothing for Coalesce. And believe you me, they understand that situation. They're going to one of their favorite maps in bank. And so far, will Riddle have hit back hard? Maybe Riddle should have played bank a little bit more this season and they would have had more joy. But it is all down to this next three minutes, which we'll see which side gets Gets a little extension lead. Will Coalesce pull it back to 2-2? Two -two? Will Riddle get two, lead, two rounds in the lead? Well, I am getting flashbacks to old school Siege right now with this push whipping. Straight in, through tunnel, Monty leading the way. Is this, is this 2020? It seemingly is. It looks like we went through a time machine, but they've committed so much to this Rome presence that there's nothing even looking towards this push. Kevin will have some information, but the beepers and that banshee will go off, so now they know. But this Rome presence is to deny this exactly. They're waiting on someone to waltz on in and try and set this plant up. With that hatch open, they can put direct pressure on. Nixon can stand menacingly and provide some cover, but they all have this set up very well. Riddle are just waiting to pull that trigger. They have everything loaded for that retake. 
They do, but Zeus is going to put down that Osa shield, which will provide another line of sight for when Perry eventually gets tempted to push. Nixon is going to push that aggressive button. He's pushing F. He's in sight. The diffuser goes down. And in a 5v5, make that 5v4. Noah gets off the mark. Coalesce in position. Kane's going to take out Qatar. 35 seconds on the clock. And Will Whip it. Time is against them. The numbers are against them. And it is flawless. Oh my God, my voice. It is flawless inside this <laughs> round as I lose my voice the same way that Riddle lost the round. I mean, give it a second or third take. Whatever it takes, yeah. that, that's what we need to get that play-by-play -play out, Gibson. But very well done by Coalesce. Now, even though Riddle had the strategy set up to try and stop exactly that... They just didn't pull the trigger. The plant goes down. A lot of that's going to be, of course, down to Nixon on the reverse plant with the shield on his back, meaning it's very difficult to deny that without smoke, smoke toxic canisters or a nitro cell. They have no real way, no real answer to it. And when that case went down, they all panicked just a little bit and it led to a flawless round from Coalesce. And I will say that is a pretty fitting way to describe it. It was perfect. Every single moment of it. We went to old school. We went back to 2020 like we spoke about. And Monty just pushed in the site. But it was 2020 with a modern twist. Osa providing the cover. And that is now twice in two play days, Whip it, that we have seen Osa have massive impacts and rounds. And really, Osa comes into her own, I feel, getting ready for that execute or right at the moment of execution. When you have your own version of a defensive shield with 100% visibility, well, you can just toy and play with the enemy. Oh, th this map in particular, it, there's always an example from the Sweden Major, and I'll always talk about how good Osa is, or it could have been SI, I, I can't quite remember, it's been so long, but it was actually Dan Von Kia on this exact map, used Osa to devastating effect, setting up crossfires, it took a lot of coordination to do, but essentially put them in always win situations and that's how good osa is at locking down these positions and when banks full of long line of sights it is a very useful offer to have in your back pocket nixon will do once a very similar thing once again will walk straight into security and he'll scout out what he's facing with now this time riddle have some protection he have some people ready to fight for it but looks like coalesce have run into that and they're gonna try and set up a top down clear but that's gonna be a bit of a problem kevin's found one on the nixon early and that is the Monty down, but I saw what they were trying to achieve. They were trying to bait the attack, or bait the defense with that attack coming through dirt with the rest of the players pushing in. Qatar finds another one. He is having a really impressive day so far as he moves now onto five and two. Divided on the top floor, Kane will take down Perry though, as we're inside the minute. We're almost at that minute and a half mark. Divided, tossing more utility. Coalesce, they don't have the numbers. But they still have the diffuser. Vabs makes it a little bit more difficult as he just pixels away the head of Kane. Noah will get a trade almost instantaneously though. One minute and 30 seconds left and it's a 3v2. Our riddle gonna pull another round on defense. Reich is in a very good position, backed up with Vabs as well. They have a crossfire to cover each other. They know someone's in there. They know Noah's in a very close... Nope, he's, he's, gone, he's run away now. Cast Curse strikes once again. But they're in a very good position to cause instant chaos. Reich can swing without the metal detectors going off and reading into it. And he's got his trade there. I have a feeling Noah might just run into that block in the moment he considers or even thinks about dropping this hatch. And that might be the only way Coalesce have to win this round. They now know Vabs is there. They now know at least one player is here because the drone just got tucked out and they'd sent deep but caught by the ADS and with 45 seconds left to go call us left with very few options other than send it on in and divided he's just gonna burn away and that will be a final cut with a trade of vabs Coalesce suffer yet another round loss riddle looking very strong on the defense here on bank Oh, this is so much like last night from Riddle. They're so good in the early rounds, but can they convert that into that win that not only them, but Eminem are just praying for? It is so fun to be in a game where there's three dogs in the race in the last one of the night. 
And well, this is the last defense that we're going to see from Riddle as well. And we're going to staff and open area. And once again, this is a site where having control of that top floor is key to any execute that you're going to try to attempt. And whip it, looking at the setup that they've gone for. Well, Zeus is a little bit sick of the antics that Qatar has been putting down. Oh, well, never mind. He's going to change to Havana. I thought we were going to get to see Jackal. But, you know, this is the thing. With the fact that operators can change their attack on the fly now during the drone phase, it makes it a little bit easier. Look, Whippet, he's gone back to Jackal again. I give up. <laughs> this is everything you want to say. They're trying to do the exact opposite of it. But the Jackal mm -hmm. is a very good choice here. Uh, I'm sure you would have touched on it as well before you had to talk about this, the new <laughs> repick. But they just got the skylight. You can essentially put your goggles on and you'll see footprints. That will read into if there is a roam. You can get a very good idea if someone's went upstairs. Now, you're going to be expecting it. Control once again going for a spawn peek. An attempted one this time. Won't get caught out. We'll get full information on him and he'll run away, leaving plenty of footprints upstairs upstairs if they do want to clear him with the assistance of that jackal held by Zeus. But well, that's a lot of presence on the northern side. I think those are start repelling up and they'll really get themselves ready for execution onto this CEO office. That's where they want to make their entryway. That's what they want to clear because there's a lot of defensive pressure from Riddle on this top floor. They're just making it as difficult as possible for Coalesce to enter the building, and that's half, half the battle. Stalling them at the early stages can have such a big impact. Zeus will start opening up those windows as players get themselves on those repels to catch out those defenders. The alibi will give away the position of Noah, so, you know, like an intelligent player that he is, he will pre-fire the spot for a couple of seconds to catch out a defender who may get a bit thirsty, but Reich is holding that angle towards ATM. There's a little bit of strafe work, a little bit of dancing being done by Kane. And now support comes in. Nixon, Volson, and Kane could be about to get outnumbered because Jackal is going to scan and he is going to send those hounds on the way. Kane takes a little bit of fire, but he's still in spot. Noah getting ready to swing into elevator, but Reich takes him down. And whip it, he is now holding that spot, but it's a 4v3. Everything is exploding into a hail of gunfire upstairs. Zeus looks like going to Qatar. We find ourselves now in a three versus three. A very chaotic moment of chaos with both of these teams coming off wounded and broken. Who can lick their wounds a little bit quicker and get themselves back in the fight? Just over a minute left to work with. Wallace in a good position to try and make an execution work. Lost some key utility though, Sledge and Yana, so both nades, four grenades no longer available. A Grismot sent in to try and gather some raw information as they will push in the archives. The Labyrinth, the Maze, will they spot the first player? It'll be a scrappy fight through the casing, but no, Kevin gets it and shuts down Divided. Problems continue to grow, but there is a trade from Nixon. They need this to start spewing in quickly as they only have 40 seconds to make this stick. Two versus two, 40 seconds to go. Can coalesce? Split it at 3 3, or will Riddle take that 4 2 lead? Jackal on the hunt once more, looking for some feet, some toes, anything that will give them the advantage in a dogfight. And there you go. There is your first ping. And Nixon is being sent to work after, but still no kill has been found. 15 seconds left. Third and final until ping. Both players giving away. Perry gets one. Nixon gets the trade. And well, there's just one player left, and it's Vabs, and Vabs will clutch it out as well. And do we have the upset of upsets on the cards as Riddle take a 4-2 lead into the half? That is so impressive from Riddle. The way they're playing, the confidence is so high right now. But the big asterisk is as on the defense. It is much easier to defend than it is to attack. Can they do the same on the offensive side? Or will Coalesce just lock it out? Difficult to tell right now, but that is a very impressive start. Very impressive opening half here. And you know, everyone from the camp of Eminem Academy are cheering. They are sitting with bated breath as every round for Riddle is another step closer to their ticket to playoffs. I just can't get over how good Riddle have looked in this one. This is statistically the worst team in NPL. Putting 
probably one of the most improved teams in MPL to the sword. If you take 10 stars, 9 and 0, oh, second split out of it, will coalesce. They are right up there with the form of teams right now, and well, Riddle is putting them to the sword. We spoke about which of these teams could cash the check to get the win. Well, as of right now, Coalesce's check is starting to bounce. To locate a bomb and defuse it. it is. They've walked in. It's been declined. Everyone in the line in the bank behind them is looking concerned. As to what's going on here? Coalesce, show us a sign of life. And on the defense, you might just have that opportunity. Riddle, though. Questions to be asked here on the offensive side. It will take just a little bit more cohesion, a little bit more strategy to break down Coalesce, or at least on paper it will. Confidence a key factor. Momentum, another one as well, and Riddle seemingly have all of that on their side. Can they get even more pressure? Can they put Coalesce in a worse position? Already starting to clear towards his blue stairs. The ADS is getting burnt away. And now that nade will arrive, clearing the shield. Vita will toss that. They haven't burnt the shield yet. Finally, they do. A second one for good measure catches just a little bit of damage onto him, but he'll creep forward with that shotgun and burn away a second smoke canister. As I'd imagine, he'll be likely to make a mistake or a retreat as that hatch is now being cracked open above him. The hatch is open. Verticality is starting to be established as they put all the pieces in place to execute this attack. It's still a five versus five situation. Vabs drops down. Reich and Vabs have really had an impact on the site since they have joined as Qatar will just sprint on in and whip it. If you're seeing what I'm seeing and what Qatar is seeing, you've almost got a free entry in. But you got to be careful of open area hatch. One minute and 36 seconds left on the round. Nixon falls back and he's going to start that defense that we saw in APAC with a drop into Chanka back in and just burning those feet of anyone who tries to enter. This is set up nicely. That will be a very good strategy. They need to keep the Chanka alive. Nixon is a very key part of this strategy. Zeus will be live droning for the Jaeger of Noah upstairs, trying to have that flank impact. Just now, a minute left in this round. And there is Riken. That's Nixon. That's your Shamika launcher. That's your incendiary. You're now relying on the Yokai drones. Your primary plant denial. And that's not going to be too easy. No one in a good position. He might just catch one to Habana, and that's the case. It's gone cold. And now Noah has the keys to the round with the diffuser down. And he can cause even more damage. As Zeus will collect one on the right. Noah finds a second. And Coalesce have found their stride. They have got absolutely no answer in this round for the work that Coalesce have been put down. Vabs still opening things up. The Jackal goes there, Vabs absolutely annihilates Noah though eventually, bringing us back to a 2v2. Look at the HPs, Kane and Vabs are full, Zeus and Kevin, they are low, and now it is time to execute, but with a C4 in the hands of Kane, he throws it, he blows it, and that is now a 2v1, but the Diffuser goes down, Vabs dips back into cover, it's a 1 versus 2 for the round win, Riddle desperately looking to go a Three rounds ahead, three fire around the corner, and that will be the kill from Kane and Coalesce. Well, it was close, but they pull a round back. Very, very critical round to get back from Coalesce. Really want to give credit to that Rome presence of Noah. That case going cold right there on Perry. That really made Riddle work for what they got. Good recovery to get to this position. Well, he started trying to get the case down, but ultimately, two versus one. Well, after that, C4 denied the cover. He had no real solution for it. Absolutely well played there. I am on the edge of my seat, Whippet, and I don't even have skin in the game. I'm just a caster, but this has got me so excited because this has been one. Not only has this been one of the best games of the night, I'm going to say this has been one of the tensest games of the season so far, considering what's on the line. We are going to open area, though, for this second defensive attempt from Coalesce. This round in the bag will see them draw level at four rounds apiece. As it stands with but Coalesce are three rounds away from the playoffs. I I'm honestly sitting here almost holding my breath. It is 
this is the matchup we wanted it to be. When you look at this and you see, okay, cool, that's a team on the rise on the resurgence versus Riddle already on a relegated. Who would have seen this scoreline? Who would have seen this intensity as it all boils over as the final play day of our group stage begins to draw to a close? Still no decided spot or no decided team for that final spot in playoffs. Coalesce, Rem and M, still all hangs in the balance of this matchup on Riddle. It's all down to them, realistically. Riddle in a brilliant position. They've got a one round lead. And this is getting very close to their first win, but Coalesce just one behind there on defense. Riddle have to do all the work. You have to dismantle the defense that's been put in front of you. Qatar is just looking to spot that intel. Look where the defenders are. Whip at this. These are the tense moments of the round. This is where Riddle are doing their best to work out where they're at their strongest, where they're at their weakest, and where you can identify any situation to get a, a 2vx, a 3vx, something to give yourself that lead in the numbers game. They've got a ping. And will Nixon fall back? Yes, he does. He drops it back in towards Trump. And with a minute and 50 left on this round, it's a, a lot of action, with, but no kills yet. A lot of posturing and jockeying mm -hmm. from app control right now from Riddle. To get met by that first toxic canister sent off as Divider will eat a little bit of punishment for his efforts. Minute 35, no opening picks, and no solid control either. They'll finally get something though. Noah left in deep, you know. They don't know this, they don't have any live information. And if he gets recovered off of this, you're really gonna have to ask questions. The Yana clone gets some information. Noah's gonna try and drop the hatch, but it will be a numbers game. Oh. Second nade, prime the ready. That's gonna get sent straight to the back of side. As he has a yellow ping on the player all the way by Kanto. Guitar will pick up that one. Noah will get a second trade off on the Vabs. Four versus four as Noah's been recovered. The res has come in, but those two defenders, Nixon and Noah, well, a sneeze would take them down again or flush them out. Qatar, LaPerry, Kevin and Reich on the hunt. This is a massive opportunity for them to take another round. They got the diffuser down last time, but it was too, or it was not enough with the 2v1. Kevin putting down those cameras and whoop it. This is the big part. Vabs straight onto the camera. We see this too often where the, the player who is dead does not sit on cameras, does not give intel. This is better by Riddle. Even if they don't win this round, it's a positive step from what we've seen over the rest of MPL. They can certainly still will win this round though, but they have to make it a little bit sharpish. 20 seconds remain. Reich will find some information and he'll find one pick to Nixon. He'll look for a second as they try and trade him, but now everyone from Riddle drops in, gets into the action. Guitar will get one, but Zeus and Divided find a piece each, leaving Divided the wall alone. A C4 sent to that wall and it will claim Guitar. The case is cold and the clock winds down. Coalesce draws themselves level how how did they draw level on that round what but the diffuser plant it. go get it plant it oh this is the time they're taking a tactical timeout and they need it because riddle should have a 5-3 lead right now and m and m they are kicking themselves. They're watching this game. They know that the coalesce. They're just building rounds. They're building momentum as it stands two rounds away. And whoop it. Looking at how many rounds we're going to get to play, there is every chance now that coalesce can just squeeze two more rounds out of this one. Both teams look like they can certainly make mistakes that they can capitalize on. That's what Riddle might be hoping for, but that really should have been around for them. The case going cold, just unfortunate, and the C4 used to rotate through that castle bar, getting a pick as well. You've got a feel for that one. They wouldn't have known that at the time, but when they look back at this VOD, that one will just hurt a little bit. Sting, perhaps, but Riddle, much better from them. Very strong performance. Still some questions to be asked, but right now, you need to keep the pressure on, you need to keep fighting Coalesce, otherwise, this could get into a very tricky position fast if they let the next two rounds slip. 4-4, four, four, whip it. 4-4 four, four after eight rounds. This is on a knife edge, and if I look back, I think Riddle, 
They had a two round lead. Coalesce have just chipped away at it. They've eked away at it. They're starting to build that bank balance, but will they have enough in their account at the end of the day to cash it in? and make their way through to the playoffs. Well, we're very close to finding out. We're going to the ground floor once more, and... Well, but, you know, we, we mainly focus on the shooty-shooty, gunny-gunny part of this game when you and I cast together, <laughs> but... What I love about these two ground floor sites, the setup is identical for both, normally. You, you play top floor, you open up a couple of lines, a line sight and rotates in through. If you can play one of these sites, you can defend the other as well. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little asterisk on it. Ooh. They're not they're not exactly the same in terms of setup. You're gonna want to have a lot more focus on really holding upstairs because the verticality will clear this site, and you don't really want to play too much in open area because that rotation leaves you very exposed once that area falls. I think they'll have a little bit of pressure there, some mobility around that position. But open area might give them a very direct avenue if Riddle can spot that one out. We see one blue silhouette of Coalesce down below. Might be a problem later on if they stumble in towards it as Vabs tries to peer down Marvel stairs to catch someone napping, but no one has decided to. They are sleeping back down on the staircase yet. Not yet, but maybe soon. It's still a little bit bright outside to be going for that nap, but Vabs begins the drone work and they spot out Nixon playing just by the top of those banana stairs. Vab's looking through that skylight. Sometimes if you get lucky, you can get a freebie and he's going to full send it as he repels down into main lobby. And this is a big boy play. And we'll see how it works out. Not very often, <laughs> often but we see players going on repel in main lobby. Not, not too, not too common at this level. Maybe Gibson, <laughs> if you, uh, maybe if you join Orelo, you'll see a little bit of that one. But it's gonna be interesting. If you get caught by this one, you are gonna be unhappy. But Nixon will go fishing, and so will Katarl. An instantaneous trade, one for one. Ned landed perfectly. That rappel, to no one's surprise, didn't work out at all. Very audible, very readable. Zeus will hear that shield, that Austin shield, getting placed very nearby. He will look to try and contest or be aware that his angle is now held. That will be Kevin. Case in hand and looks like Riddle. Very direct push. Lots of lobby pressure for now. And they haven't cleared upstairs that well. Well, the fastest way to any destination is in a straight line. And it looks like Riddle are preparing to do that. Qatar is still looking for those roamers. There's only one left on the top floor. As the rest of Coalesce have dropped into sight. Noah gets the ping. Spots out Finka, who is checking out her toes. And he sprays down towards the Anna as well. Qatar taking a lot of damage. But Noah is going to go prone in behind the, de the meeting desk. And there's another player pushing up through Trump. Kevin's going to trade it out. It's a 3v3 with 30 seconds left and are we going to see that 20 second meta coming into full force riddle don't want to be here they don't want to have they don't want that to push with 20 seconds left but that's the only option they've got left and they only got two doorways to do it as well they'll stack up they'll get ready but coalesce they're evenly prepared divided gets one to parry and riddle now find themselves fighting a losing battle zeus will get one more divided claims guitar coalesce now find themselves in the lead on bank and one round away from booking their ticket to the playoffs that was another roller coaster round again, though. Coalesce, as you said, one round from making it to the playoffs. They are a side that have improved ma massively since split number one. The changes have worked out perfectly. And Riddle, well, they have only got one or two more shots to get their first win. It is 5-4. It is bank. It is play day 18. It is the final game of the season. And our Coalesce about to put the final nail in the coffin of Eminem and their hopes of making the playoffs. It all comes down to a one round situation. Eminem Academy, you are sitting with bated breath. Every second that now passes, you may go closer to not making it to that coveted playoff spot. Once again, Coalesce will do a very similar, the exact same strategy again. For their basement defense, denying or relying on that plant denial. If Riddle opt to try and get that case down with both an Echo as a Chonka and a Smoke in play, as well as Goyo, will not be a very fun time indeed. Lots of utility to clear. 
more or less poised to get themselves that ticket to playoffs. Well, that ticket is being printed right now, but is there enough ink? We will find out. Well, within the next six to seven minutes, because Coalesce have two attempts at the minimum to secure their spot into that next round. Riddle, two rounds now. They need to win back to back, and Noah's going to find the opener onto Guitar. And that is the first hammer onto that nail. There's a couple more to go. Four more swings, and we will see Riddle out, and we will see Coalesce through to those playoffs. Zeus doing the drone work and what i love about coalesce whip it is when they get that open and pick they all reposition themselves they all move and it makes it so difficult for riddle to play the trade game riddle need to find something they need to find that trade but as you say coalesce are just making it so difficult to do so haste recovered by perry Michael will try and be the tip of the spear to find something find an answer but for coalesce they will play this very safe at this stage they now know they have the keys. They have themselves a very good shot right here, right now, at locking it out. All they must do is play the time. Play that clock and look at the utility they have available to try and stop a plant in the dying embers of this matchup. That's what they will rely on. That's what they want to do and divided. It might cause a little bit of chaos, but that's Zeus. That's your echo. That got caught out early. Vabs will get burnt away as the Shamika launcher sends some up high. Nixon will get very aggressive, push forward now, and Riddle will be getting to feel the pinch of Coalesce. Well, that is the opener. That gets it back to a 4-4 four, four and just leaves that, that door a little bit more ajar for that Riddle win. But you pointed it out, time is the enemy. Coalesce are the enemy. And your only ally, well, they're not even in the server right now. They're watching from home, waiting to see what happens. Hatches being opened as the members of Riddle looks like they're potentially going to go for that deep sight drop. And that'll completely neutralize Nixon's position in by that window. The drones are going out. The players are being spotted. And whip it with 30 seconds to go. Coalesce, this is your chance to stamp that ticket. They might just be able to do that quickly. Is That's going to be Noah looks to get aggressive on the main stairs, but thinks better of it. Rather to stay alive and passive and fight another day. 20 seconds and Riddle once again. The clock will be their nemesis. Divider will take a beating. In drops right for Slain with the SMG 11. And it will be a flurry, but a two versus two. Perry will have to recover that case, but Kane shuts it down. M&M's hopes right on Vobs. What can he do? Nothing. Shut down. Nixon sends his team to playoffs and to match point on bank and how fitting is it that nixon is the player to get the kill to get them the match point they needed to qualify for the playoffs the redemption arc of coalesce is complete as they that was the main part of this game getting the six rounds the game is, is whatever happens from this point on coalesce do not care they're in seventh heaven they're in the playoffs they've met their objective and we can breathe oh i mean <laughs> it's already time to, to start saying commiserations mm -hmm. academy unfortunate that it wasn't in their hands this evening but that is coalesce hunched in they outperformed m&m on today so congratulations to them but they still have one more round to find against riddle and Riddle get themselves closer to the very first this time would be overtime with victory It'll be a very difficult task indeed. I'm sure they'll want to close out the season on somewhat of a high Couldn't send Cole S home. Let's see if they can get that victory well, victory hunting is the challenge now. Coalesce, will they ease things off? Are they happy with what they have? Or do they want to just completely finish off the regular season in style with a big W beside their name? Riddle, can you get this round? There's two match points now for Coalesce. One round from Riddle here will guarantee that we'll play everything in regulation. But there's just a very anticlimactic feel now. Coalesce have met their targets. Riddle are going to hop up on those windows. And, you know, LMGs on bank windows. It's absolutely terrifying, Whippet. <laughs> yeah, they can dispense a whole lot of hate downrange and just try and keep people at bay. Those box magazines are 
Sometimes they feel like they're endless whenever you're on the receiving end of one of those spray downs. We'll put lots of pressure on Cole Aston when they don't want to be too keen to inv invoke the wrath of the window players. Vaps have been excellent so far as well. He'll queue up outside of stock, but looks like it's going to be a very direct push outside from Riddle. Met by these prone angle holes. They haven't got solid information yet. They know one player is in janitor. Smoke counter tossed out to delay this push. Vaps will send an aid to chase it. It will clear the shield, but not the player. Noah will continue to exist, and he will brawl up close and personal, and the cover is there. Divided pops up and claims Vab's soul. Riddle find themselves taking an early casualty. Minute 45 left to work. One minute and 45 seconds. Could it be the last one minute and 45 of NPL's inaugural season? Nixon is prone just on the top of gold stairs. He's going to hear the barbed wire. He shoots out the drone, revealing his position. Perry gets himself locked <gasps> horns with Noah, but Noah swings and takes down Perry and Katarl. It's a 5v2. This is a coalesce game. But Reich might have something else to say about it. He finds Nixon from behind. That LM G ensures the fact that he does not have to reload, but he will have to re-engage every single member of Coalesce. It is a one versus four. Reich chasing the ace just to bring this to the final game of regulation. And whip it. All of this work, and it's not even sight. This is just top floor. That is a struggle with these large extended roams. You commit everything to it, and you don't even get a single foot close to sight itself. Case is cold. From what I could do, I'd imagine they'll get one or two, but too much pressure from Coalesce. They won't peek him. They'll sit. They'll wait. They'll be well regimented, well structured, and patient. They'll try and send an aid down, but he's got no real solution. He's going to be forced to brute force it with that LMG. Two stims in his back pocket if he needs them. Only 25 seconds, though. He won't have time for them. He'll find one to Noah. Second kill for Reich this round. Might be able to get a third. But every second he wastes is a critical one, but upstairs he will get caught out. The revive won't save him. Divided swings, and that is Coalesce taking victory over Riddle in regulation. The only the one point, they found three. If I had a time machine and I took you back to the start of Split 2 and I said Coalesce would cinch the playoffs in the final day of the season, you would have told me that I am absolutely mad. You would have told me that I wouldn't be allowed to cast anymore. You would have told me that I'm deluded. But whip it. Coalesce have done it. They won everything that was in their path almost. They took down Heroic. They took down Riddle. This is the storyline their of, spots. This is the storyline of this uh, of this second split to me is the fact that OLS have made such a, a recovery from what was looking to be dire straits in the first split to an absolute turnaround. Divided Nixon coming in and what a change this roster has went through. They have become one of the most potent sides and it's all down to that change of mentality, that change of structure. They are really going to be a team to keep your eye out as we move to the best of threes in our playoffs. But massive congratulations to them. And of course, commiserations to Eminem Academy who, well, they lose their seat at the ta table of playoffs. Yeah, congratulations to everybody who has made it through to the finals of the playoffs. Commiserations to SSP, Eminem Academy and Riddle as their seasons have also now ended. But it has been a long road. It has been an exciting road. And Whippets... As we jump back into that duo cam for the last time this season, it has been one absolutely fantastic one. That was a fantastic game, and I feel like I feel like I joined MPL at the right time. You certainly did. You got that shot. You got your <laughs> debut just as everything heated up as we got to our fantastic conclusion. But that is the last. Play day of this group stage, and what a way to conclude it. The final ticket punch to our playoffs. It goes to Coalesce, and realistically, I don't think there's a more deserving team to get to the playoffs just off the effort they put into getting better. And the thing is, it was a massive team <laughs> effort to really, really get themselves back up because it was looking pretty poor in the opening split for them. It really was, but you saw them over the you saw them over the cha the Challenger League quals. They were very good then too. They they knocked out a couple of very good teams on their way. But look, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're speaking about CL again. We've got playoffs ahead, and we've got a couple of folks back on the desk who really want to bite their teeth into that one. So let's throw it back. 
Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Gibson, throwing back to yourself there, as you are actually going to magically rejoin. Um, we did unfortunately have to say goodbye to Novi a little bit earlier on. He didn't have an Eminem jersey, so he wasn't allowed to stay. Uh, Gibson, you got the fortune there to cast that game. Me and Jerry were sat in the sidelines. Ha well, at least I was hanging on every single round that Riddle got, but it just wasn't enough in the end, was it? Oh, um, we'll go to Jerry. <laughs> yeah, I let's think go. Let's go. Let's go to Jerry. Maybe Gibbs, right, Gibson's used his mic quota for the day. I think that must be what it is. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's decided he doesn't get to talk anymore. Um, <laughs> we were yeah. watching that game, Jerry, and there, there was a lot of oh, I need to go and rewatch that. I need to, you know, and we were going back and scrubbing the scrubbing mm -hmm. the vod to so get some sort of live action replays for ourselves. Um, not maybe the exciting game that we wanted to end on, but Riddle showed a little bit of promise, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, there was so much improvement from them over the season, and the improvement that we really remarked on yesterday carried forward today. They were so good on their defensive half, really making sure that they converted those rounds. They gained the opening frag in four of them and won all four of those, and that's been their biggest problem this season. So you cannot say that they haven't improved as a result of playing against these really high quality teams, as a result of improving their roster. And it's just a shame that, you know, from yesterday to tomorrow, the same problems persisted as well. You know, they couldn't close out any of those uh, crucial attacks. Unfortunately, Coalesce just a little bit too tough on the defense. But it is a season that, despite not picking up a win, I feel as though Riddle can be proud of for having improved and having learned and having gotten that experience. And all of these players, whether they stay or depart, will have very promising careers going forward i would i would wager yeah i'm sure it's it's a remarkable turnaround you know you look back to what to coalesce were able to do in in sort of the first split if you will of npl um they got the dq win against navi and they got one of the win against arctic since then they've come into the second split and they've absolutely skyrocketed gibson they did. Stocks were on the rise. Not, you know, quite the opposite of cryptocurrency. I think they're, uh, you know, you know, we talk about things that are related, but they're <laughs> they're not really they're not really related. Well, crypto dropped and Coalesce's stocks went on the rise, and <laughs> you got to give a lot of love to those two boys coming in from PG Nats because they brought structure. And as Whippet would talk to you a lot, Jerry, I know that you've said it a good few times as well. Noah was one of the best one-on-one -on -one gunners in all of MPL. And to see him get the structure put around him for him to succeed, well, everyone's going to love it except for Eminem. Yeah, and he yeah. finished this game top of the leaderboard 12 and 9. Like that's mm. that just says a lot, right? He he's he is that player that they want to enable and it's it's made a big difference having that structure around him like you say. You've got to give it to Katal as well. Honestly, that may be one of his best performances of the season. 3 and 1 on the opening kills to deaths and and he, he you know, bless him, it just didn't work around him. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Riddle just fighting till the end. Even though nothing mattered, even though nothing matters about this game, you yeah. have to respect the fight that they put up you really do uh, we've got an interview lined up with k and b i can talk a little bit more about the fight that they come up against in the server uh k and b welcome to the npl broadcast you look pretty pleased with yourself and so you should be you've locked in playoffs now yes feels good we had one mission we made it now it's next step next step absolutely you've got to always be looking forward to that next leap and that next uh, next part of the uh, the game that you want to try and conquer um in terms of going into tonight i know that there was uh, maybe a little bit of excitement when eminem lost against heroic earlier on it made your path to the playoffs a little bit smoother did that relieve any pressure on this final game our coach forced us to not uh, have any social media songs we didn't know until we ended the game <laughs> we wow. played it that way so uh the way, i, just I mean that's a really it. good way to play it definitely that's, otherwise um, you get in your own head impressive. you know like yeah they get the point or two and then all of a sudden fuck we're at overtime oh no sorry. Uh, we're at overtime <laughs> um yeah you understand but yeah it, it felt felt good in the end knowing that you made playoffs at least 
I mean, that, that takes, um, I mean, I'm a nightmare for, for a quick scroll on social every now and then. So that takes a lot of, yeah. uh, a lot of dedication there to, to not spoil it for yourselves and just to keep yourselves in the zone. But it clearly paid off. Um, speaking on, on Coalesce's sort of performance as a whole, if we look back now um, over the course of the entire MPL, obviously the first half of MPL, you guys didn't really have the, the, the best of times. But since then... It's just, yeah. you've just grown from strength to strength. Do you want to talk a little bit about that journey and what it's been like? I mean, with our old roster, we were, I don't know, scream heroes. We didn't really take things too serious. I think that was the biggest issue. Then all of a sudden we realized, okay, these teams are maybe a bit better or we are a bit worse than we think. So we had to put in more work and we brought in the players that are, are working. So I think it just spiraled from there, to be fair. Like it shows, it doesn't matter if you're good or bad, if you work harder, you will be better than you were before. So I think hard work is a big shout out too. Well, you've certainly it's put a, big a lot of hard work yeah. in. Yeah. It, it is, it is, and it's, but it's, but it's mm -hmm. all putting that hard work in as well, and, and that's one of the things that's really shone with you, with your team, is that it, yeah. it's evident that everybody's putting that work in, so uh, it is great to see. We're, we're going to definitely see you come the playoffs time, now that you have guaranteed it. Uh, for the meantime, yeah. have you got anyone, anything that you want to say to any of the fans at home watching? Thank you for everyone supporting. Uh, means a lot. It's been a rough journey, but you see, great things can happen. So. Let's keep going this way. Well, you got there in the end. Congratulations, Kane. <laughs> uh, go and celebrate and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. I will do, man. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. There we go. We got a little bit of whooping and hollering at the start there. <laughs> pretty uh, pretty reserved to not actually check the socials, Jerry. I think you'd have a yeah. hard time with that. You're, I reckon you're That's like me. a secret scroller. Oh, I'm, I'm a, I'm barely a secret <laughs> scroller. I'm a self-obsessed, cons confessed scroller. Um, but yeah, that, that takes some doing. It's a great mentality to have gone in with. I mean, that, that's, that's a good, a good idea coming out from, from the coaches there. So, so yeah, good, good move. And, and it, it may have made the difference, you know, just focusing on your own game, making sure that you just win because you know that that's all you can do realistically with it potentially out of your hands. There's no reason to fret over it. So yeah. Big, big shout out to, to the way that Coalesce have taken that. I mm. think that that really does show the commitment that they have now in that team. Absolutely. Well, don't go anywhere because we do have the debrief coming mm. up. Um, Ian might not be here, but we do still have a debrief. Before we jump into that, let's recap the end of the day standings and we can give a quick rundown here, Gibson, of exactly how today played out. So today played out exactly the way that you would want it to for building the tension. Tanstar kicked off the day, giving them as themselves a chance at top spot. So that made the second game even more interesting because a heroic win sealed the top spot for them, knocking Tanstar back into second place. But Eminem Academy, even more importantly, taking that loss. Well, it put it all down to the last game of the night. Viperio with their 7-2 win, once again putting a rubber stamp on the fact that they are one of the best teams in Europe right now and one worth keeping an eye on. And then game number four, game of the day, Riddle put Coalesce to the sword, but a big parry and a big strike back saw Coalesce just ease their way into the playoffs. And... You know, as we look at the stats, I don't think there's anyone else either you could have given MVP to other than Grubby. He was phenomenal. I can't believe it's taken this long for him to get an MVP, honestly. <laughs> yeah. um, it's surprising as well. You think about 86 as a team and the MVPs that have come out, they've, they've only been given one and it's to Hungary. So many times in the first split, Astro was like a big shout for MVP, but someone else just beat him to it. And now, at least as a team, they have two for their names. And yeah, this guy deserves one. Astro also deserves one in my books, but you know, you can't get everything. Let's have a look at the standings. Obviously, the games did mean something tonight right up until the bitter end. And let's get it all locked in now. Heroic. They secure that top spot. Tenstar did hold it very briefly at the start of the night, but Heroic snatched it back just as fast. Tenstar sitting in second, Viperio in third, Victor's fourth, Ambush have made it through into fifth, and Coalesce snuck through right at the bitter end, getting that one up over Eminem. A fantastic result for them, and one that, you know, all the focus was on that tonight, really, Gibson. It is everything you could have wanted and more. We have our final scoreline, and 
honestly, Ollie, it was an absolute pleasure to work with you guys to bring you the action tonight because if you look at the way things stand, Coalesce snuck their way in. Ten star. Well, they come second, but look at the round difference. You know, it, it just it just left their screen, but they finished with the exact same round difference as Heroic, which goes to show NPL is the most competitive national league in Europe right now, in my opinion. And I wouldn't be surprised if we have three, four, or even five teams from this region competing in CL. You know what? There's something I want to bring up here because this game, so, so you know, Riddle, we, you can you can go and you can say, oh, what did they do this season? They got one overtime win back in the first split, and it was against Eminem Academy. That point that they took off Eminem <laughs> Academy, who were, I think, at one point, like six two up in that game. Mm -hmm. That's what's mattered. That is what has mattered the most when it comes to these playoff spots. And Coalesce can thank Riddle for that. So, yeah, huge, huge deal. Uh, uh, Coalesce thanking Riddle twice, given <laughs> Maybe, that there yeah. was that Maybe. win condition and then the game here tonight. Riddle are just uh, secretly out there to get Eminem Academy in uh, every <laughs> single which way. Uh, we're going to hit a very short break, after which we will be back with the debrief. We've got an extremely special VIP guest here tonight. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a few.
quick kills. Four quick kills come in. And Slothar just picks them apart. Let's try and put some shots on in and managing to find the last two. Oh, but Blur just decimates. Prince steps up huge for how much three kills. All E1 DCs. What? Welcome back, everybody, to The Debrief. Gibson and Jerry are going to be joining me here. And as promised, we do have a very special guest. We are going to be reflecting over the entire season of NPL here tonight in a little bit of a more relaxed conversation format. So strap yourselves in and get ready to debunk and debrief everything that has been going on here inside of the NPL. Jerry, now that everything has concluded... Have you got any overarching thoughts for the way that things have played out? Well, I think that some of the teams that we expected to make it to the playoffs and to the finals have done exactly that. But the journey there was by no means yeah. straightforward. <laughs> Not been straightforward. That's, that's that's the whole deal, right? Like it, it's it's been a mad roller coaster for some teams. Um maybe a surprise at the end as well, I think with Coalesce making it to playoffs. That was the big big surprise I think of the whole season uh, when you look at the teams that came into this and who we expected to make it. Ambush as well, I don't think we can understate just how big an impact they've made in in the minds especially of the uh Ukim based casters who maybe underestimate them a little bit but uh they've made it to playoffs too so yeah it's uh it's good to see a lot of uh, it's still a good mix you've got you know uh, almost every single team that has made it to playoffs has some uk players some nordic players so it's a great mix it's really i think that it proves that the, the league and as a concept has been pretty successful it has i think that it's it's important that the the ambush has come in and really flown the flag for, for the nordic region in my opinion you know the all finish mm. side and and they've stood up against some of the best that and I don't want to say that we had to offer, but the the best that were inside of what would have been Ukin and uh, and the UK National League. So to see that sort of that mixture of of the worlds has been uh, it, it's been great to watch. And like you've said, we've got a good bit of representation in there, and especially now Gibson with Coalesce snagging that last mm -hmm. spot. It definitely is because one of the question marks at the start of the season was how the two leagues were going to mesh, how the teams, the styles of play, everything would go together. And I think after the second or third week, nobody had any doubts that we were in for a fantastic league. And it really was, I think, having Coalesce step in at the last minute, it's going to be amazing for the Nordic fans to have two teams to support now when we get to the playoff stage. Yes, it's kind of sad for the likes of me, you know, the three of us, because we, we, you know, we have a lot of love for Eminem as well. You know, we, we know them players for their time in Yukin, and I think most of us bar Jerry have an Eminem jersey in somewhere as well. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but look, you, you just, I bought mine, so it's not as if I got given one for free, so it's okay. <laughs> but um, no, honestly, I'm delighted for Coalesce. I'm delighted that MPL went so well. And really, I'm delighted that the MPL, or the teams from the Nordics, came in and mm. really did put their weight about. They really did. I promised everybody a special guest, and I am, uh, I'm not going to go back on that promise. I'm going to bring them in right now. Um, you know, you think about good clubs over the years, you know, Man United had Sir Alex Ferguson, Chelsea, they had Jose Wait. Mourinho, <laughs> 10 star, they've got Kangaroo Kenny. How you I'm doing? I'm not being compared to Sir Alex Ferguson. That man <laughs> is a living legend. I did that and to I'm, wind I'm down a lot more than anything, <laughs> in case he was watching. Um, but welcome. Um, it's a pleasure to have you back on once again. I know that you're uh, always keen to to jump on the debrief and give us your opinion. Um, we do have a little bit of, of interesting sort of graphics here. I'll be. That's not a great photo. Or whip it. I'll be straight. <laughs> and I don't Gibson. really want to. I don't really want double Gibson either. Um, <laughs> that maybe didn't get addressed as, as quickly as it could have done. Um, that would have been a great screenshot. But um, yeah, welcome to the show, Kenny. As you can see, we're in disarray. Uh, I think the heat's certainly getting to everybody. Um, I've we're going to start things story. off with a... You've got a big story. Oh, go on. Well, a quick story. What I joined oh, VMix. Story. Yeah, go. I joined VMix and uh, I just like got my jersey on, uh, put my jersey on. And there was a huge spider on my floor, so Jake has just watched me. Well, my mum have to get rid of a spider for me while I've been sat on my bed, uh, like, <laughs> carrying away, because I hate spiders. So that was a bit of a fiasco. 
<laughs> so you had to call in reinforcements for the spider. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What was the what was the what was the method of removal? Was it the the classic? It was good old glass. No, it was all yeah, glass, 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 the, the glass and the paper. Yeah, paper. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's 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 very. Um, I mean, it's old fashioned, but it's it's very kind to the spider. Yeah, you can throw yeah, it outside and it, it can crawl back through your window later on tonight. <laughs> I, hate to, I hate to I hate to rain on everyone's parade, but apparently when you do that to house spiders, they can't survive outside. I heard, like they don't like it out there and they die. So yeah, sorry, just a bit of so knowledge you should have just you. vacuumed it anyway. Yeah, probably would have. Been, yeah, you got to keep out them the as middle, pets man. or just live with them in your house. It's it's. Mm. You, you know when like you're you're a kid and you're told that Santa doesn't. Uh, yeah, no, never mind. Never Careful. mind. Never Careful, never mind. Gibson. Never mind. We push a pause button. This is what happens when Ian's not here. <laughs> Ian's the glue, and and I just let everybody run, run absolutely wild. Which is how we ruin people's days. <laughs> we we do actually have a, a a small format for this show, believe it or not. Um, we we do have a graphic that we're going to bring up. Um, and what we what we want to do tonight, uh, the main sort of focus for this debrief is going to be talking about the progression. So don't panic, Kenny. This is the standings halfway through. Um, this is what <laughs> everything looked like at the halfway point in NPL this season. Obviously, we split ourselves into first split and second split to give a little bit of a break for a major. And of course, because it was such a long league anyway. There's been a lot of change since the first half has concluded. Um, I'm going to come to Jerry first. What's something that is really sort of standing out to you now, looking back at this, knowing what we know now? Well, the big leap, in, and it's good that we, we've got Kenny here, is, is seeing 10 start jump from 6th to 2nd overall. Right? Like at the end, during today, there's a possibility that you finish 1st. So that mm -hmm. turnaround has been like staggering. I think you only dropped a point all right, since the yep. split. Nuts. Looking at it as well, I feel as though, yeah, the, the general, the rise of Coalesce, the fall of M&M Academy, and also just seeing like, Ambush and Victus maybe not have quite as good second splits, not that it mattered a ton for them. Of course, Victus, you know, letting slip and not getting that automatic progression to finals is a big deal. Um, a lot of other teams making sort of smaller moves in and out, but uh, yeah, those are those are the kind of the big things that I can see just, just on the face of it. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we fortunately do have Kenny here tonight to, to really talk about that. 10 Star is one of the teams that we want to focus on. You can never ignore a team that moves from six to second. Um, but just looking around that for the time being, Gibson, uh, one of the teams that sort of springs to my mind is Ambush and, and the consistency that they've shown. Yeah, they were incredibly consistent in split one. You look at the record, they only lost two games. They won six, and I'd say you could nearly almost flip those scores around going into the second split because things really didn't get up and running for them. And, you know, Ambush's loss was a massive gain for the likes of Iperio Victus and most of all, Ten Star, as they were able to leapfrog above them into that second place. Still, though, you got to make your way to the playoffs to win. And they did get over the line. And as you look, if, when you look at that top eight right now and you think about the teams that made their way into the playoffs, Coalesce uh, are really the only team that jumped in and knocked Eminem out. At that halfway point, you pretty much seen already who was going to make the playoffs absolutely and rounding things out kenny got to come to you talk us through how you take a team from sixth to second um oh there's a lot of moving factors i think that you have to have every player on the same page in terms of work ethic goals and may maybe motivation is a factor that kind of comes down to work ethic. I think that we just had five people who were committed to each other and learning in the short space of time that we had before the season started. Um, just every everyone put their minds to it and everyone knuckled down. Like we, uh, in that two week period between confirming our roster and the first MPL play day I don't think me in my iteration of being with the core of this team since it started have ever worked as hard as we did then it was it was absolutely knuckles down and we would sit for two hours after scrims just looking at strats and see where they faulted see where we could improve 
at everything that we did was just even more set in stone than I had before, and a lot of that goes down to Yonka. I think any team, 86 could probably vouch for this, any team that has an ex-pro come into them will just improve in how how they do things. Like, how I did things before to how we do now with uh, after Yonka bringing in his expertise is night and day. And it just makes you so much more consistent. Because uh, as we see with, like, Heroic and R36 and Victus, there's not a big gap between... Maybe you could say Heroic aren't trying as much because it's MPL. But there's not a big gap between quality of the teams. Like, on any day, Victus could beat Heroic, we could beat Heroic, 86 could beat Heroic, right? But it's the consistency that makes Heroic a T1 team. And bringing in a T1 player elevates the consistency of your T3 team. I think that's that's been one of the clearest things for me is that ability to really start to hone in. Because the raw talent was there on your roster, right? You know, you, you have the mm -hmm. gunners and you've got that, that technical ability. Um, or should I say mechanical ability? And then it's about honing that and pointing it in the right direction because a lot of the teams have great, fantastic players inside of MPL, whether it be, um, you know, fraggers, support players, people that can hop on drones, whatever it might be. But it's about knowing when to use that, knowing and, and knowing how to use it. Um, and we do see that the, the, the teams that benefit from a, a more experienced head coming in um, that's, that's seen a little bit more of the game at, at different levels and for, for a longer period of time really does have uh, quite a clear impact. Um, and I think that you guys have, have certainly benefited from that as well as others. Um, looking forward now to playoffs. Um, obviously, we know who is going to be locked on in. Um, we have Viperio and Coalesce facing off against one another. Victus facing off against Ambush. Um, Jerry, you were really pleased to find out that all these are best of three as well. Oh yeah, I think everyone was. It just makes it so much more kind of competitively integrityful. Integral? What's the word I'm looking for? Integral. There is more competitive integrity to it. Integral, I guess. Um, it just means, yeah, you, you, you can justify saying, okay, if 86 beat Coalesce and a best of one, it's like, oh, okay, maybe it's map dependent, maybe it's like a best of one. Best of three, there's no doubt, right? You've got the better side is going to win. The better side on the day for certain will win that game. And the same goes for Victor's Ambush. So just making sure that we absolutely have the best teams, especially after a double round robin, getting to the end of this MPL and fighting for those two Challenger League spots and fighting to win MPL as well. It's, it's so satisfying. It's so rewarding. It really is, and I, I think that you know we we can't underestimate the importance of a best of three. Um, Kenny, from your point of view as a as a coach, you know we all know that best of ones are unpredictable. Teams don't feel cheated in a best of three. You know they know that they've got a really good amount of time to to play well and to you know make mistakes, come back from it. That's got to be huge going into these games. Yeah, I think best of threes really sort the the good teams from the average teams because. In well, whenever I do my prep for every team, you'd be surprised. It, it, you, I don't know how deep you guys go into the map bands from from every team, but the amount of times I go into a prep for a team and they have three perma bands is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And in a best of three, you can only ban two maps before you pick. Um, before when we had a uh, map pool of seven, you could only ban one map before the picks happened, and that really exploited teams. And I think that's what we exploited a lot in. Rainbow Rumble when when we went through the best of three system there that we played every map so we could win the ban phase no matter what. It's slightly harder now that both teams have two bans before the picks, but you'll definitely see um I think Ambush really have to expand their map pool map pool yeah. because I mean I don't want to throw them under the bus. They have four perma bans. They played the whole season is... with the same four bans. The argument Sorry. there is that they, we know that they came in with that mentality and they've said in interviews, you know, why, why show more than four maps when it's best of ones? You can just ban the same four maps. You can make sure you're, you're always playing the same three or four maps, whatever, in the best of ones and then get to the playoffs and have that in your back pocket. So I can understand their mentality. Yeah. 
for certain. Um, uh, whether, you know, it could just be a mind game. Mind game. Maybe they, maybe they only scrim on four maps. Who knows? But mm -hmm. I would, I would bet otherwise, personally. I think looking at how the landscape of the game changes over the course of a, a season as long as NPL, you know, you think back to what we started with and and where we are now you know we didn't have his army at the start there's things that have crept in you know through the course of time and i i don't think that hiding maps is it's certainly to hide you know that number of maps to only have four maps that you uh sorry to only have five maps that you play on um is is fairly substantial so i'm, I'm not entirely sure on the benefit of it um obviously we'll have to see and, and see what ambush throw out there gibson have you got any favorites coming into these playoffs I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push for early early predictions. Um, I think when you look at the form of these teams, it's hard to look past Viperio and Victus being the two that make it all the way through. I'd put Coalesce in as maybe the dark horses to get through, but I think Viperio and Victus are a little bit better than Coalesce and Ambush. And with the way Ambush have, playing, have been playing lately, and I know that the, you know, people don't like people saying this sort of thing but i think at the moment with the way they're playing they're probably the weakest out of the four so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna pin uh pin my predictions to victus and viperio making it to the finals i think that a lot of people will just because they're the they're the names that stand out right mm -hmm. but at the same time you think best of three pretty long slog if you go through the losers bracket you know you're going to be playing a good amount of siege there and there's there's always that potential for for a little bit of an upset um there of course are other avenues to get yourself into into challenger league as well and that's something kenny that you're going to be familiar with at the moment mm -hmm. yeah challenger league open calls uh there's three iterations of them we just had the, the first one this previous weekend gone um it's did you get 50 MPL. points was it f yeah, yeah we did. got 50 was it 50 yeah. yeah so you so you guys are looking pretty good in the open calls then yeah uh however I, I think as i said in my interview like mpl takes priority so if yeah. so if 86 qualify through cl through uh qualify suit to cl through mpl bloody hell a lot of uh l's going on there um then <laughs> <laughs> good heavens uh then their 100 points in the open calls means nothing and they're just eradicated from the list so it's it's a fallback option and i think that i think the way that i look at cl calls it's just best of three practice in a tournament format like the format that we have here is going to be potentially for the losers they'll play two games in one day and then potentially the uh the loser that goes to the upper final no ignore me Technically, there's three best of threes in two days, which is what we played on Saturday and Sunday with the best of ones on, on the Friday. And it can be quite yeah. fatiguing. So it's a really good uh, practice of endurance for a team because not many teams have that tournament style that they can play because all you play is just best of one officials. Yeah. And then, you know, you, you liken it then to something like a scrim or a double scrim day, and it can still be a lot of siege, especially when the stakes are so high. We can preview our finals bracket as well here uh, and just see exactly what we are going to be dealing with when we get to this point. Heroic, obviously, as that first seed, they do get the second place playoff team that comes through. Ten start, they get the first place playoff team. And then there are a whole rook of best of threes with a lower bracket to get to a grand final. So, so much siege to be going across. It's not every day and it's not every season that we get both a lower bracket final and it all to be best of threes, Jerry. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's lucky. It's, it's good for us. It's, it's healthy for the league. Um, like I say, it's, it's robust and it does put 10 star, for instance, in this brilliant situation for for the the finals where of course with heroic in play you've got two chances at a best of three to come within the top three which would be enough for challenger league right so so you just need to win one best of three if you lose the first one you get a second chance in the in the lower bracket so that is a massive massive deal and it's a massive deal for the the two teams that make it through to playoffs as well because only one of them won't make it to cl it's it's a massive massive price and then of course you've got to think about 
this league itself and the fact that you know heroic they they may have their eyes on other things and and we know that it, there's a lot of teams like you say kenny that can actually put them to the test and, and have put them to the test this season and have won against them so it's absolutely not a foregone conclusion that they win at the end as a lot of people might think so uh, yeah the, the standard in this league is really high and best of threes make that even more exciting especially with that grand final being best of five at the very end you gotta love you gotta love your best of five everyone loves a best of five apart from the casters when it's unlimited overtime we go to a million rounds but we will cross <laughs> that bridge i'm sure when we come to it i love how the landscape of of npl has changed obviously we've transitioned we've gone from uk and nordics to one combined super league and you know we think back and we think about teams like chaos for example inside of nordics we think about the whole navi m and m and all the great teams that we've had um, you know kawana heroic whichever sort of iteration you want to look at inside of the national leagues and now we've got a situation where we've still got heroic they obviously want to get a win before you know they sort of not see it out but they, they want to get a win inside of a national league because it was just dominated by navi for, mm. for just so long and there was always that sort of battle um and we look now eminem they're fielding their academy team in here it's promoting all this growth and we've still got you know four five compet super competitive teams that can to, can be really competing um when it comes into this playoff so i, I just think the growth is uh, is incredible we're gonna go around now and ask um, and this is Jerry's idea, by the way, before anyone thinks it's mine. We're going to ask for game of the uh, entire season, which I can't even remember much of the games that have happened tonight. I would have to go back and make notes and stuff to, to really figure this out. Um, Kenny looks like he's already deep, deep diving into a spreadsheet. Um, yeah, Gibson, <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to... Yeah, he is. You can see it. Whenever someone's face lights up, it's because the spreadsheet's getting opened. Either that or it's liquid. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've given everyone enough time now um, to come up with something. Jerry, I'm going to come to you first because it was your idea. So I yep. hope you've at least got one prepped. I, I'm glad you came to me first because I feel like there's uh, a potential that other people wanted to take this, but I'm taking it and I'm making up a rule that you have to choose a different one. So, uh, <laughs> 10 star versus Heroic. Uh, in the first split, the bank game, the first time that Heroic bled a singular Gibson's point. Gone. Um, I knew you would. Did, did I pick your one, Gibson? Yeah, it was my first. Yeah. It was like one of my first casts on MPL. It was the game where Ten Star just kind of, you know, they came out of the second split and they really said, "We are, you know, one of the top dogs in this league." Oh no, no, you no, stole no, mine. I'm talking. No, no, no. Game. I'm talking about one. Play Day Six. Play Day Six. The bank yeah. game. Seven, eight loss Ooh, to Heroic. Okay. But it was. It was okay. So you, we just got with two Ten Star versus Heroics then. <laughs> maybe maybe we need a little bit more diversity here. But I, I'm fair, not sure that two, Kenny's you know? going to bring that diversity. I'll be honest. I no. I I will. Uh, R seven eight gay or eight seven game against eighty six. That was I think possibly the most clutch, uh, tight just exhilarating game of, of MPO in my opinion and I was what map, what map was it? so that was Oregon when nice. um, Jegs had a 1v2 uh, it went to the depth of 8-7 and like we were just back and forth the entire game I think we had a leader had a 1v2 Jegs had a 1v2 um, I think we won a 1v1 it as well in, in a round it was that was oh my lord i remember that's when uh simon was simon's first day on hosting and he said that's just got me hooked on rainbow six like he said it was one of the best like matches of esports in general he's ever seen so so you've, you've caught another fan <laughs> yeah we have yeah he had some nice exactly words for me uh, earlier on the timeline so that was good well um, we've, we've gone right we, we haven't really got anything to back that up to be honest I'm not going to give a game because I, I, this wasn't my idea it was it was very clearly <laughs> Jerry's idea um, we're, we're going to have to round things out because as much as we don't want it to end it's it's unfortunately got to come to an end um, we are going to be back with playoffs though 
and and that's the most important thing at this point that's where all of the focus is going to be for those teams third through sixth um they are going to be hyper focused now on those playoffs and making sure that they are as prepped as they can be for the playoffs 30th and the 31st of july they are the dates that you need to be keeping an eye out for obviously check the socials um it will be i'm sure getting posted over on the rainbow six uk twitter um and you should go and follow that anyway to keep up with everything that's going on inside of siege and inside of mpl but for tonight jerry gibson Kenny, that is going to do it. Thank you all very much for joining me. Kenny, thanks for hopping on at short notice. Uh, and of course, Gibson and Jerry, it's been a pleasure. We are going to uh, piece it now, but we will be back for the playoffs. So uh, mark it in your, uh, in your calendars, and I'm sure that we will see you there. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Surprising that now he didn't fall back at that point, and now we're left in a very tight situation. Ryan has just walked his way through. He gets two. Unica is going to take a little bit of damage as well, but oh, with his back against Unica, Rock is going to go down, but instantly traded. Harold with a double there. That's huge.